on the car, so I think it doesn't take too much to work out that thing's running a bit hot at the moment. But they have sent it again after a, probably about a minute stationary. Well, you as uh, an owner of a classic British sports car know all about that. <laughs> well, uh, no, I, I just melted the brakes the way back from the respray. That was completely different. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I remember. <laughs> uh, we're hearing, by the way, Nick, that the number 17 AWA car that you were talking about uh, earlier, that car is heading towards retirement. I'm not sure if they put their paperwork in uh, or quite given race control uh, and the officials the nod yet, but that's the word coming from the team at the moment. Uh, coming down to half distance, get yeah. the beams ready. And here's a VP Racing update in race. Uh, it is still Rega van der Zander by two seconds. Zero one, gold front and Cadillac from now. BMW coming alive in the heat of the afternoon. Nick Yellowly with the number 25 from Harry Tignall. And the Proton Competition Porsche 963, the number 59 WeatherTech car. Harry Tignall, another Porsche driver this year who is heading to Ford Performance. He'll be partnering the, uh, in, the, in one of the two Ford Performance GTD Pro cars uh, with Mike Rockenfeller next year. Joseph Newgarden is having fun in the number seven car and doing a cracking job for Porsche Penske Motorsport. That is the remaining Porsche in championship contention now. Philippe Eng is in fifth position, another five and a half, six seconds further back for the BMW number 24. Then Philippe Albuquerque for the Acura number 10. Alexander Sims for Whelan's Cadillac. Timon van der Helm in the number five, bright red, journey, uh, bright red, bright yellow, Red, where did that come from? 9.63, and then Colin Brown for My Shank Racing's Acura. It is still Mikkel Jensen for TDS, who leads by 10 seconds in LMP2. That's the number 11 car, the yellow and red car. Then Matt Bell for AWA. So good news, bad news for them with the 17 car in strife. The 13 car leads by just half a second in a cracking battle between Matt Bell and Garrett Griss for Junior 3 Racing. In... GTD Pro, Corvette and Tommy Milner lead by three quarters of a second from the leading GTD car, that Windward car, still going very well. And just three seconds, three tenths of a second further back, Daniel Serra for the second of the Pro cars. Then it's five seconds back to Mick Grenier in the second of the GTDs. That's the team Kortoff car who are sneaking up on Michelin Endurance points. Nick Dearman with P2 stops. Yeah, we've had a few of them. We have a 20, the high class racing coming in from the uh, back, still trying to make up for that uh, long stop and hold it had. But then we had our two uh, championship contenders, the number 11, the uh, TDS racing came in at a simple stop. And then we had the 52, which is the uh, Ben Keating PO at Massimo's, but I'm pretty sure that's a driver change. Ben's got out, Paul Loop Chateau has got in, but these are uh, these slightly small attacks on the uh, Peter. These keep it entertained in between the, uh, uh, the stops uh, caused by the yellows. So the sights and sounds of a Saturday afternoon, just after half past four here at Road Atlanta. Half past ten in Europe, half past nine in the UK, and still more than half of this race to go. And still, Jeremy Shaw, in all of the classes, plenty of questions to be answered, not least at the front of the field. These hotter temperatures are changing the balance of power at the front of the field for me. Yeah, I mean, look, no, no one I don't think is pushing particularly hard at this stage in the race. Uh, you know, as you say, we're not even halfway yet. Uh, and uh, so all they need to do is keep themselves in the contention, not do anything silly. But clearly, Harry Tinkman is very happy at the wheel at number 59 car. That's, the, that's been the biggest mover over the last hour or so in this race. Uh, and uh, the, the number seven car there with Joseph Newgarden, the rookie, at the wheel of it. You know, he's just, he's just he's biding just his a time. 12-8. He was the fastest of the, the lead yeah. runners last yeah. time around. Within, within a second of that car's fastest lap of the race, yeah. That's a really good lap. And talking of the best laps there, uh, that's uh, Colin Brown has just turned uh, his car's fastest lap, a 111.383, which is only fractionally outside the fastest lap of the race. It was set by Sebastian Bourdais. So uh, Colin Brown, having having served that, that penalty for a uh, for a pit lane infraction last uh, right after going back to green, he turns to quick laps now. So, 
there are the battles out on the circuit. Well, Harry Tinknell has caught Nick Yellily. Um, and we'll keep an eye on that as Nick Damon is heading down to... In fact, he's at the 52 oh, yeah. PR1 Matheson Motorsport LMP2 pit. They're third at the moment. Alex Queen's just got back in to the 52 wins car. That means that Ben Keaton should be available for a word, Nick. Well, Ben's taking off the world's most spangly helmet. I've, I've got a close look up at, the, at Ben's lid, and it's got more kind of metal flake in it than the uh, the, uh, the most garish of uh, custom cars, I would say. Um, ben, second stint for you. Um, you were out at the start, then out a bit later. Have uh, driving standards improved over the last couple of hours? Uh, no, actually. I was just saying uh, that... You know, uh, I was pushing as hard as I could push, but I couldn't match my lap times from earlier. I don't know if it's the oil dry that was down on the track that was, uh, you know, causing a little bit less grip or what it was. But for whatever reason, I wasn't able to uh, do as fast a laps as I did at early in the race. So who knows? I mean, we have got a lot more temperature in the track, but I suppose the recipe makes it slower. Yeah, I mean, obviously the sun's come out. The temperature's gotten hotter and... Uh, in terms of lap times, the track or the car doesn't necessarily like to be hot, so that may have something to do with it. Looking at the team as a whole, the 52 team, how do you feel you are overall in the race at the moment? Yeah, we're feeling really good. You know, it's been a crazy race so far. It's hard to believe that we're about halfway. You know, uh, there have been so many yellow flags, so many incidents. This track is so difficult for traffic with five different classes out there at once. And, uh, you know, it, Anything can happen, but uh, you know, there's a big race between the 52, the 11, and the 04 for several different, uh, uh, you know, uh, awards. And uh, Cali, it seems to be that uh, we're the three cars up front battling with each other. So uh, it's going to be a long five hours, is what I would say. And of those five hours, will you be getting back in, or are you going to leave it to Paul and Alex? No, uh, I, I just did my uh, four and a half stints, uh, somewhere around three hours in the car. I'm done. I'm going to let the two fast guys uh, battle it out for the end. I don't think you're not fast, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the two faster guys. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Uh, barely, in fairness. Uh, just extraordinary story from uh, Mr. Keating there. I know I say this, I know I say this a lot, but are we not blessed, Jeremy? Are we not blessed to have so many characters in this in this paddock that are prepared to have a you know he's just jumped out of the car in the heat of the race, but had, had a laugh and a joke with Nick down there. And and that's among a number of drivers who would have done exactly the same. Even poor Nick Tandy in yeah. the depths of his despair with the championship being snatched away from him. Happy to stand and talk to our Nick and and, and even try and raise a smile and a joke. I mean, quality, the quality in this paddock, on the wall, on the spanners, behind the wheel. Impressive. We are really fortunate. Yeah, very impressive indeed. Uh, it really is. And uh, just a, a change of position there for fifth position. The number number 10, uh, Conor Camerolta, Acura, Philip Albuquerque at the wheel. Just getting past Philip Eng in the number 24 BMW. So we'll see now whether Albuquerque can close up on Joseph Newgarden, who's the next car ahead of him on the racetrack. It took, him, took him a while. I guess he lost the place at the... No, he didn't lose the place at the restart. He maintained his position at the restart, did uh, Albuquerque. Uh, he'd had to give up a position, I think, for some, for maybe the order as they came out of the pits, perhaps, before we went back to green. But he's maintained, maintained that position since we went back to green, and that's uh, 20 laps ago now. And he's up into fifth position. He's going to try and track down the number seven Porsche ahead of him. That's Jeremy Shaw, I'm John Heindorf. In the pits, Joel, Nick and Shea. Uh, they are splitting the 10 hours between them. We're about two, two minutes away from half distance and hoping to get a bit of green flag running in. Uh, we have had six full course yellows for the better part of an hour and 50 minutes and 41 laps if you prefer uh, our longest green flag was before that last one and that was barely an hour in fact it wasn't it was 57 minutes so we've not really had a full run yet uh, the lap distance record since this became a 10 hour race uh, a thousand miles was 394 
laps, but the lap distance record is 465. The computer says at the moment 396. That will change um, uh, if we continue to be green for a reasonable amount of time. The computer effectively updates as we as we go forward. Half distance then, Jeremy. Untidy beginning. Uh, very untidy beginning, way too many penalties, right into the 30s already. But when we have been green, the racing has been good, and I'm really intrigued. Um, obviously, we're looking at the front of the field, but I'm really intrigued by this GTD battle, which is for the race win and still, of course, for the championship. Yeah, it's been fantastic, hasn't it, really? I mean, we've seen... Uh, we haven't seen a BMW... Yeah, BMW led one lap. One lap, yeah. yeah. So all, all, more, all four manufacturers have led during this race then. And uh, yeah, one of the BMWs running in second position now, only a couple of seconds behind Ringer van der Zander. That Cadillac's been strong pretty much through the race, but it's it's just you know the um, the, the balance, not balance necessarily, but the the pendulum has been swinging according to when they're putting on fresh tyres and when they're not. And I'm sure they're trying to get the double stinting of tyres out of the way now, so for the for the final four or five hours of the race, uh, at every stop. Or every full stop, they will be putting on a fresh set of Michelin tyres. And that is how they've planned it out for the week. Stand by for the second part, the second half of the 26th running of the Mortal Petit Le Mans Championship deciding race for IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car in 2023. Part two starts right now. So into the second half of the race. And Rega van der Zander's lead is cut to just under a second. Nick Yellowly, 13-1 last time around, 14-3 in traffic for van der Zander. Oh, this must be, the concentration levels must be absolutely incredible here. Sun not quite in the eyes of the drivers yet, but dirty windscreens, dirt being thrown onto the track, certainly heading up towards turn five and over the brow before turn six. It's going to be starting to become an issue. Then through turn six to turn seven on the left-hand side of the car. Checking on some of the other battles. Matt Bell for AWA leading Garrett Grist as they come across the line by uh, three cars lengths. Up to turn one now for that battle. And that's the 13 AWA. And the number 30, 3 0, Garrett Grist Junior 3 racing car. They're battling for the lead of LMP3. Through turn five. That's that a slightly better run? No, I don't think so. The Lamborghini of Iron Links right ahead of them. If they come into turn seven. One, two, three. Three different classes all together. As they head through and onto the back stretch. Nolan Siegel for CrowdStrike Racing by APR, leading in the all four. Coming through that little battle as well. And this is, I mean, this is the thing, Jeremy. You're catching cars, mm. you're battling for your lead of the class, you're catching cars that are maybe on the second stint of tyres and hanging on, and then you're coming up and then catching you are potentially quicker cars having their own battle. It is proper head on a swivel here. It, it is, uh, and it's just no, not a moment to relax. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that uh, Renga van der Zenda had a pretty comfortable lead of three, almost almost as high as four seconds, uh, but that was five laps ago. Now, well, the gap's just gone out a bit on this lap, but it was less than a second last time around. Just completed 201 laps, the race leader, Renga van der Zenda, in that number 01 Cadillac. And it struck me earlier on that the car was really good on on early in the stint, but after that maybe it's maybe struggled just a little bit. So we'll have to keep an eye 
on that as the race progresses. But now uh, Harry Tinkle has closed with, to within a second again of Nick Yellowly. So the top three cars covered by uh, just about a couple of seconds. Yeah, and they'll be in traffic again very shortly indeed. In fact, they are in traffic coming uh, onto the back. The, the, the huge, huge scrub of cars going into turn 10A now are just ahead of the overall race leaders. They've got a couple of stragglers in between them. So within a lap or so, those three race leaders will be right on the battle that's just gone across the start-finish line, which is LMP2 and LMP3 all having a scrap going around the GT cars, including the number 80, Seb Prio, driven here or racing the green Rexy car, fifth in GTD. That's easy to spot out there. They're going to have a prototype next year as well. And Gunnar Jeanette was very coy about telling us what livery that might have. Just looking at the front end of the field and when next pit stops might occur. Yeah, we're in the leaders. They were covered by 1.3 seconds wow. three, the trio as they came past to complete that last lap. And going over the top of the crest of the hill, I think, at turn two. I don't think this has been a good day for Lexus in terms of racing. We saw what happened with the championship car, the number 14, earlier on. Uh, and now, Damon tells me that the GTD car is uh, having some rules. Yeah, I mean, um, it, I saw the car coming towards it. I knew which one it was. The other one hasn't got a bonnet, so it's kind of an easy guess. But um, it came towards us that there's a 12 car. that's a Frankie Monte Carlo, Aaron Tillett's and uh, Parker Thompson machine. I thought, uh, with Parker driving, I thought, oh, fine, coming in for some fuel. But no, it went right down to the end of the pit lane and turned to the right. And that was it. It's behind the wall. So we'll try and find out what it's all about. John. And in GTD Pro, oh. the lead Leader is off the track with dead stick. This, oh, and there's all kinds of head in hands moments. Full course yellow, four hours and 54 minutes to go. And um, Pratt Miller and Corvette Racing, it would seem, will not be sending the C8R GTLM car now running in GT3. They won't be sending it off. With a victory, Tommy Milner has ground to a halt just off a of turn three. Now, there's dirt on the car, so is that mechanical or has he had an incident? The answer is I can't tell you just at the moment. Uh, he's off at driver's right at the top of the hill. His door's open, he's fine. He opens the door, I think, just to get a bit of breath of fresh air through there. So this is going to throw GTD Pro wide open, and Rishi Competizione will lead that. Indy Donchi from Windward Racing leading GTD. Uh, who does this uh, affect in terms of laps? Well, all the GTPs will come in, surely. See if we can work out what's happened. Across the line, the Corvette was fine. Coming down to the end of the front straight, gets past, ah, now, got past by the windward car, and I think he's uh, already, he's got no drive. Yeah. Now, he was leaking fluid earlier on in the day. Is that part of the, is that part of the equation here? And Tommy's just pulled off. That's dead stick, I reckon. I, I don't think he had any drive. There's no damage. The dirt on the front of the car is tyre debris and various other stuff. And they're packing up. Or at least they're not getting ready for any work soon on the pit wall. As Tommy Milner, with the door open, has put the thumbs up to the AMR safety team who are already with him. Now he's asked them to give him a push. He's, he, I think he's going to try and bump start this now that everybody is behind the safety car. He's got it out of gear, which is the first thing to do. Not an easy thing to do, bump start a race car, because they tend to have quite high compression engines. So you've got to get it in a higher gear than the perhaps you would think. Now, he's out of the car. Uh, oh, I know what he was doing. Sorry, that was very sensible by 
Tommy. He was asking them to rock the car backwards and forwards and give it a push so he could engage neutral so that the recovery can move the car. That very good indeed. Before he got out of the car, that's smashing work. The flatbed is there, and the roll back on that will be the way that this car comes back to the pit lane. Race Control have asked all cars to pack up behind the safety car. Well, Jeremy, another one bites the dust. And yeah. Daniel Serra now leads GTD Pro, GTD Indy Dodgy is ahead of the full GT field. Yeah, the two uh, top contenders in the championship then, both out uh, of the race, it would appear. Number 14 and number three. And in terms of the uh, Michelin... Uh, endurance Cup oh, yeah. in, uh, in GTD Pro. The uh, number 79 car w was, uh, well, uh, after the four-hour mark in this race, number 79 car led by one point from number three Corvette and by two points from number 14 uh, Vassar Sullivan Lexus. So right now, it's looking very, very good for WeatherTech Racing in number 79 car. Yeah, Because they, right. they lead by one point and it looks like the other two cars are gonna, both going to be out of it. The next up in, in line in the points is the harder racing team Aston Martin, uh, but they're fully eight points now behind uh, the number 79 and uh, where did Wynn, won't, won't be able to make up that deficit. Where did Winwood vault themselves up to at the four hour mark? They yeah. were they were leading the in, in GTD, yeah, yeah. yeah. but they, they were quite a long way, but they were nine points behind. Heart of Racing Team's number 27 car was also leading ah, the MEC right. for GTD, but, but they came into the weekend uh, nine points behind them, so that's going to be a, a tall order to overcome it, but it's not impossible. Well, uh, we're getting everybody behind the safety car. Let me give you a quick rundown, as we tend to do. VP Racing in race update. Renger van der Zander behind the safety car. The 0-1 Cadillac leads it from Nick Yellerly and BMW number 25. Harry Tinknell, Proton Porsche. That is the WeatherTech number 59 car. Joseph Newgarden. Yeah, yes, yes, that Joseph Newgarden. Porsche Penske Motorsport in the number seven. Still championship contender there. Uh, Philippe Albuquerque, the number 10, leading the championship after the pole position points were added on yesterday for the Acura ARX 06, that is fifth position. Then Philip Eng for BMW in the BMW number 24. Alexander Sims, Wheel and Engineering, second in the championship, uh, the number 31 car in seventh place. Timon van der Helm, JDC Miller Motorsports, Porsche 963, and Colin Brown, Mayer Shank Racing uh, at the back of the field, but still on the GTP lead lap. In LMP2, it is CrowdStrike racing by APR and Nolan Siegel that lead from TDS and Scott Huffaker in second. Let me just check. Now, they're showing a lap between them at the moment. Yeah, I think there's a wave around. I think there's a wave around too. Alex Quinn in third for PR1 Matheson and then another gap of a lap back to Josh Pearson for TDS. That's your top actually, four. No, I don't think there is, actually. Well, the pass around's happening at the moment, and I'm just yeah. trying to see the numbers that are going through and to see if the 52 is among them. Has the 52 just come past us? Oh, no. No, I think he... No, the, Nolan Siegel is a lap ahead now of the... Uh, yeah, I, and I think the reason for that is when did the last... The 04 cars last pitted on that 168, right, that was under the previous caution period. So they've stayed out. The other two cars have pitted, and they have been uh, been been lapped by making that pit stop. 35 laps under the tyres of the CrowdStrike car that leads. TDS, 15. No, I'm wrong. I'm, well... And PR1, 40 laps, coming around to 15 yeah. laps this time as he crosses the line. Um, so the number 52 car is a lap down. Number 04 and the number 11 are, are on the lead lap, I think. That's the 11. Uh, I think, yeah, the 11's just got the wave by, Jeremy. The 11's just it. got okay, the wave cool. by. The 4 is about halfway down the safety car crew. And the yeah. TDS car, the uh, number 11 car, excuse me, um, has been uh, led through. Yes, the TDS car has been allowed through... Um, in LMP3, Matt Bell 
for AWA and Garrett Grist were having a cracking scrap and they continue to do so. Gar Robinson, I think, is on the lead lap as well there. So 13, 30 and 74. We've mentioned Indy Donchi leading GTD and Team Kortoff in second in GTD. Uh, between them, they've got recent competition only leading GTD Pro. Then it's Wright Motorsport uh, next up for GTD. Maro Engel for GTD Pro for WeatherTech, uh, second for them. Then Patrick Gallagher fourth in GTD for Turner Motorsport. James Collado third for GTD Pro. Uh, they are all mixed together in that uh, on that uh, GTD in that GTD line. Pits have been opened for GTP, so that means our uh, Nick Damon. It's better get the company, Nick. You've had a little quiet period I know. there. A quiet period, no Joe, and now I've got no cup of the car. There's a, there's a huge amount of anticipation. There's probably about uh, 120 people on the wall actually now, <laughs> just standing. It's, 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 yeah, they're about waiting to, 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 to greet some sort of like Taylor Swift turning up or something, but um, the, uh, yeah, it's eerie quiet now. Ooh, it's quite spooky. I can hear myself on the PA, it's even worse. But uh, yeah, so they should, any minute now, there'll be a number of driver changes. Um, some obvious, some more surprising. But I'll tell you when they happen, I'm going to keep it in suspense. Okay. At Emerson Radio, if you like to get in touch. Ah, oh, I love this race. Uh, the long races are just fantastic. And this race down through the years has provided us with uh, so much entertainment. Uh, quite a bit of tangential nonsense as well when we've had rain delays, etc. Who will ever forget Nick Damon dancing down the pit lane in the pouring rain before finding... Here we are. Uh, which was the aerodynamicist that you filled 25 minutes with? Uh, Gino, um, Nick, Sir, 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 Nick Worth. Nick, Nick Worth, yeah. yeah. It was Nick yeah. Worth. All right. You've Here got we come. Cars. I've got them now. It's fantastic. Here they all come. Uh, it is a procession of... The, I mean, I must say, one thing I will say, these are fabulous-looking machines. They really are. They look like racing cars. They're like prototypes. They're all coming in to stop together. The uh, 01 Cadillac stops in front of me, and it's Scott Dixon getting into that one as Ringo Valenzana gets out. The, uh, the WeatherTech car, that's seen uh, Harry Tickle get out, and Judy Bruce getting back in again, which is interesting, so we haven't seen Neil Yarny yet. I think JB, Jason Batten, just got into the JDC Miller Motorsports car. Tom Blomquist has got into the 60, and then my eyes go off a bit. Uh, but everybody is doing a complete service. I don't think I don't think anyone's kept their driver on board. Possibly the seven Porsche, but I might just have missed it. The rest of them had the doors open. All firing up. First car away from its pit box is the 01 Cadillac, and that is the winner of pit row. Second is the tail. Oh, no, almost are coming together. There's the wheel and Cadillac car. Almost had another accident in the pit lane, but got ahead just ahead of the uh, number 10 Acura. And the two BMWs get each other's ways, which is very clever. Um, and they go off in that order with the last one off the WeatherTech car. But, yeah, so they have all got away again after making massive amounts of changes. I think it was Scott Dixon that got into the It was Scott Dixon, yeah. yeah. It was Scott, yeah. Uh, and going out, I think, in second was Jack Aiken. I think it was the Wheeler car. Yeah, yeah the Wheeler got the Wheeler literally kind of barged its way in. And the uh, number 10 Acura went, yeah, all right, perhaps not. The, perhaps not with this amount of time left in the race. I won't make an argument about this start-finish straight. They, they <laughs> came in all one, 25, 59, 7, 10, 24. And I reckon they've gone out all one, 31, 10. And possibly then one of the BMWs. I'll have to see them when I, I get it. You know, I, oh, no, it's the five that's in fourth position. So it's been, uh, yeah. it was, so it's going to be all one. Uh, then the 31, then the 10, then the 7 Porsche, and then the 5 Porsche with, as you rightly said, JB for JDC. Thank you, Nick. Damon in the pit lane. The rest of the pit stops for the GT cars coming through as we've got cars coming through at speed on the way by, uh, Nick Dim is now watching GT car. Yeah, and the lead car sort of is the 62 recent car, I think some of the other cars further, but they may have been stopped slightly ahead. I, the noise you can hear is the uh, 79 uh, GT Mercedes. It was the other Mercedes, the Wimbledon car, actually, the car that it was leading on the trail as they went out. Both part of racing machines are now in, both the GTD Pro and the AM. Uh, again, quite a few driver changes. No driver change in the 63 Lamborghini that I can see. The door is open on the Reese Competition car. The Iron Dames car not arrived yet. They're waiting there with their insert. There are many laps behind, of course, after their problems early on. 
most of these stops now are just coming to the end. The tyre's been done. And it's a 16 car. The, uh, that's the, uh, uh, the right uh, horse that rolls away first by quite a long way. And then there's three Mercedes back to back. It's the 57, the 32 and the 79. And I think the, uh, the uh, Lamborghini has got off fifth. Yeah, fifth and sixth. So part of racing the two Astons and what I will say is that the recent car which definitely came in the top three. I think it's rolled off about ninth. So not sure what happened to them, but it could just be that they went really, really quickly. Track position, short fueling, possibly might have happened. So all of the GTPs came in there, uh, Jeremy, just for your uh, chart as you came through. Uh, Scott Dixon has got in the 0-1. Yeah. Jack Aiken came out in second after a brilliant pit stop from the Wheel and Engineering Cadillac. He's taken over that number 31 car. Philippe Albuquerque stayed in the number 10. Conic Manolda Acura, he is now in third. Tom Blomqvist back in the Acura for Meyer Shank Racing with Kerb Agajanian in fourth. That's the number 60. Joseph Newgarden stayed in the number 7 Porsche Penske Motorsport Machine. Jensen Button, JB in the JDC, Miller Motorsports Porsche. That's the number five. In sixth, in seventh position, Conor de Felipe, BMW. Eighth, oh, Gustav Farfus back into the BMW M Hybrid V8 that he started. And uh, Jimmy Bruni back into Proton competition. Uh, Nick Damon will grab some drivers, not literally, but at least stick <laughs> a, a, a mic underneath their numb. Timon van der Helm out of the JDC Porsche. Timon, um, your first experience in the race itself, how'd it go? Uh, I think the first thing went pretty well. Uh, just had to warm up the tyres a bit in the beginning, but after that uh, it went pretty... We closed the gap a bit to Renger van der Sande and uh, Akura. Then I was a bit stuck behind the Akura and I couldn't pass it till the last lap I pitted. Uh, second stint and the rest I was a bit struggling with the tyres just overall. But I think we should be happy to still be in the lead lap and uh, I think we have all the chances still the last moment of the race. Were you struggling because you double stinted the tyres? Yeah, it looks like, yeah. And of course it's much warmer than you thought it would be, so I suppose that's another reason, yeah? Yeah, I think we, we never did two stints on the tyres, so that was a new experience for now with this tyre, so... Yeah, we know that, but still we had to do it because we had no tyres left. Do you now have enough tyres to go, go new, 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 or will somebody else have to double stint? Yeah, you have to double stint because we only have nine, uh, st uh, nine sets and we have more than nine stints, so, so be it. You're still talking about it's hard to get past cars that you're stuck. Are these cars really evenly matched, despite being many different manufacturers? I think they match, uh, yeah, quite a lot. Of course, there's a lot, of, uh, some small difference in between, but uh, I think it's not too far off. And I, I like that all the cars are competitive to each other and that we can make a nice race for everybody. Great stuff. Thank you, Timon. Thank you. Timon van der Helmer, very. Very good stint for him. Interesting that. Interesting comment from a very young driver. He's he is a young driver. He looks even younger. I, I keep thinking the paper boy's popped up in the pit lane. He is, he is very youthful. Yeah, he is. He is young. He's not 20 yet. I was going to say he's, he's 18 or 19. No, he's 19. Turned 19. No, he's yeah. 19. I think he's. Uh, mm. When's his birthday? His birthday is uh, January. Yeah, so it'd be. January 26, so just 19 years of age. The two BMWs then came in for a second time, did they? Uh, they came in with everybody else. OK, well, they just come in again in that case. Oh, ah, OK. Um, so just did, Nick did say they'd rather got in each other's way there. Oh, ah, OK. So maybe uh, it, they didn't quite get as much uh, as fueling as they were expecting. No, I've, I've got both the BMWs out on the... Out on the out on the track, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're back out again now, but I think I think they made an extra stop. Oh, OK. Uh, the number 25 has been through the pit lane 12 times. That's exactly right, in that case it was a second stop, yeah. Well, let's find out what the strategy was there, because uh, Nick is down in RLL BMW land with Philip A. Philip A, fresh, I say fresh out of the uh, 24, it's obviously quite hard work in there. But it's so much fun. It doesn't matter if it's hard work. It's just those cars around this track is phenomenal. And I enjoyed every single second of it, uh, even though the, the fighting was very tough, um, but very fair, I must say. 
uh, across all categories, across, across all classes. So much good fun. We seem to have uh, quite a good package and it's still a long way to go, but it's very good fun. It seemed that the two cars got slightly each other's way at that last pit stop. Yeah, I haven't seen the images yet, um, but we lost one or two spots, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's still so long to go, and as you can see in this race, anything can happen. We just need to uh, stay out of trouble and hope for the best in the end. Uh, and were they brought in again for it? Did you bring them in again uh, for top off? Yes, that's correct. It was planned. Um, I actually came immediately here, so I, I need to follow up on that one. I mean, it's easy to say great fun. I mean, what, what, what is it like, you know, are you going to go back out again for the darkness? Do you get the good darkness one, which is even more fun? The last, the first two laps I did in night practice felt very fast. Uh, you know, the eyes need to adapt uh, to the speed. Um, there is very little lightning, uh, light, lighting, how do you say, lighting around the track. Um, so it's pretty difficult to see, but then your eyes adapt to it. Um, I'm pretty sure I will get uh, back in because I think I didn't embarrass myself in my two stints, so fingers crossed. You did a great job. Thank you, Philip. He did not embarrass himself at all. Philip Heng, great interview again. I'm loving this. Fantastic. We're back to green. Four hours and 35 minutes to go. Scott Dixon led them through uh, with a very nice restart. Battles going on further behind with Ricky Taylor looking at the back of Jack Aiken and was very close to the back of Jack Aiken's wheel and engineering Cadillac for a moment or two. The leader gets away. The battle for second, third and fourth group goes through turn number five over the top of the brow. Sun just beginning to sink into the eyes of the drivers as they come to turn six and turn right-handed towards turn seven. That's where the sun will be setting in a couple of hours' time. Sunset exactly two hours away. Official darkness starting at 7.30. Why is that important? I'll tell you. Because if you haven't done, if you're a driver who hasn't done your night laps and qualified, then you cannot drive beyond 7.30 this evening. And there's a couple of cars that have drivers who have not done that. So back to green flag racing, the last Green flag session was only 33 minutes. Wow, so they've got number the in LMP2, the uh, era motorsport team has got themselves back on a lead lap. So we heard from Ryan Dill a, a while ago at that stage he was two laps behind. Now he's still he's back on the lead lap with the other leaders in LMP2. So we've got four cars now on that uh, lead lap in LMP2. Number 04, number 11, number 52, number 18, which is a fair way behind because it, it got the wave around but hadn't caught up yes. with the back of the pack where we went green. But he is back on the lead lap, so that's great news for him. And then the uh, number, the, the next car up is Josh Pearson, in car number 35, the second of the TDS cars. He is at one lap down to the leaders. Yes. Now where is he? And then one lap done. behind him is number 88. I'm just trying to find uh, that 35 TDS racing car on the track, and I haven't seen him for a little while but he's out there, it's in the thick of it i think yeah, yeah. and that's the problem yeah uh, when the cars are so close together which is pretty much all the time uh, even our tracker struggles to get them apart it's just a clump of color that we have on the screen yeah. what a run by the jdc miller motorsports porsche today he's been right up the sharp end of the field jensen button jb from uh, world Formula One drivers champion, of course, in behind the wheel of that car, yeah. was given the 52 page manual to uh, read. A uh, 52 page manual for the steering wheel controls, by the way. Now, this is a man who's driven in Formula One and won in Formula One, but not for a while has he driven something this complicated and freely admits that uh, this is probably the most technologically advanced car that he has driven. Six different panels on the steering wheel five sets of thumb wheels uh, four calling birds three french hens and <laughs> partridge in a pear tree uh, yeah. the team I mean, trying to help him out because everything's color coded so it, it literally is bronze thumb wheel to number three press the green button twice and then twizzle the blue dial round to d or whatever it is i mean and so that's how they're talking him through it because he hasn't had that much time in the car. In fairness, though, he has tested, they have tested here 
th 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 I think that's about the, mo the most testing they've done, Jeremy. I think mm. that was only their second day of testing since they got the car, and that was here at uh, Mission Raceway Road Atlanta. Yeah, they might have had one extra test day somewhere, perhaps. Otherwise, that, that was it. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a steep learning curve for him, as it was for Joseph Newgarden. I think I had a little bit more time in the car than Jensen did. Uh, just one new that we heard from Philip Eng there on the, in the BMW camp. I'd like to know what happened though, to the 25 car, the sister car, because that was running in second place prior to, prior to this round of pit stops. And now they're right at, you know, the, the two BMWs at the back of the pack. So, you know, they gave up a lot of track position there. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking something might have been slightly awry at that latest pit stop for number 25 car. Because they, they had come in during the previous caution period which they should have needed a little bit less fuel than some of the other contenders. That's a good point. Uh, Kirk has uh, tweeted at IMSA Radio how many laps behind the BMW uh, X40M, X50M, sorry. Um, at 48 laps for two hours and six minutes. Hello to Phil Wayne. And uh, he would like us to mention Ewan Wayne, who's in Budapest tonight, running a marathon tomorrow, raising money for Marie Curie UK with other students from Lush Barouche University, Loughborough um, University. A very good cause there. And Dave Olcock, hello Dave. He's been with us all day, I think. Says, uh, totally agree with all the characters. It's an absolute joy, isn't it? Yes. It is. Uh, let's pick up some news from the pit lane. Drivers who are recently out of the car. Jack Aitken now in Wheeling Wheel Engineering Cadillac. That means Alexander Sims can talk to Nick Damon. Uh, we're just going to move ourselves into an easier position. Uh, Alexander, once again after that pit stop, we saw a massive race off the pit lane to get in the position. But it did go a bit wrong, didn't it, about uh, two hours ago? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, we're so close to the pit exit here that, um, yeah, when, when I got told to launch, I was fully aware, having been looking in my mirror, that the other cars were coming right close to me. So I was focusing on making sure I didn't touch them when I pulled across. And then they were right close to me. And yeah, I saw the pit close light at the last moment, but it was just too much risk to slam on the brakes. And um, yeah, in the end, we did actually get a little tap from behind as well. So it is it's where it is. Um, yeah, thankfully we, it was all served and we're back in the race, all good. Luckily, early enough to get, get it all out of the way, because it was just a, obviously a, a misunderstanding. And the car's still absolutely, car still absolutely fine after that tap at the back, yeah? Yeah, I think we changed the, the tail on it. Um, car feels the best it's been all the time we've been here at Road Atlanta this year, honestly. We've done a, a couple of test days and all three practice here. It's, it's now in a really nice window and, yeah, very, very little balance issues. Well, Jack's, I, I think Jack's actually in the fastest lap of the day so far, so he's only going all right. What are the tactics moving forward now? Um, I mean, try and beat our rivals, standard thing in racing. Try and do the best job as, as we can without any mistakes. Um, I mean, Jack and Pipo have been on fire all weekend, so uh, yeah, hopefully they can keep the car up front. I mean, we, we all know that it's all about half past seven onwards when it gets dark. I mean, how do you drive these, these, you know, these couple of hours in between? Do you try and do it to keep the car in the best, but really, really conservatively? Or do you want to be leading at 7.30? Well, honestly, no. when I was in the car, knowing that it was just the middle of the race and frankly, you're not going to win the race by, you know, over doing a, a do or die move um, with five hours to go or whatever. So I was just trying to be smart, save fuel as, as, as much as possible so that when the inevitable yellow comes, you know, you pack up and then boom, you can you can jump people in the pits. Seems like it's worked quite well. Um, that's got us back in the race from the issues earlier on. So, um, yeah. It's going to be fun in the night, though, for, for the other guys. Great, thanks, thanks, Anna. Cheers. Uh, down by Corvette. Unfortunately, there is a C8R getting no work done to it back in the garage area. Uh, there's a little bit of a powwow going on with the drivers. Some of the big wigs from GM, Gary Pratt, is over here waiting for an official statement as to what has taken this car out of the race. Thanks, Shay. The... The... Uh, car came to a halt whilst leading its class and just seemed to go uh, poof. The word, uh, I don't know if you heard this earlier, Shea, so this might uh, uh, might uh, help with your question, line of questioning. <laughs> it sounded like Bradley here. Uh, inform your questioning to the team. There, there was some 
reports earlier on from trackside marshals and indeed from the number 14 car when sitting behind it, the Lexus, that there was some fluid being uh, thrown out the back of that car. Not sure if that has had a bearing on the demise of the C8R. Onward and upwards, new car next year. A purpose built GT3. And it will have been built with purpose as well, knowing Pratt Miller and Corvette Racing. So this, uh, you, you talked about that fastest lap of the race set by uh, Jack Aitken just a couple of laps ago. Also, within the last couple of laps, uh, best lap times for the for the car set by number 60, Tom Blomquist, and number five, Jensen Button. Didn't take him long, long to get up to speed, did it? Did it? I would have expected nothing different from Jens. Um, he wouldn't have come here without knowing that he would be competitive. Yeah. Because if I know anything about Jensen, if, if it was a shopping trolley race around the local <laughs> publics, he would have had a test day first to make sure he's going to be OK. Yeah, and he, 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 was it Nick asking the question early on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the grid as to whether, you know, whether he, would he be back here next year? And but, but basically, I was, well, if I enjoy it, it was really what he said. Yeah. I hope I enjoy it. Well, I think he's enjoying himself right now. It hasn't taken him long to get up to speed. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's very, very impressive, though. Very few laps, I mean, just half a dozen laps. And there he is, uh, uh, right uh, on the case in that number five car. Another guest, Jeremy, behind you. Neil Verhagen, for Hagen. Great for to see you. The, which be, way be is it, Neil? <laughs> now, come on. Uh, which is it, Verhagen or Verhagen? Uh, it's tomato, tomato, but uh, I guess I would say in America, Verhagen. So we're going to stick with Verhagen. OK. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll come back to you in a second. Shea Adam is down in the pit lane with more news. Shea, what's the news? Well, I'm back with the number 12 Lexus now. It is in the garage. It's up on the high, high stands. There are five mechanics underneath it with a jack underneath the gearbox. Uh, they are working as if they feel like they're going to be able to get this changed, but clearly it's a transmission issue for the number 12. Thank you, Shea. Boy. Sub this face up so far, the nail. You've been watching it. Come on. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been pretty chaotic, I think, is a, is a good word to, to describe it with uh, a little bit more incidents than I was expecting to see so early on in the race. I mean, we've, we're have we only just a little over 30 minutes past halfway, so I was expecting to see uh, some more cars on track. But, uh, yeah, the nature of this place is so difficult with the closing speeds of the GTPs with the LMP3s and the GT3 cars. It's so challenging for not just the GTP drivers, but also for the but the slower categories to, to manage that always in the mirror because they come fast. T tell me about your season personally so far. How's it been for you in 2023? You've been a busy lad. Yeah, it's been very busy. So this year, starting off with the uh, Norschleife for the 24 hours uh, and then the GT World Challenge Endurance with Spa 24. Unfortunately, I uh, couldn't get the result in either of those. It was, uh, yeah, heartbreaking. Ran up front in both of those, unfortunately. I guess it's racing didn't come together, but we'll uh, hopefully have another uh, opportunity to attack that again. Uh, and just recently coming back over to the SRO America, running in the GT World Challenge America with Samantha Tan Racing. That's been very successful. So big thank you to Samantha and her team there to bring me on board. That's been uh, super nice. All with the blue and white of BMW, of course, and the M Sport stripes. Which, of course, yes. As I've always said, you can't make any vehicle look worse by putting M Sport. Mm stripes on it uh, when you look at this championship now and the opportunities here and you've been close enough to bmw uh, m uh, and motorsports to have seen the gtp as well as the gt3 gtd uh, progress in the, the last couple of years uh, how excited are you to be part of this bmw family yeah for sure i mean bmw is at the the top level of imsa racing now which is exciting for everybody inside the company to see uh like, for example, at Watkins Glen, fighting for the overall win there. Uh, you know, had great run of races this year so far. Some ups, some downs, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's been very successful. And, yeah, to see that as a driver and to see the, the potential of, of where you could, you know, end up at the pinnacle of uh, sports car racing is, is super cool for myself. Uh, and yeah, for me personally, I love the IMSA paddock. It's, it's a super nice place. I think the racing's awesome. It's always super exciting. It always has something going on. Uh, yeah. 
can't really uh, say any much more good things about it. I I'm probably one of the luckiest people in the world, most fortunate perhaps in the world, because actually I'm not lucky at, lucky at all, but I've certainly been fortunate. Um, but uh, I get to travel around the world and talk about motor racing, watch a lot of motor racing. This race, because it was my first US race, particularly back in 1998, how old were you? No, you were born then, were you? I wasn't even a thought back then. No. Oh, dear God. Uh, the Nürburgring. Terrifying. I know, I know. I, I think we thought 18, dri 18 drivers who weren't born um, when Petit Le Mans first took place are in this race uh, this weekend. The Nürburgring Nordschleife is a, a magical, terrifying, wonderful, awesome, lots of superlative places. Do you ever get used to driving around that place do you ever feel totally comfortable i don't think uh, anybody will ever feel totally comfortable around that place i think every lap you do you figure out something new you learn something new which is i think what you know makes the place so special you have uh, an incredibly talented level of factory drivers that race there competing for the 24 hours mixed with uh, uh, a mix of not so competitive drivers that are doing it more for fun and you know the aspect of mixing those two two racing profiles as well as different speeds of cars it man the place is so difficult uh, but yeah there's something so special about that as well too the the challenge uh, i mean the track itself is already a challenge but to factor in all of the uh, all of the above with weather conditions you know other drivers traffic it's it makes i think the race one of the most difficult in the world but the last two hours here tonight in the darkness uh, do you like racing in the dark and do you find it easier or harder to race? Something like the Nürburgring. Um, there's less to distract you in the dark because you've just got your headlights pointing at what you need to see. Does that make life easier or harder? Yeah, especially in the Nürburgring, you get like this tunnel vision with the lights, you know, like because you the only tricks. have, you know, the, there's no lights around the track. It's completely pitch black for almost 20 kilometers of, of racing there. So, you know, once you get, you turn on to the Nordschleife, it's, you know, all you have is your headlights and it you know creates kind of a tunnel vision and it's there it doesn't seem to be you know always so bad but you know for example like spa this year you know with so many cars on track at the same time you know you have people flashing the headlights you have you know so many people that are so close as well too all around the track it i think that makes it a little bit more difficult on the on the eyes where in north life you kind of just focus on on your uh, on what's ahead of you and the concentration, though, required is very high around the North Shore. What, you, what have you got planned? NLS season's finished now. Um, what you got planned between now and the holiday period? And more importantly, what do you think's on the cards for next year? Yeah, that's uh, that's all being figured out right now. So I wish uh, I actually would know myself, but uh, no, it's... Uh, staying with BMW? Yes, staying with BMW. So that, uh, I don't know if that's actually officially been announced yet, but uh, maybe I just made that public now. So yeah, no, uh, staying with BMW again for... Edit that bit. <laughs> <laughs> staying with BMW for next year. Uh, incredibly happy with the opportunities that they've presented me this year and uh, everything that they've done to, to support me through the, through the junior team and now my first year as a full factory driver. So... Um, yeah, no, it's been uh, an incredible journey and definitely, uh, yeah, look forward to what we have and plans in the future. And been fun to race over here again this year as well. Lose to some race at least. Over yeah, exactly. Here. Yes, it's been uh, refreshing. It's been very nice. I've enjoyed every bit of it. So uh, always a pleasure to come back and race in America and hopefully can do some more of it next year. Yeah. Well. Thanks for coming to see us. Hang around for a little bit. We might need you to do a little bit of driver analysis if anything uh, <laughs> anything happens here. Uh, let's just remind everybody uh, here in the US and around the world, we're on 98.1 Road Atlanta FM, XM Series 207, commercial free all the way through for the next four hours and 18 minutes. RS2 around the world as part of the Radio Show Limited network of audio and video channels. And if we're talking about video, the World Feed TV, all free you're outside the US uh, with no uh, interruptions whatsoever. Uh, we'll be right through to the end of the race uh, on uh, on IMSA.tv and also on IMSA Radio. Just have to go to the uh, little menu button at the top left and it's on the first part of the drop-down menu. Shea Adam down in the pit lane. With an old friend and Kenton Cook. We've been in a position before where you have a chance to win the Michelin Endurance Cup. Now you're back at it again. 
But hey, when you were driving, you got to the point lead. Should we just stop the race now? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been good. So uh, very fortunate to be a part of this team and uh, be be the third driver in these endurance races to help this team get get an NAEC championship. Uh, obviously, a long race to go here. We'll see what what happens and uh, uh, hopefully we can be on the the top step of the podium and then also get a championship uh, along with it. So um, yeah, I hope you sound better. <laughs> yeah, you're always uh, working hard, so I can understand why. Thank you, my friend. Um, does the attention ever shift away from the race win when you are in for another championship? Well, right now it's you know about the four hour, the eight hour, and then ultimately what where we end up finishing after that. Just trying to maximize the points that we get in those those sectors of the race. Uh, so it's just one step at a time, uh, and then whatever comes our way at the end is what what uh, is what comes. Good luck. It is one of the coolest trophies of the year. Yeah, it's really freaking cool. It's so awesome to be here. So finishing it at the lights is going to be fun. Language, Kenton, language. Four hours and 15 minutes to go. Pass for second place in GTD. A moment or two ago, Mikael Granier, the team caught off Motorsports, had a goal coming up to turn five. That wasn't going to work. And then made it stick going down into 10A. So Russell Ward goes back to third for Wimbledon Racing. Tian Halen now leading for Wright Motorsport in the 16 Porsche. And last race for a little while for... Alan Brynjolfsson in the number 77. Uh, Max Root actually in behind the wheel of that right motorsports car. Team car to the machine that's just made the pass has uh, got uh, Catherine Legg's car right in behind. Now, is that Catherine who's driving that car uh, at the moment? It's not, it's Mark Miller. It's Miller time then. And the green and white NSX just trying to make up another position. Great scraps all the way down that GTD and GTD Pro field as they're mixed pretty well together. Three GTDs, two GTD Pros, two GT GTDs, three GTD Pros, and then a whole slew of GTDs. At the front of the field, Scott Dixon leads by just three quarters of a second now. And in fact, the top three are within a second and a half with Jack Aiken and Ricky Taylor having just closed in. And yeah, all of a sudden that number 10 car closed. It was four seconds behind last time or a couple of laps ago. And he's got uh, a bit of uh, good luck through the traffic, whereas the leaders, Scott Dixon, there uh, just hold up just a little bit, but. Yeah, Scott Dixon, he is amazing, isn't he? This is his first stint of the race uh, today and uh, was uh, you know, he pulled out a little bit uh, early on in, in his stint. It's been re reeled back in again now as he's worked his way through the traffic. But again, his goal is to just to keep that car in uh, in contention, really, because uh, it's the regular season drivers, Renga van der Zander and Sebastian Bourdais, who've been... Yeah, the stalwarts of this season, really, of this uh, team for the last couple of years. And they've had a difficult campaign. We heard from Sebastian Bourdais earlier on, but he knows he's got a fast car here today. Jets are but closing in on Joseph Newgarden. Battle of the single seat, the drivers then. In fifth and sixth, the red, white, and black portion of the seven and the all yellow portion of the five cutting their way through traffic. Jensen at the moment just uh, closing in. McGrenier, lap or two ago, going down the inside at turn 10. A classic Road Atlanta uh, overtaking manoeuvre. Neil Verhagen with us now. And right, that is exactly what you want. Nice and clean, respect by both drivers. Yeah, for sure. That's a textbook move there. Uh, Lamborghini's very good on the brakes. I think that's definitely a, a strong suit of their car. Um, yeah was able to get down the inside, make a clean uh, move, and you can see they have a little bit of pace now. They're pulling away from the Mercedes now, and uh, yeah, it's uh, looking very good for them right now. How much opportunity when you're racing in a, on a busy circuit like this is, do you get to size up those overtaking maneuvers, or do you just basically have to take them when they present themselves? How quick is the decision-making process? 
Yeah, I think that's, you know, all about the risk management because, you know, with multi-class racing and, you know, even like right there, it's it's just a, a cluster of cars at one time. And, you know, with the faster traffic that, you know, we'll check up the, the slower cars and, you know, with a slower car, we'll also check up the faster cars as we see uh, as, a, as we see a GTD car getting stuck in between some of the GTP cars. But, you know, I think the, the main thing there is like, you know, sometimes you can get checked up and it helps you. Other times you, you know, can get free and it also helps you or, you know, you can be on the losing side of things there. So for me personally, I mean, yes, I wouldn't take so much risk before the last uh, couple of hours, but, you know, sometimes there's crunch time and it needs to be done. I know this isn't the same length of circuit as the Nürburgring Nordschleife, but the traffic density actually is quite similar to what you get in the Nürburgring 24 hours. There, there's a, in some ways, an even bigger performance difference, speed difference between the front and the back of the field, despite the fact that you don't have prototypes there. So are, are you feeling for these drivers now? Can you can you associate with what's going on here? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, my... My fellow colleagues that are racing on me on the Nordschleife are also here this weekend as well too, and I've been speaking to them, and everyone has just been saying, "Wow, the traffic is you know so difficult to to navigate because you know there's so many places that are so difficult to overtake. Like if you cannot get by before the S's, then you know it's very difficult to to get by before the S's. Also, if you get stuck in the last corner, you know it's just you know as a as a GTP driver, you're just a sitting duck then to to the cars behind you. As I said, you know you'll get held up, but you'll also be able to make some time on some people so you know i think this really brings out the best uh, traffic management in sports cars it's a heck of a battle going on between joseph newgarden jensen button then another three seconds further back jimmy bruni conor de Filippi, augusto farfus all carving their way through traffic sort of concertinering uh, in and out as the sun for the moment goes behind a uh, Quite dark cloud, but the track temperature has started to drop. We got up to 33, 34, 35 Celsius. That was triple digits. Now down to 77 Fahrenheit and 25 Celsius. That track temperature, are you feeling that as a driver? Do you feel that kind of difference between 100 Fahrenheit or whatever it was, 33 Celsius and now 25 Celsius? Yeah, I don't think you feel it as much in the car. You'll definitely feel it a little bit, but you really start feeling it on the tires. Like the tire life just starts to start coming towards you. You know, you can start pushing a little bit more on the tires. Uh, you know, degradation on the tire becomes a bit nicer as the temperatures start cooling down. Uh, and I think, you know, that's when, you know, you can really start to extract a little bit more out of the cars as the, you know, race starts winding down as well too. When we start getting into the last couple of hours where the temperatures will start to drop even more than, you know, you'll start seeing these more quality lap performances coming out. Yeah, I mean, at Nürburgring, during the 24 hours there, how much does the temperature drop overnight compared <laughs> to during the daytime? Yeah, I mean, it's always cold in the Nürburgring, so there's not uh, a really high starting temp, but no, for sure, yeah, when the, when the sun comes down, it gets very cold very fast there. So, you know, that's something that, you know, changes even for, like, the aero cars, like yeah. the DG3 has some aero, but you know, the air becomes more dense. You get a little bit more downforce as well yeah. too, then you're able to push a little bit harder. It, it went down to freezing this year at the Nürburgring. Doing 24 hours? Yeah, it, it was just above freezing point because the heating came on uh, in, in the house that we were staying in. And it, it was really, ch and it was, it was 28 or 29, maybe 30 Celsius was about the high point just before we started the race, if I remember rightly on Saturday, but I remember it being really cold and there being a bit of frost. We've had snow there before for yeah. the 24 hours and, and for some of the earlier uh, earlier races. Just want to say a quick hello to the founding uh, founder and original editor of DailySportsCar.com, Michael, uh, Michael, Malcolm Cracknell, who's been trying to tear himself away from this race since it started. What is it? Half past 10 back in the UK. Hello, Crackers sending uh, our best to you and I know you'll be absolutely loving this battle at the front of the field uh, we uh, send you all of our best from the motorsport community here enjoying this one wherever you are around the world at IMSA Radio the class lap times dropping with particularly the Lynx Lamborghinis have gone back to the pace they were doing at the start of the the race, and, and, and that's what Neil was talking about there, about the, the, the track. Effectively, you, you wait for the track to come back to you. You're setting the car up for the end of the race here. 
Yeah, for sure. You know, the, the balance of your car can be very different from the start of the race to, to the end of the race. And, you know, it's all about uh, management. That's why we have night practice before and, and the weekend, you know, so you can start to get a feel for where the car is going to be. Obviously, you need the car to be good during the whole race. But, you know, at the end of the race, I think, is a little bit more crucial than the beginning of the race. So, you know, it's trying to preserve your material. It's trying to keep your car in the best condition so that when the conditions do suit and you're allowed to push, then, yeah then you have the best package available. The Look, ambient temperature now, I think, is about 72. It's supposed to drop by at least 10 degrees yeah, yeah. by the time the end of the race comes around. Uh, yeah, we, we were up over 100 Fahrenheit uh, officially now. It's 77, but that's going to drop a whole host more. Track temperature. Uh, yeah, the track temperature. Yeah, yeah. ambient. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. ambient. Yes, yeah. my apologies. No, no, no. Uh, 70, 73, it says here, but yeah, I'll... I mean, that's still pleasant. It's 23 Celsius. That's a summer day back in the UK. <laughs> uh, uh, hence why we're all wearing T-shirt and shorts in, uh, in here. Um, uh, setting the car up for the Nürburgring Nordschleife for any race, never mind the Nürburgring 24. So what weather conditions and what uh, temperature conditions do you set your car up for? All of them. Yeah, that's right. the, that's the, that is it, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think in the in the Nurburgring you don't set it up for the conditions. You just try to set it up as you know the most drivable race car possible because you know you might have snow in a quarter of the racetrack. It might be completely dry and sunny in the other part. And it might be raining on the back half. So you know it just is is such a challenging event. Do you enjoy that challenge as a driver though? Because I mean sometimes it is survival on the Nordschleife when it's raining particularly heavily or it's freezing cold or you hit a bank of fog. Every lap is an adventure there, isn't yep. it? Yeah, I think, you know, it's as a driver, it's very difficult because with all the cars on track as well, too, with, you know, different cars with different tires, different rubber, uh, you know, some cars dropping oil as well, too, at some points, uh, dirt, grass, rain, whatever. The track is never the same. You never approach the same corner twice in, in the Norschleife. So, you know, you always have to be reactive and adaptive on, on the Norschleife. It's not something that you can just, you know, be robotic in every single lap, do the same thing, right. because it's just not possible around there. It's almost more like being a rally driver than a race driver, because you're feeling for that grip every time you turn the car in. Yes, of course, you know which corner you're coming to, so you know what optimum it should be, but you're never really sure, are you? No, I mean... You know, I think, you know, it's not a, a huge swing, but, you know, there's definitely some laps where, you know, something was possible the lap before, which is just not possible the, the next lap. So, you know, you, you know, that's where the experience of guys that have done it for so long have uh, where they excel. And, yeah, I love uh, learning from guys like that. Well, this race on your bucket list must be. Yeah, for sure. I think this is one of my favorite American tracks. So this would be a, a, a racetrack that I would love to race at. I think this is a very prestigious event as well. So to be able to uh, hopefully participate would be amazing. Uh, you're listening to the voice of uh, Neil Tomato Tomato for Harvey Verhagen, as he said. <laughs> uh, 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 you're always going to be Tomato Tomato now, to me. You know, <laughs> you, know, you know that, don't you? Coming down to the uh, four hours to go mark, Jeremy. So that's another swathe of points to be handed out for Michelin Endurance, isn't it? No, uh, oh, no, no. Sorry, no, go, I'm two no, hours away. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a 10 hour race. Yeah, it's, it's, not a 12 it's hour after race. four hours and then. And then after eight hours, yeah, so yeah. not four I, I hours just think, from the end. Yeah. I, uh, no, I extended this race by two hours. I was thinking it was a 12-hour race, um, <laughs> uh, which, yeah, which has been more darkness running. I think we've, you know, just don't tell anybody. We'll just, just keep going. Uh, Scott Dixon leads by 2.2 seconds now. And this is a decent long run we're having, and Scott doing his job. He will be uh, saving fuel, because he always does. Scott Dixon has the ability to make fuel by some kind of osmosis. That's what he does. Jack Aitken in second for Wheel and Engineering has a 1.3 second gap to Ricky Taylor in third. He's pushing really hard in the Kodika Vidalta Acura. The second Acura of Tom Blanc raced up into sixth position, another four seconds further back. And it's Joseph Newgarden and Jensen Button still having that scrap. And Jimmy Bruni just closing in on them as well to make it a three-car battle. Two seconds further back, Conor de Philippe running in lockstep with Augusta Farfus. They are the top nine. They are all on the lead lap. Nick Damon down in the pits. Well, after an incredibly quiet period where no one wants to come and see me, uh, the number nine Faf car, the it's Porsche. Not personal, you know. Well, I realize. Well, you say that. Um, the, uh, the Faf car came in for a fuel and tyre stop and then disappeared away again. Um, interesting that because it had so, so many problems with the front of the car, bits were falling off. Uh, there was a kind of a loose strip again at the bottom of the uh, area. 
you know, the grill in front of the air intake, you can smell the splitter. So obviously the front of that car is finding it very difficult to stay attached to the rest of that car. Not what you want around here, I would have thought. LMP two points as they run. Ben Keating and Paul Loup Shatan are three points the champions to Mikkel Jensen and Stephen Thomas with uh, Ben Handley and George Curtin at the 57 points further back. But don't forget they are also racing for the Le Mans entry. They came into that tide this weekend. So basically that is winner take all at the moment. Ben Keating already announced as a United Autosports driver uh, in one of two United cars that will be competing in LMP2 next season in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. A, a dozen cars in that class as performance tech number 38, the fourth place car in its category, has gone off at the top of turn number three, four hours and a minute and they've high centered the car it's stuck they're not going to get that car off that is an out lap for that car and the full course yellow comes out with exactly jeremy shaw four hours to go now who got into the pits in time brian Thien's on his out lap he was going slowly but maybe not slowly enough oh he got a touch he just got a touch from the ferrari and that was the 12th placed uh, GT car. And I reckon that was, uh, well, which of the cars was that? That must have been the uh, on a Frio Triazi driven 023. Yes, it was. So that's going to be a penalty there proof again of just how difficult it is to get heat into the tyres on the way out. Pit stops for LMP2, shit, Adam. The 0-4 from CrowdStrike Racing came in. Nolan Siegel got out of that car. Ben Hanley took it over and beat out onto the fast lane the number 52, PR1 Matheson, which also came in. That was Alex Quinn driving it into the pit lane. Paul Chaton taking it out. Yeah, there was about a couple of seconds between those two in that in that same order as they came into the pits. And I think they, they just about beat that full course caution. I will check because we can do such things. Uh, at uh, the 04, yes, Nolan Siegel, he was in about three or four seconds before it was called. Ooh, in that case, the 52 would be very, very close. Uh, the race control let me see race control called it at uh, 40 minutes and six seconds past the hour Nolan Singh came in at 40 and three however Alex Quinn came in at 40 and seven so a second afterwards but again it will depend whether they were at the commit line and already in the pit lane there's a camera there for precisely that because there is a good second or so before you hit the pit lane speed marker, which is where the timing tells me that they're in the pits. I think he's probably going to be OK on that. That incident under review uh, at the top of the hill. Uh, Neil Verhag is with us. So difficult on cold tyres coming out. And the prototype driver there really struggling, trying to keep out of out of the way. Um, he, Brian Thienz is uh, underway again with some damage to the left rear of that car. How much can you... S you've driven here before, haven't you? You must have driven here. I have, yes. Yes. How much over the top can you see as because the pit lane comes out and then the car disappears over the top? What would that Ferrari driver have seen as he turned in to turn two? Nothing at all? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a difficult one. Um, I'm not sure where he was relative to the LMP3 coming out of the pits. I don't know if he would have seen that the car was coming out slow. This I wasn't really seeing too much. I just saw the back end of it where, where the LMP3 was in the wall. But, yeah, it's a tricky one, obviously, because you don't expect sometimes, and I think the what really catches people out is the GTPs when they go so slow coming out of the pits because, you know, they're fighting for their life just to stay on track, but they're going so slow that, you know, they're they're essentially the slowest car on track at the moment for however long it is until their tires get warmed up. So I think that can really catch some drivers out, you know, especially if you haven't spotted that and you've came flying over the hill going into turn three. It's and, pretty committed there, isn't and it? And it is a very committed corner, and all of a sudden there could be a stop car, and that makes uh, eek. Like, life very <laughs> difficult, yes. <laughs> is that an eek? moment <laughs> yeah that's uh i think a lot of moment there <laughs> yeah. 
So we are under four hours to go. Uh, we are in uh, another period that we see the. Oh, it's a it's a different it's a different uh, safety car. We've changed the BMW X50M uh, to well at least a different colour as we are working our eighth full course yellow. Uh, that brought to an end a 34 minutes. 34 minutes a green flag run. Very dark, nice dark blue with copper highlights on the BMW, the big BMW safety car with the twin turbo V8 for hundreds and plenties of. But let me correct power. you, that is the XM with the, the hybrid XM, V8. Yes, the so hybrid it's XM, the yes. same engine as in the uh, GTP car that we have here. So that is the significance of the new XM, which is, uh, yeah. Quite the road car. Uh, we had a, a, a little turning born earlier in the week, or at least Nick and Joe did, and they brought us into the circuit uh, uh, on Thursday in it. It's very, very comfy in size. Uh, Nick Damon, talk of uh, poly poly polyogonal uh, areas of the sunroof from that XM uh, BMW, which you liked a lot, but you've got some uh, BMW prototypes coming out. I've got every sort of prototype, all kinds of prototypes, as Dana might say these days, rather than everything. Uh, they all stop. Now, I don't think that anybody is going to take uh, going to take a driver. Oh, no, I tell you a lie, there's a change on the 10 car, so that's changed. Um, but look at the other side, the 60, no, that's the that other Acura's not stopping. Uh, the two um, customer Porsche have pulled in, did some buttons staying aboard, but no, Jimmy um, Jimmy uh, Bruni's got out of that after just half an hour, and, and it looks like Neil Yarny is taking over the uh, the Proton car. So Yarny has got into the Proton car. Sticking the same, then we have the the two uh, BMWs again. Seem to they are they are actually uh, I mean a bit of a sort of a. A look at the driver's belt. So it's possibly the 24 change driver, the seven, the only uh, Porsche is still in competition. That's also now sitting down. But that's just tyres as well. And look well, the amount of wheels that are going nowhere on the 25 as it tries to leave its pit box is unbelievable. One final point: just before this mayhem started, the 38 Andretti car, the P3 car, came down the pit lane with a very deranged rear left and went straight behind the wheel. We had three P3s come into the pit lane and take sticker tires during that stop. Riley was one of them, the number 30 for Junior 3, and the last one was AWA with their number 13 machine. Thank you, Shay. Uh, we're pit back timing Shay's voice to the end of the race, by the way, uh, this evening. Neil, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, young man. Thank you uh, so much seems, for having me. Seems like a while since I've, I've seen you. Uh, I think I have seen you since you were in the UK for Team USA. I must have bumped in you in some Oh, he's come into the booth in yeah. Daytona a few yeah, times. Yeah, of course. There you go. Yeah. Uh, keep the good work. Enjoy the holiday season. And when you can, let us know. Come on Midweek Motorsport and talk about next year's plans, OK? Perfect. Thank you very much for having me, per usual. Thank you, Jeremy. It's a pleasure to always be up here and talk with you guys. Uh, let's go down to the pits where the GTs are in. Whisper, Shay, whisper. <laughs> You can see three of the GT leaders. We've got the number right, uh, 16 right motorsport car in the pit lane. Looks like Jan Halen is staying in for now, but getting new tires. For Rexy, she's in. Sabrio staying in the pit lane. Virginia taking over. New tires there. The new tires also for the Windward Mercedes, but a track change at Bolt. It's now Trent Hitman aboard the number 77. Uh, both harder racing cars in, both the Aston Martins, and both of them have changed drivers. Then we have the 62, the uh, car is going on, so they're all come through. There's the weather check, the state of the 79. Oh, then the, the 16 car, which was the first off the pit lane last time, the, uh, the Porsche, that's only third this time. So there has been some excitement in the pit lane, a change of order. Uh, the right motorsport car no longer the first car, and a phalanx of machines now going uh, uh, nose to tail, apart from, of course, the Risi Ferrari, which is, uh, again, slightly off the back. Oh, I said that, and then the Magnus uh, Aston Martin brings up the rear. Uh, but they are going particularly well, but actually still in the pits. I think, is that the Paul Miller car that's had so many pit stops so far? Thank you, Nick. And so the drama continues. Uh, uh, I think we've hit our drama quotient, Jeremy. Um, 
possibly peaked a bit early here. We have had some cracking racing. I just want a bit more of it. I'm sorry, I'm greedy. It's as simple as that. Yeah, look, we've got to change the lead for it for, uh, for the first time in a while again, haven't we? Uh, we've got the number uh, 10 car now, so uh, that'll be another right. uh, change in the uh, in the lead in the virtual points, particularly for manufacturers at this stage. Just this number 10 car uh, led the points coming into this race, so with this uh, forward here into third position, uh, from third to first, they're looking good right now. It's our ninth lead change of the day. Five different cars have led the race at this stage. So Louis de la Trace will be leading at the restart in the number 10 car, the Acura from the two Cadillacs, Scott Dixon and Jack Aitken, number 01 and number 31 respectively. Then the second of the Acura is Tom Blomquist in car number 60, so he maintains that fourth position uh, from prior, from the pre, from before the stop. Philippe Nasser now at the wheel of car number seven from uh, Joseph Newgarden. So back to the, the starting driver in that number seven car. Uh, in the pit lane, and this has been uh, a bit of a pattern now, Nick Dearman. If the BMWs are at the back of the GTP field, one or both of them, well, one is in seventh, that's the 25, Conor de Pellini, so they've stayed out. Was that Marco Whitman coming back in yep. for the second stop? And he got four seconds of fuel. There's a very convenient county number thing, isn't there, on the side of the car? A what? A county number thing. Is that a technical term? It is now. It's officially it's in the dictionary. Oh, we, have, we haven't had the dictionary for a while, have we? No, we um, really haven't. And, uh, there is a Porsche rolling down towards me. I'm not sure if that's the six out of sequence. It... Is it the six? Yeah, it's a six out sequence. It is, it's six correct. That's back. And there's a few of the P2 cars, I think, also getting a, a slurp and a, a dash of fuel. And there is the Iron Damed uh, Lamborghini, which is also caused out of sequence as well, after that problem they had earlier on, after that fantastic first half hour or hour by uh, Dorian Pan. Uh, I love the idea that uh, Lawrence Vanto has been told to stay out and then come round and get one of the laps back. They're down to 67 laps uh, behind the wheel now. But I mean, it's good practice. It's exactly what they should have been, should be doing, and the uh, Iron Dames car as well has done the thing. Uh, that was Dorian Pan who brought it in. She's getting out the car. Uh, they're back to within three laps. Let me check that. Uh, no, four laps uh, of the lead in GTD, I think. Dorian helping her teammate into the car, and I think that is Sarah. Uh, is there? Who's that? He's got into the car. I think it was Michelle Gatting. He got into the car there. I'll tell you in a minute. Looked slightly too tall to be Ryle Fry. Gonna, actually, that's unfortunate for them. They've had to stop at the end of the pit lane. Spotted the traffic light, though. Well done. Some others have not today. So, as Jeremy rightly said, there's been a change at the lead of the field. As the lights have just gone out on the safety car, it's the Acura ARX 06 of Louis Delatraz. Now, if you had been watching uh, yesterday and seen the fight for Paul, you would have seen Louis Delatraz, uh, who absolutely blitzed it on a single lap on a drying track on a set of brand new tyres. And if you maybe haven't watched the uh, previous hours of this race, you might think, ah, oh, come back, no, nothing's happened. The pole man's still leading. Uh, there's been a lot going on, and that was another lead change. Eight different cars at the head of the field, Jeremy, uh, on actually a heck of a lot more than eight lead changes as well, of course. Uh, no, actually, the, the, we've, well, no, we've only had nine lead changes. Oh, have we? Yeah, 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 because um, the number uh, seven car led from lap... 89 through 166, that was a long stint in the lead, and then from 167 to one, to 241 for the number 01 car. So uh, two long uh, stints out in front for those two cars, number 7 and number 01. So we'll see the number 10 car that led, uh, of course, earlier in the race can maintain its position. Louis Delatraz back at the wheel of that car. 
Here we go for another restart, and this time it's Louis Delatraz. Didn't get the best of starts when we went green for the first time this morning. He's done a better job here, but Scott Dixon's tracking him all the way, and behind Scott Dixon, Jack Aiken in the red-fronted Cadillac for a moment. Dive to the right-hand side, just a little faint there. Dixie covered him, fourth position. Chum, oh, uh, Tom Blancvist, and there are breaking away nicely as the leading car sun starting to become a problem for us even in the booth now as the shadows lengthen track temperature down to 75 celsius 73 in the uh, 75 fahrenheit 73 in the air it's 24 celsius and 23 in the air it's beginning to to balance itself back up. Will the Acuras come back into play as the track temperature drops? They were much better when it was cooler this morning. And the restart has been clean this time, waiting to see if there is anything that comes of it or indeed of the pit stops. Race control have been exceptionally busy today. They'll be putting in a proposal to be paid on decisions made, I think, the way it's been going at the moment. And they have processed an inordinate... We're getting up towards 40 penalties now. And they've processed them all in a very timely fashion. Uh, he hearing from the RWEC Discord group that Cher Adam has gone behind the wall for problems with her voice but uh, not listed as a DNF as yet very good very good indeed Delatra still leading in the classes Ben Hanley leads for crowd strike and Paul Luke Shatton in second they're battling for the championship uh, Nick Damon has found the fabulously quick French driver, Dorian Pan, who led the whole of the GT class earlier on and drove away to a 10-second lead before the first full course, or the, one of the major full course cautions. Uh, Nick, down there in the Iron Dames pit. Dorian, let's, not, let's go right back to the beginning of the race. Your first hour was unbelievable. Where'd that speed come from? <laughs> I don't know the car. I mean, the car is uh, is really good. Uh, we had good good setup, good balance throughout a, a full stint. So um, yeah, I'm pretty happy about the pace. Well, I was able to overtake the two Lexus, so uh, was good fight, good fight with them. And then uh, yeah, uh, it was it was quite simple. It was going really well. Then of course, then you had the suspension problem. What caused that? Do you know? Uh, you mean the pit stop? Yeah, and then your suspension broke, you had to go behind the wall. Uh, no, I was in the car, apparently the P3 uh, diving a bit too late and we uh, the suspension to right, uh, rear right was broken, so we had to stop in the tents to, to change it. The Iron Dames team doing brilliantly and obviously looking to move into different classes for next year. Do you see yourself in GTD or do you see yourself in P2 or do you see yourself perhaps in uh, an LMDH car next year? I really don't know. We have discussion right now, but uh, yeah, of course, my goal is is to be in a, in a hypercar next year. But uh, but we still have some discussion to decide uh, what is the best, and um, we will see. And just finally, I mean, yeah, are you going to get to drive the car in the dark when it's even quicker? Say again. Are you going to get a chance to drive the car when it gets dark and when it get, when the car gets even quicker? Yeah, we'll do the the end of the race. Great stuff. Thank you, Dorian. Okay. She's a force of nature, that driver. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, really did well. Been a couple of things going on. There's a penalty, uh, the incident responsibility for the Ferrari, of course, the Triazi car, when it hit the performance tech number 38. That'll be a drive through. Also, the number 77, Trent Hinman, driven right motorsports Porsche, has been asked to give up a position on track. That was to do with coming. Uh, on the pit exit, so that's been sorted out by race control. Rather than issue a penalty, they've swapped two cars uh, around for that one. On the circuit at the moment, 
battles going on as ever throughout the field with Louis Delatraz leading by 1.6 seconds. Yeah, and just to reset the fastest lap of the race is Louis Delatraz, uh, 111.245 for the Swiss. Well, that is interesting. I, I was just uh, um, wondering if the pace was coming back to the Acuras and albeit with a new set of tyres, but also with quite a full fuel tank. Louis Delatraz, who was sparkling in qualifying earlier on in the week, has answered that question. Yeah, and his next lap was, uh, the best lap was a 111.245, the next lap was a 111.275. Not bad, huh? Hello to Jack Topolsky, who's enjoying IMSA Radio live and free from San Diego. On the beach out there. That looks really rather splendid, to be honest. Thank you for choosing to carry us with you to that lovely looking location at IMSA Radio if you want to get in touch with us still three hours and 41 and a half minutes to go uh, Jeremy Shaw and John Hindoff in the booth and it's uh, Nick Damon on a solo stint coming to the end of the solo stint at the moment Joe Bradley will be in the pit lane in a few minutes time as uh, it's coming to the rotation for not quite the evening session yet, but uh, certainly teams will be looking to the next set of mission and endurance points. They come up in an hour and 40 minutes time, with two hours remaining. These championships, Jeremy, are still far from resolved. OK, we've lost a couple of championship contenders, particularly in GT that number six Porsche but uh, my goodness me bit of a shake up in LMP2 but now we've got crowd strife from PR1 Matheson from TDS racing yeah we've got uh, the fifth car is now back on the lead lap that's the number 35 car yeah. uh, the second of the TDS cars has managed to get back on the lead lap now as well so we've got five cars back on the lead lap in LMP2 and um, P3 just uh, as well yeah yeah the top three cars there are all within a few seconds of each other. The uh, number 25 uh, BMW, Conor D. Filippi, just managed to get past Jensen Button a lap or two ago. That's for sixth position. And 250 laps, actually 251 laps now completed by the race leader, Louis Delatraz. Yeah, it's been... It's been a, a fairly frustrating... Uh, this to me. We've now had uh, eight yellow flags for 53 laps and still we've not had a full hour of green flag racing between any of them. And uh, I, I, I want to see the relative speed of these cars over a longer time. I haven't had a clear page yet. <laughs> Have you not had a clear page? <laughs> not quite. Of, of, of the, Jerry's talking about his, uh, Jeremy's talking about his lap charts. I, don't, I think you're right. We nearly had one. We very, very, very Yeah, we got the 57 one. minutes yeah. um, in which uh, that was uh, started. Um, 122 yeah. to uh, 167. Yeah, agreed. Laps. <laughs> so uh, no, uh, no talk of a record distance here. No. Um, number three officially retired. Ah, yeah. I see a note there. Thank you. That's the Corvette. Uh, meantime, the number 12 Lexus, which had the transmission problems earlier on. A couple of people asking about that, so we got Shane to nip around and talk about it. Um, Parker Thompson, behind the wheel of that Lexus, has gone back out onto the track. So they never see a die attitude from Vassa Sullivan. The usual, as you would expect, spirit of endurance. Delatraz with Scott Dixon trying to close him down and then Jack Aiken. They're all separated by a couple of seconds. The sun now is an issue at turn number seven. It's right in the eyes of the drivers. Yeah. And Just right in the eyes of Jeremy Shaw yeah, as well. Exactly right. As no, he's that's looking fine. across that's the fine. track. Cool. I'll, I'll, yeah, I, 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 I can drop the sun blind. There it's always a major problem. That's fine. I'm quite happy to try. There you go. That's enough. There you go. Yeah, that's 
uh, it's, it's always a major problem there at Turn 7, and uh, yeah, that's one of the nice things about the last couple of days. It wasn't an issue for the drivers because there was uh, constant cloud cover, but that is an issue now, and you know, the sun sets directly over the trees uh, as you are entering Turn 7. You, you're kind of on a high point there, and the, the, uh, the, the trees are sort of dropped down. It's, it's, a, it's a major issue for drivers here. It's the uh, LMP... Uh, three leader Dakota Dickerson driving that car has been out front now for quite a long time in that uh, junior three racing car number 30 and he's uh, got a, a narrow lead over Josh Bird 1.5 seconds last time around and there's been nothing to choose between those three cars the uh, Ligier of Dakota Dickerson number 30 number 74 Riley entry also a Ligier and then Lars Kern is driving the number 13 AWA car right now yeah, uh, you mentioned Josh Pearson, by the way, and uh, being back on the lead lap for TDS, he's actually uh, just put that car's fastest lap of the race, race in with a 13.7. And last time around. We're sort of in a happy hour now, aren't we? Because the track temperature has dropped a little bit, but not too much. The air temperature has come down a little bit. So 23 in the air, 24 on the track. That's uh, 73 Fahrenheit in the air, 75 Fahrenheit on the track. I, I suspect we'll see some decent times coming in if, if you're in a chase mode. If you're in a, a, com, uh, a consolidate mode, maybe not so much. BMW and Porsche there. Connor de Felipe, he's just gone past Felipe Nazar, I think, across into turn number one. Got a better run out the final corner, and Oof. despite some fairly uh, stout defence from Felipe Nazar, Conor de Felipe had the momentum and went round the outside in turn one, and the BMW then goes up a position, and that is now fifth for the number 25 BMW. Jensen Button in uh, Felipe Nasser rather in sixth, Jensen Button in seventh. He's got Neil Janney in a. Another customer Porsche fighting with him at the moment. So it's the bright yellow car from the white WeatherTech sponsored machine. And they're having a scrap for position at the moment. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us. I think two, what are we at the moment? Six o'clock, so we've got an hour to sundown and just under an hour and a half to official darkness. It's got out of Joe Bradley, who has Christian Rasmussen in the pit lane. Well, firstly, I want to talk to you, uh, Christian, about uh, your first stint in the heat of competition in the number 18 here at Oracle. Let's talk about that first, and then I want to talk to you about everything about 2023. No, it, uh, it was a good stint for me. Uh, you know, I started, we, we had a little bit of damage, so, and a little bit of trouble in pit lane, so we went two laps down. Um, but after my stint, we uh, we were back on the lead lap. So, uh, can't complain about that. We've just been kind of like fighting our way back. We're sitting fourth right now with a, with a fast car, so uh, hopefully we can do something at the end. Yeah, it's all about being there at the end. It's kind of like, I love these nine and a half hour qualifying races for the 30 minute sprints. Yeah, it's crazy. It's something completely new to me, you know. I've obviously done this season here in IMSA, but my main uh, my main stuff is in the IndyCar world. So a little bit different, but I'm loving it. Christian, I want to talk to you about your highly successful 2023. We, we've watched the Indy Next series across in the UK, and it's building up quite a fan base. We get live coverage of all your races. It, it looks intense. It reminds me of karting. Yeah, it is intense, but yeah, it's just come. It's been a great season, you know. It's just come down to consistency and and the pace we've shown all year, you know. Showed great pace on the ovals uh, as well as the road and street circuit. So it was just we had a good package everywhere, and we really, really put it together. So I can't thank HMD Motorsports enough for providing me the the package to go win with, and uh, yeah, just got it done. What's the, uh, give us a bit of insight about the, the difference in driving discipline road courses in comparison to ovals. Yeah, uh, like uh, road courses in terms of ovals? Yeah, well, you know, you have to drive, it's a, it's a bit different, isn't it, on the ovals? Oh yeah, it's, it's way different, you know, it's, uh, 
Actually, I've really learned to love the ovals. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a different strategy to game, you know, but I think some of the coolest racing that we have is on the ovals. You know, you can go side by side, like for two laps, you know, sometimes. So it's crazy, but uh, love it. definitely a little bit of a different mindset in terms of how you approach the race. But at the end of the day, it's the same same goal, right? Get from point A to point B the fastest way possible. You make it sound simple. Uh, lastly, I'm English, you're Danish. How do you say your name? Uh, Christian Rasmussen. That's where we say it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Christian. Great to meet you. That's where he says it. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Christian Rasmussen. He's uh, been talking to Joe Bradley there. That's a young man with the future, I reckon. Hopefully we can tempt him back into sports cars again as well. Three and a half hours still to go. Just starting to see at some points of the circuit, the headlights, which have to be on in the cars when it gets dark. Just starting to see them make a little bit of difference as they head through some of the more shadowy areas. Now, at the front of the field, Starting to get interesting again because Scott Dixon is hunting down Louis Delatras. And the gap is under one second. Jack Aiken, about a second further back in the number 31 red fronted Cadillac. Top three, Jeremy, all on the front straight at the same time, separated by just on three seconds. I mean, it's it's just ebbing and flowing, isn't it, this, this, this whole battle? I mean, they've turned some really, really fast lap times uh, lately. Uh, I mean, when or two of the of the, uh, of the uh, cars have just turned their best laps within the last few laps. Conor Di Filippi uh, just uh, four or five laps ago. Louis Delatraz a little bit before that. Uh, Jensen Button a little bit uh, earlier than that as well. I mean, look, it, it, there's there's good pace out there right now, and the sun going down. It's getting a little bit cooler now already, and uh, the track is really. It's, it's still in surprisingly good shape, despite the fact we had so many cars on it and so many incidents on, a, on and off the track. Uh, it's still in pretty good shape, so we're seeing some really good lap times now. And the two leaders working their way through. It's still just less than a second between Louis Delatraz and Scott Dixon. Jack Aitken just uh, got a little bit of traffic last time around, so he's fallen back just a little bit in third position, but not far. And, uh, you know, they're all running very, very similar lap times quality drivers at the front of the yeah. field. Louis Delatraz, up-and-coming driver. Uh, the Shears driver of the year, I think, last year. Young driver of the year last year. It must have been the year before. Scott Dixon, Jack Aiken, Tom Blomqvist, Conor de Felipe, Felipe Nazar, Jensen Button, Neil Jarney, Marco Fitman. That's your top nine, Jeremy. And that's, I mean, that is a snapshot of three drivers per car. That's your top nine at the moment. That would be, that's a top nine that would grace any any championship around the world. Yeah, absolutely right. And um, yeah, I mean, they've they've all been uh, they've all shone in, in open wheel racing, and uh, they're doing the same in uh, sports car racing as well. No surprise. I mean, uh, these are very very accomplished drivers. There's no make weights make weights in this field just now. All most of the uh, pro am uh, cars have got their, their, their am drivers completed their minimum drive time so it's all down now to the pros until the end of this race we've got what three and a half hours remaining it's going to be non-stop excitement it's just constantly working through the traffic here they are coming down the hill to, uh, to complete their 260th lap uh, and again less than a second between the first two jack aitkins did, just over a second behind them did your time for the leader jeremy had to break right in the middle of the uphill to turn two as he went past the heart of racing aston martin he just got offline a little bit and that's an opportunity for scott dixon who comes right on the outside and is now right on the tail of the leader as they go through to turn five the vault racing porsche is ahead of the leader now stays to the right hand side as delatraz He's on the ideal racing line, got onto the turn of BMWs, the Macintosh car through six, and he can't get by. Here comes Dixon, swings wide, will try and diamond off the corner and get on the throttle earlier in the Cadillac. That Cadillac's got lots of grunt, big, normally aspirated engine against the smallest engine in GTP, the V6 in the Acura. Headlights flashing madly, and here comes the Wayland Cadillac as well of Jack Aiken, either side of the of the Forte Lamborghini. Oh, my goodness, that was Hagenen and Schumacher all over again on the Kevel straight down towards turn 10A. 
marvellous stuff by all of these drivers. And by the way, when I say all of these drivers, I mean the guys that are being passed as well, Jeremy, because you've got to keep your heads about you when these cars are coming through so quickly. Yeah, they come they come on the straights, they're so much faster through the corners, they're not 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 as quick as the old generation DPI cars because they're heavier. Uh, and uh, and the bigger cars all the way around, so they're a real handful through the corners. But boy, they line it up and they go down these straights, and they are significantly faster on the straightaways than the old DPI cars. Tom Blockfist is not that far behind no. here. He's only another two seconds or so. I, I do think that the Acuras are picking up a little bit of pace as the temperature comes down on the track. And Louis Delatraz now has four cars, or sorry, three cars behind him in the space of four seconds. So it is closing up all the time. The next group of traffic, uh, there's two cars. It's the Windward Racing car, the Court of AMG. They'll get them on the back straight, I think. And then there's a wee bit of a gap before they catch up to... Oh, oh and as I say that, he hasn't got past the Court of AMG. I was expecting that to be rather easier for the leader. I'm sure they thought that as well, but he's cleared that group of traffic. And that has actually worked out all right in the end for yeah. Louis Delatraz. It's Dixon that's under pressure now, as Jack Hickett goes up the inside of the other Cadillac, but couldn't make it stick. Dixon caught out, coming down the hill, couldn't get off turn 12. That was a, a bold late move there by Delatraz on bold. Kenton Cook. It was at the, uh, where the caught off Mercedes going into the, uh, turn 10, the chicane there. And uh, hats off there to uh, to Kenton Cook for you know, not not to getting flustered at all. He just let Delatraz sort himself out. He gave him plenty of room to go around the, outs him, the outside of him of 10A and it pulls off the pass. But the previous lap for the race season was a one minute 16.8. Do you remember we were talking, they were doing uh, 11s uh, and the, and well, low 11s and, and high 12, excuse me, low 12s uh, over the last few laps. So four and a half seconds in traffic on that last lap, or well, the lap before the last one for the race leaders. And there's the battle for... Uh, second position in LMP2. Ben Handy leads now for CrowdStrike by APR in column 04, about six seconds behind him. This, this battle heading into turn seven with number 52 car Paul Loup Chatin just ahead of Michael Jensen in car number 11. Hello to Simi and Aaron who are on the back side listening to us on 98.1 Road Atlanta FM enjoying their fourth Petit Le Mans, and uh, listening to us courtesy of Dave Miller's excellent FM service here. Hello to Alex, who's listening in, not sure where you are in the world. Also, this is I, I've, this race, and uh, as well as the Bathurst 12 hours, actually, it's very much a racer's race. So, uh, a lot of people who aren't racing here, but will generally be racing at the weekend, are tuned in. Austin Hillier racing back in Europe. Thanks for the kind words there. Uh, and uh, we've got the Porsche number six off. It's not been their day today. More damage to the rear end of that car. And that is some serious damage that they'll have to go through and fix that again. Lawrence Vanto has not had a great weekend. That's not that far away from where he had an issue earlier on in the weekend. Actually, it was at the top of the hill at turn three. I thought it was at turn five for a moment there. Uh, left rear puncture, rear clip damage, rear aerofoil gone. And, yeah. Dragging debris all the way around the yeah. racetrack. Uh, he wants to get it back. Yeah. And now we know what the Porsche would look like if they'd gone the Peugeot route, if no rear wing. <laughs> as he comes back. By the way, just in that as well, I've heard that the Paul Miller Racing BMW is now an official retirement. Wow. So was he on his own or did he make a mistake? Got through. Ooh, now, there was an Aston Martin that he was trying to go by there. And I wonder if he just closed the door on him a little bit. The Aston, all of the GTD cars are very quick through the centre of the corner and it's pitched him off sideways at turn three 
and he's now off the track at the exit of turn seven and he's now he's clear there in terms of the car the question will be how much debris is on the track and whether we have to go full course yellow with 322 to go we've have had uh, eight full course yellow periods and we've been green for 23 minutes and at the moment we are staying green Wow. Uh, I was just about to say thank you to Chris Ho at Hook Racing as well in Germany uh, watching. There it is just past midnight there and watching and listening. Got the world feed up there. So following along. Might as well stay up now. Might as well stay up. Come on, push on through. It's not a work day tomorrow, hopefully. I think we're going to stay green here, if I'm honest. And that, that's good, so long as there's no debris on the track. Lawrence Vanter has had an horrible weekend. Now, this is going to be a, another issue. Yes, it is. It's TDS in the wall, and that's big damage to the front. Now, this will be a full course yellow. That car's wow. not going anywhere. And this is huge. Local yellow at the moment. 3.21 to go. That is turn five. And it's the 11 car. The which championship is leader. The championship leader in third position in the class. Miguel Jensen has stuck it in the wall at turn five. And that's not going to have been a small impact. I can't see the right front wheel, but I think it's tucked underneath. And, oh, no. Well, it's not the... It's not at the approved angle in terms of suspension, but he's found a gear. Well, we've stayed green. I apologise. We have stayed green. Now, the, the thing is, he's not going to want to park that car. Lawrence Vanto will park the car at turn seven. But he, Jensen is, Mingle Jensen, he's not going to want to park that car. He's coming up the turn five behind traffic and the back end again gets him a huge air across the curb and he's actually cleared some of the gravel and the build tires have done a phenomenal job there as they run right now ben keating is leading the class by 11 points and that was Mikkel jensen right up behind ben keating's car and just overdid turn five with huge yeah. consequences for the championship. Yeah, I mean, those two have been nose to tell since the restart. Number 52 and number 11. They're a little bit behind the number 04 car of Nolan Siegel, who's pulled away a little bit, doing a fantastic job at the wheel of number 50, uh, excuse me, number 04 car. But the 04 car has just made a pit stop. I think they, they anticipated perhaps uh, a full course caution and brought that car in for service. Just had a brilliant tweet in from Kishiti van Ketterwischer. Says, sleep is for the weak, Imza is more important. Excellent. We need that's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt there, Kishiti. Excellent. We're staying green, I think, at the moment. Meantime, let's check out some of the other battles around the circuit still the gtd pro leader is jordan pepper for iron links from five seconds further back it's faf motorsport patrick peeler what an up and down day they've had shield goon on weather tech racing see if we'll comment ken cook for team gotham win at leeds by a second from russell ward 32 mercedes from 57 then then we've just had the Number 63, 62, excuse me, the uh, Risi Competizione Ferrari. Ooh, scenic route. And, and as it looks like the Mikkel Jensen car is going straight behind the wall. It's just driven straight past Joe Bradley. Mikkel Jensen being told yeah. straight to the paddock. Man, that is a huge swing for the championship, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely right it is. I mean, there's no way you can come back from there and, and win the class, I don't, I don't think, unless something 
really bizarre happens and what a shame for Stephen Thomas. Yeah. Uh, he had so much confidence in Mikkel Jensen and Mikkel, I mean, he, he was riding along there behind Paul Luchatin. He'd been following him for a long time since we went back to green, which had, what, 20 odd, 23 laps or so. Maybe he was just getting frustrated behind Paul Luchatin. Um, I mean, he was on his own there. It wasn't if he was going for a pass, uh, but he just lost control of the car going into turn five. It was an odd incident. It really was. I, he, he was, I think he was about half a car with if that offline. He was trying to chase down the wins car. That was the car in front of him. Um, I can't imagine that he was close enough for that to have been air or push. It looked like the back end of the car yeah. uh, that uh, went got, out. Meantime, we got kind of a tank slapper, didn't he? Through the Scott, Scott Dixon is right with the leader again, and they're cutting through traffic again past the Aston Martin of Heart of Racing down to turn 10A. And Delatras has negotiated that little danger zone as they were for a moment. I think Dixon got a little bit of an overlap there as he came over the brow of the hill between eight and nine. And across the line, it's back out to three quarters of a second. Jack Aiken, who was right with them, is another two seconds further back, flashing his lights, trying to get through to a bit of clear track so that you can track these two down. This is a look, yeah. they might not be side by side, they might not be banging wing mirrors, but this is a phenomenal flight fight between Delatraz, Scott Dixon and Jack Aiken. And add into that, by the way, Tom Blomqvist, whose car is coming back to him, he's only another second further back. Conor de Filippi, another second and a half further back yeah. in the BMW. Yeah, I mean, they've all been kind of closing up there, those, yeah. the, all of those cars now, because there's only seven seconds covering the top six uh, <laughs> right now. And uh, they've all turned very similar lap times. It's, it, what's interesting is looking at the, the last lap times. One sixteen two for the leader. One fifteen seven for Dixon. One seventeen one for Jack Aitken in third place. And then one fifteen for Tom Blunkus in fourth. One fourteen for Conor De Filippi in fifth place. And then a couple of cars behind him, they're doing thirteen low thirteens for Jensen Button. So it's just constantly ebbing and flowing as they depend on where they come across the traffic. It's fascinating. Three and four seconds a lap is the difference yeah. quite easily yeah. that traffic can make so this is why we say about all multi-class endurance races but particularly about Motul Patilamon here at Road Atlanta the layout of the track the amount of traffic that you've got the density of the entries here on the circuit having six seven seconds lap of a lead that can evaporate in a lap and a half yeah it really can. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, 1 minute 12.8 last lap around. The previous lap won 16.2. Yeah. Teletraz for the moment with breathing space. Yes. And, and it will be that. He will be like, phew. Yeah, he will. What, about, what am I looking at now? Right, I've got the 44 Magnus Racing car. Next up, he'll be talking to the pits. Maybe the pits talking to him. They'll be saying, right, you've got a, a GTT car ahead. It's Andy Lally. He's in 12th, he's not racing anybody at the moment in that car, and it's Andy Lally. He'll know you're coming, he's a pro. That's the sort of information that we're talking about coming through at the moment. It's just battles everywhere. BMW flashing its lights as it comes three wide over the top of the brow at turn nine. That is the 24 car that sits at the moment in ninth position, last of the GTPs in that lead group with the number six car uh, not being recovered, by the way, I'm hearing. That will be left at turn number seven. Ooh, little touch on the from the Risi Competizione Ferrari onto the all yellow Jensen button driven JDC Miller Motorsports. Right, please, Jensen. I'm Sure, that's not the first time that Jensen's had a little tap from behind by a Ferrari. <laughs> um, Fair point. Uh, cost him, cost him about five seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. He, he, was, he had to lift right up. Uh, Joe Bradley, I, I may have uh, misheard that uh, message. Uh, are we seeing that the, the number six 
Porsche, the Lawrence Van Tour car. Are we seeing that's been left at Turn 7 or it's been recovered from Turn 7? I was told by the pit lane official that it was going to, because it had found an access gate, they were going to be able to recover it back to the Got paddock from apologies. that location. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for that clarification. My apologies. Misunderstanding that message coming through. Well, what a day for championships. Shea called, said hello this morning to people and saying happy championship day. This is still not over. It certainly isn't, uh, but uh, you know, Acura leads right now and uh, you know, the, the Manufacturers' Championship is such a tight battle uh, in GTP. It's been a, an absolutely fascinating contest all, all the way through the season and uh, far from over. Drivers' Championship as well. I well, yeah, of course. I don't even look at that. No. Actually, and that's all right to put it up on the screen for us. Uh, in a second or two, the Drivers' Championship as it stands, uh, Louis Delatraz and the Cunning Kuminolta leading. And they were leading after they got some extra points from qualifying yesterday. They were 10 points to the good. But how close is it? That's the question. Yeah. In, in the manufacturers, uh, though, um, right now, uh, it would be in favour of uh, Cadillac. I think uh, yeah. coming into this weekend, uh, Porsche was uh, was leading, but right now, with the best of the Porsches, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Porsche would fall all the way to third position as they, as they are right now, uh, because uh, Acura is leading the race at the moment. Cadillac is uh, second and third, but you only count the second place car, and then BMW is ahead of Porsche, so it would be you know, pretty much all changed there in that in that fascinating uh, manufacturer championship. Welcome to the broadcast, Alan Prosser, who's tuning in on the world feed, watching and listening, just coming into one of the most spectacular parts of the evening, the transition, the transition from light into dark. The sun will be officially setting in around about 35 minutes' time, and it's official dark in about an hour's time. So, again, worth remembering, any drivers that didn't qualify through darkness qualifying on Thursday must be out of the car before 7.30 this evening. Race control reminding everyone there is debris on the exit of turn 10. And so we have to keep an eye on that. Where the tech number 79. Jules Gounon, third position at the moment, second in that class. But uh, about six seconds up the road is Patrick Peely, and he's ten seconds behind the leader. Iron yeah. Lynx is Jordan Pepper. Those three have yeah. spread out a wee bit. Yeah, the they have. Time. Absolutely right, John. I mean, Jordan Pepper got into the lead um, just after the restart, I think. I don't think he was. He wasn't leading at the restart. Was he? He was in. Uh, well, he was in second position behind a number nine car, which is uh, the, the, the Faf Porsche. But uh, he, he made the pass for the lead. Um, Know, seven or eight laps after the restart, maybe less than that. And since then, he's pulled away. Uh, we've seen how good the Lamborghini has been all day long, and now 10 seconds that lead. All of a sudden, it's re the, the whole gaps now in GTD are really all of a sudden, so, I say relatively all of a sudden, during this stint, have uh, grown dramatically. Can't say the same for the GTD class. That's GTD Pro, but uh, Kenton Cook and Russell Ward have been out at Hammer and Tongs. Kenton has inched his way, almost literally, to a two-second lead. They've barely been half or three-quarters of a second apart. Uh, it's just gone out to 1.9 seconds. And uh, it, it's a tenth here, a tenth there between those two. Two Mercedes-AMG GT3s leading GTD. Uh, and Russell Ward uh, keeping Kenton Cook and the team caught off car uh, honest at the moment. They're about 16, 17 seconds back uh, is Misha Goikberg. That one interesting as well. Hearing now from Porsche Motorsport that the number six Penske run Penske Porsche Motorsport car coming back in the pit lane officially retired. So that is the end of any championship implications for that car. They came in as the better placed of the two machines. 
and that is such a shame for all involved in the number six car. Louis Della tries then by 1.2 seconds from Scott Dixon. Still looking at the P2 battle as well, where Paul Loopshat has just gone back out of the pits, as has Ryan DL. That's the number 52 car that was leading. And Ryan DL, the Aero Motorsport car, they've pulled back two laps. That's really impressive. And uh, sorry, Ryan DL's just come into the pits as Paul Loop Shatland has come out. But the, my point there still that Ryan DL and the rest of that uh, Aero Motorsport 18 car team, Jeremy, they were two laps down earlier on after that car went off at turn five. Absolutely. I mean, they pulled, played the, the strategy perfectly uh, when there's a full course caution. Uh, and they've been, the cautions have been timed nicely so that the leaders need a pit stop, so they come in. Uh, if you're a lap down, you stay out, you move past the... Uh, back onto the lead lap as the your class leader is in the pits, and then you get the wave around, and then you make your pit stop, and you're back on the lead lap again, and on the same uh, fuel, fuel strategy as well. So they've called that uh, absolutely perfectly so far, and they got into the lead of the race, and... Yeah, that car come in, comes into the pits right now in the lead, and that's the, uh, a really good comeback for that number 18 team. A few people coming back to the race or joining us for the first time. It has been uh, a fairly fractured race, I'm afraid. We've had nine changes of lead between eight of the GTP cars, and it's been short bursts of action punctuated by accidents, I'm afraid. Uh, either mistakes from drivers or cars coming together. The longest run we've had between yellows was 57 minutes, right in the middle uh, of the race, or right in the middle of the race we've had up to now. Some 53 laps spent behind the BMW XM safety car. <laughs> Either of them, we've had a white one and a blue one out there. It's the V8 hybrid. And really difficult to see much of a pattern going on, except for the relative performances of the GTPs in particular, and some of the GTD cars as well, as the track temperature went up in the late afternoon and now is starting to drop again. And the track temperature, which was 35 Celsius, now down at 23. And so that's equaled up the air and track temperature, 73 Fahrenheit across the board, was up into triple digits on the track earlier on. That seems to suit the Acuris a little bit more. Also seems to, to suit the Lamborghinis. Jordan well, they're pulling away at the front of the GTD profile. To be honest, the Lamborghini has been the class of the field all, all, uh, all week, uh, arguably. So it's certainly been very, very fast. And it was quick at the beginning. It just started at the back uh, and worked its way forward. Uh, but the other, the other two cars, we saw the Iron Dames leading very convincingly in the early stages. And also Michel Goitberg in the Forte Racing GTD car running uh, in the lead with that car as well. So uh, all, the Lamborghini is all looking good. The 78, where's the 78 car? That's... Uh, it's running in fifth, class, yeah, fifth position. Misha, Misha's still driving that car, uh, and uh, you know he's 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 not a pro driver, although he drives like one. He's he's got massively experienced, of course, and doing a really really nice job in that number 78 car for Forte. Now all the leading cars stopped at the last yellow, so they've been out since then, which yeah. is getting pretty uh, close now. Must be getting close now. They've completed three yellow flag yeah. laps and for a total of 39 laps in total that's all of the ones yeah within the next five minutes or so we, we should expect the uh, gtp cars to be making pit stops joe bradley is down in the pit lane any sign of movement down there joe yeah quite a bit actually um certainly the uh, the, the 
number 31 Cadillac team, the, v the Whelan livery car. They're already on the pit wall, uh, fresh tyres and the crew ready. And also the number 10, the uh, the Acura team, the uh, Wind Taylor Racing with Andretti team. They've, they've uh, woken themselves up and are ready. In fact, their car must be due on pit road because the board's just come out. You guys can probably see it coming down the hill. Here it is. In, fa in fact, it's coming to my view. So the car making its way down, speed limiter on. You can just hear the uh, the engine speed limit kicking in, the engine making as if it's like protesting the uh, the speed. Please let me go, but no, the car making its way down now. It'll peel right any moment now, right at the very last minute actually. These drivers peel to the right and then swing left into the box. Very accurate driving is required here. It's all about where the driver positions the car, and it's got to be in line with the fuel hose going on to the uh, to the to the fuel filler. It's a scrubbed set of tyres that's going on, so we're already beginning to tactically use the tyres. So a scrubbed set of tyres for the number 10. When the tyres come off, they go back to their, the, the team engineers, the tyre engineer, and the tyre engi the, the, the engineer will decide how much usage you're going to get. You might get, you then mix and match what tyres have come off the car. The fueling's still going in, the driver's staying on board and the fueling is still going in. So we're now getting into the realms of that, and with the cooler temperatures, it's not gonna take so much out the tires. That's the Acura, just silently, all I can hear there as it pulls away, and call me old fashioned, I much prefer the, uh, the, the roar of a Corvette. But uh, all you can hear is the, is the actual rubber uh, straining on the, on the concrete as it pulls away, the squeal of the rubber. You can't hear the engine, because of course it's on electric. I, I quite like the wide of an electric motor. Um, but, really? You know, yeah, I've, Seriously? I've, I've, I've been driving one for 10 days, so I'm kind of getting used to it now. Mm. Um, no, nothing, will, nothing will, I was driving a V8 the week before that. There and you go. A, and I'll be back in a flat six next week. So, but I, you know, it's, uh, there's a place, I still think it's a place for it. So it's, yeah. not, it's never going to be the whole answer. Oh, it's cool. I, it's I, cool. I love the technology. Yeah. I love the fact that, that we're trying things out here yeah. at IMSA. Uh, we were talking earlier on about the hydrogen fuel cell car that's going to race at Le Mans. Uh, what a spaceship that thing looks like. Weaving left and right then for the Louis Delatraz driven Koninger Minolta down the back straight as he's trying to get heat up into the tyres. He's come out behind the number 60 of uh, Tom Blomqvist. And I was saying, I was, I was expecting GGP cars to come in the next five minutes or so. I wasn't expecting him to be coming in for you know, right away though, I must admit. Uh, I came in a little bit earlier than I would have anticipated. Uh, we're now... Uh, three hours to go in this race, uh, so uh, spot on three hours. Yeah, actually. spot on three hours, uh, and of course the, the next tranche of points for the Michelin Endurance Cup comes in in one hour's time. These cars can do just a little bit less than, than an hour of green flag running, so uh, they put themselves in a slightly dodgy position uh, in terms of you know, whether they can get to get to that four-hour mark without needing another pit stop unless there's a full course caution. So... This... This... Uh, green flag period started 50 minutes ago. Three laps of yellow before that. Just to reiterate, I think we said this earlier on before we went down to Jewel, but if we didn't, uh, I apologise, I must have dreamt it, that we have got another retirement, and that's the TDS car. That yeah, well, yeah, we saw that. Oh, I see, officially yeah, retired. Yeah, it's right. now officially retired. So Stephen Thomas, Mitchell Jensen, Scott Huffaker for the TDS car. That has now... Uh, being retired to the officials. So that's the massive championship implications right there. Uh, and we'll, we'll get points for the back of the class. You still get points. Uh, oh, well, now, how much will they have covered? Oh, no, you, you, that's, that's not an issue. You get points. It, into the pit lane for Winward, and that was... 
a driver change there as well. Russell Ward getting out, and Joe Bradley has Jensen Button for his pit stop. Uh, no, yeah, I have, and he's gotten out the car as well. So he's he's handed the car over. Uh, it's uh, I can't quite see whether the scrub rubber matching what the uh, the number ten is has put on. I'll get to the car in a moment, but Button has popped out. He's jumped out. Was it the third, his third flying lap that he brought the, the, the he got the fastest lap of the race for that uh, car? For, for the car, right? Okay, okay. We've also got the number zero one in the Cadillacs in, as is the thirty one. We ex we were we were expecting that, but the number one Negative. zero one Cadillac has come in. The number five gets out in front of the wheel and Cadillac. We've also got the number six, the Acurin, the MSR car. The WeatherTech Porsche has gone by. The number seven Porsche comes in. Bordier is getting into the 01. It's against good rubber. So we're getting into the realms of tyre management. Find a help. Um, I'm not quite sure who got into the number five. Uh, you guys, uh, find a helmet, I'm uh, being told, is in the number five. Uh, just behind me, looks like the MSR, number 60, didn't change driver, can't quite see that. Now the 24, it's quite a flurry, isn't it? There's a 01 on its hybrid, then the uh, Cadillac motor burst into, into life. Big tyre squeal there from the number 60 Acura. Right, we seem to be coming to GTP pit stop phase conclusion. So I'm going to dive in and try and get a word with Jensen Button and uh, get his thoughts on his first race stint at Petit Le Mans. 25 BMW leading the race. Conor de Filippi on the pit stop cycle coming into the pit lane to complete all of the top nine and we've got a problem for heart of racing number 27 aston martin heading up to turn number seven and it was a control alt delete and the car has restarted for roman de angelis but he's lost second place to bill orbelin in the turn of motorsport car so panic down there meantime it's a scrubbed set of rubber going on to the number 25 BMW. Didn't see whether Conor de Filippi got out of the car. And now I've said a scrubbed set. Is that a scrubbed set? It's very lightly used, I think. I saw one of them on the right hand side that said 25 all okay, care, which su suggested to me that they had put a mixed set on. Let's uh, get down to Joe Bradley, who is with Jensen Button. It was Sheldon von der Linde who took out the number 25 car. Joe Bradley has the world champion. Well, he's got a smile on his face. That looked for fun from where I was. I bet you had a smile on your face doing that. Yeah, I did. Um, we were offset with other people on tyres. So my first in. I had, I had uh, new tyres or scrub tyres, and then the second run I didn't. Oh, what a difference! Wow. Um, so no, I had a, I had great fun out there. I had a great scrap with uh, uh, Joseph Newgarden. I think it was Joseph, right? In the it was, yeah, absolutely. We were talking about you know Battle of the Champions, like I Rock. Yeah, exactly. No, it was uh, very cool, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it, and you know. Just fighting with any of these guys and keeping up with them. My first time in the car, I'm pretty happy with. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun out there. Sometimes it's tricky with traffic, it really is. Um, but I, I didn't get overtaken by anyone while I was because of traffic, just because I wasn't quick enough. So, I think my uh, traffic control was actually not too bad. But I had a couple of little scary moments where I went through the middle of two cars. Um, but um, now, having a lot of fun and, uh, you know, my first experience and of IMSA. Um, it was a pleasant one, but uh, but a pretty manic one. You, you said, we heard your thoughts about Road Atlanta as a track. What's your thoughts on Road Atlanta as a race track, having raced on it now? Yeah, it's it's good, but I mean, you've, you've also got to remember that I don't, I know what the controls do in the car, but it's the first time I've really experienced, I've never done more than 10 laps. So um, suddenly I'm in a run where I'm doing 40. Yeah, but you're Jensen Button, man. But I've also not driven an aero car since 2009. You're Jensen Button, man. So yeah, I was I was happy with it, but there's still so much more to improve. There really is, but uh, it's good knowing that it went all right and I didn't hit anything, um, and um, I had a lot of fun and the pace was all right. Has that um, has that kind of pushed the button to talk to whoever you need to talk to to get you back here for a full season? 
Uh, was that excuse the pun? Push the button, or it wasn't actually? But that was a good one, wasn't it? I'll, I'll take that one. Well, it was, except you didn't realise. No, it. I didn't. I mean, yeah. But um, it's my name. I'm gonna. Uh, but uh, no, it's um, yeah, it's. I really enjoyed it. So you know, I'll look at the data after and see where I gain, where I lose, and uh, and hopefully come back a little bit stronger in the next one that I do if I get out again. Um, but the trickiest thing is when it cools down, the tires go away from you. You're locking up fronts, you're locking up rears. You've got all these adjustments on the steering wheel, like so many. Lateral, lateral TC, straight ahead TC. And then you've got all the braking options and the migration options on braking. And you're, I'm filling with everything. And every time I change something, it feels massive, the change. So I'm like, all right, I'll go back on that one and I'll try something else. So it's, um, it's a massive test session for me. And uh, yeah, but a lot of action out there. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, we enjoy having you here, Jensen, to do what you need to do, because the fans want you back. Thanks, man. Thank you. Never mind the fans want me back. We want them back, because uh, he's a great interview, and he's a quick driver. Uh, the 27 Aston Martin from Heart of Racing was hit by another car, which was the number 78, uh, and incident responsibility given uh, to the number 78 Forte Lamborghini. So that will be a drive through for that car. And that's why we saw the 27 Aston going slowly. They need to keep going to the end for the Michelin Endurance. And they need to be ahead of the 32 caught off car to, uh, to be able to win by one point, the Michelin Endurance. Shea's doing charades at the back, you see. Um, apparently it's a film. Into the pit lane for Faf Mortensport from the lead of GTD Pro. Uh, working on the car outside the box as well for the number 78. Oh dear me, Forte not having a good five or ten minutes. What do you always say, Jeremy? Don't compound the errors. Make one error, don't make two or three. Yeah, don't make another one, yes. Inside two hours and 51 minutes, just about. So uh, what have we got? We've got about another 15 minutes till sunset, although with the trees here, the sun's actually, I think now, down behind the trees towards turn number seven. That'll be a sigh of relief from most of the drivers. The top of turn two, there's still a little bit of brightness in the sky there as the leader. I check that as the number 10 third place car of Louis Delatraz goes through. In the pit lane now for Jules Gounon, who had taken over the lead of GTD Pro and Alex Riberas for Heart of Racing 23 as well. So let's see where Patrick Pile is on the circuit. The number nine Porsche should come through and retake the lead in that class. Keep an eye on him as he comes past us. I think I'll probably wind that blind up a bit now in our studio. Yeah, the sun's uh, gone over the trees from our perspective, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So now, now Beautiful evening, off. just gorgeous evening. It's been a great day, hasn't yeah. it? In every sense of the word. Um, yeah. We've so that... just gone over an hour of green flag running. Uh, 53, oh, not quite. It's got about two minutes. Green at 6.12. Yeah, about a minute and a half to go. Yeah. Um, the... Um, Interestingly, that that, num that pit stop by the number 10 car, they were leading when they came in after, on that 281. Now come out of the pits into, well, okay, they've made up, they've made up one position. They've got past number 60 car, then Delatres has got past Tom Blomqvist uh, a lap or two ago. So uh, he's up into third position, but um, it's interesting to see how that uh, balance changed then during that stop, the longer run, surprisingly, by the number 01 car, Perhaps not surprisingly, because uh, he's able to have hot hot tyres. We do lose a lot 
when you come out of the pits on, on fresh tyres. So I think staying out longer really helped number zero one car and to the detriment of number 10. And um, in terms of the number 10 car's aspirations towards the Michelin Endurance Cup, I don't think they're going to be able to get to the end of this hour without uh, coming onto the pit lane again. Uh, you know, in, in the Michelin Endurance Cup in uh, GTP, number 31 car has a pretty stout lead, so it may be, it's, it's not, uh, in, well, actually, in actual fact now, they are at this juncture seven points behind, so they cannot win it. Okay, fine. So that's not a factor now anymore for the number 10 car in terms of winning the Michelin Endurance Cup. They don't have an opportunity now to do so. At IMSA Radio for the last just under three hours of the race, we've got Michelin Post Race Tech to come. So let's have your submissions at IMSA Radio, hashtag MichelinPRT. And we'll go through some of your questions at the end. The incident oh. that's got Ooh, the that penalty for the Forte Lamborghini was at turn six. And that's what uh, turned the Aston Martin around. I only saw the Aston Martin standing still and refiring. I thought it just stopped there because everybody had left the scene. I mean, there were four cars in the space of about a car length there, so a little bit unlucky there, I think, to have that contact. Also working on the car outside the pick box for the Arrow sponsor yeah. machine. That's even more costly. Jensen Button having a chat with his good mate Mike Rock and fella down in the pit lane. They drove the Corvette, excuse me, the Camaro ZL1, ZL1 at Le Mans. And I think Rocky instrumental in getting Jensen interested in coming here to drive the Porsche. Jensen Button in Porsche race overalls. Now there's a thing. Mm. There is a thing. Tell you what, uh, Sebastian Bourdais, someone's lit the fire there. 1 minute 11.492 last time for Sebastian Bourdais. That's uh, about a tenth of a second away from uh, the his his best lap of the race. 111.317 was his best. Uh, 111.4 at this stage is, is uh, not hanging around. That's a pretty impressive effort. He's all, all of a sudden now, and not only has he jumped from the second place into first, uh, at that round of pit stops, but now he's pulling away pretty rapidly from Jack Aitken in the other Cadillac. So it's looking, things are looking at this stage very promising for Cadillac in terms of the inaugural GTP Manufacturer Championship. And indeed for the 31 car, Jack Aitken's doing his job. Uh, there are 11 points, so his two teammates, Alexander Simpson, Peter Tarani, are 11 points to the good as it stands now with the third place car being the yeah. second place car in the championship, another 100 points, or a 100 points, back, Sebastian Bourdais. They, Bourdais and the rest of the 0-1 team, they they need to win the race and have some kind of issues before the 10 and the 0-1, but even then, I think, with 49 cars left running, I'm not sure that they can get quite enough points to overhaul them. No, they, they no. Four day, you mean? Yeah. No. No. no they, they, they pretty much need everybody else to finish last. All of them. <laughs> Joe Bradley is down in the pit lane for this part, beautiful part uh, of the evening. And uh, trying to pick up with uh, some of the teams we've not spoken to. And believe it or not, we've not spoken to the Turner Motorsport 96 car so far. So let's put that right. Yeah, let's talk to Michael Dynan, who uh, is... Uh, Sharing the car with Robbie Foley, to mention one of his uh, teammates, but um, the 96 BMW, Michael, um, you know what, the, the GTD class is turning into a bit of a fist fight. It's, you know, it's all to play for very much still. Yeah, you know, these IMSA races, they tend to get quite intense, uh, especially as we get later, more later on in the race. Um, obviously, this track, it's not too big. There's a lot of cars out there. A lot of prototype traffic, it makes it quite difficult to manage. But the goal here is just to survive, keep the car together, and hopefully we have a good race car for the last two hours. I mean, you make that sound easy. It's a lot different. There's been a lot of drama already in this race, as ever. Um, how do you do that, though? How can you keep out of trouble? 
Yeah, there's always a lot of drama, but big thing is, you know, just to keep the bigger picture in mind, there's a lot of times where it's easy to kind of get sucked into something where, you know, giving up a spot or, you know, letting a prototype buy and giving up a little more time is the right decision, even though it's hard to do in the moment. Now, the sun's gone down. We're, we're invariably going to get a bit cooler. The track temperature is going to subside. What Does that have a massive effect on how the car feels? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the balance has a pretty significant shift once the sun goes down. Air temp's going to get cooler. Uh, obviously, you know, that's how it's going to be for the end of the race. So everyone's just hoping that they have a good race car for the last two hours. And, you know, you just need to be on the lead lap, I think, going into it. So hopefully it comes to us a little bit and we'll see what Robbie can do it to take the finish. Do you know when you're next in the car, Michael? I think I'm done for the day. So. I believe Patrick's out there right now, and then uh, we're going to change over to Robbie, who will take it to the end. Yeah, we're at that stage, aren't we? We're almost there. Just You can see it on the horizon. Yep, so hopefully we have a good uh, good end of the race, and we'll see where we end up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for talking to us, Michael. Michael Tynan from Turner Motorsport. Coming up to 7 o'clock local time. Nick Damon is rejoining us in the pit lane right now after his refueling. Here's how it stands then with two hours and 42 minutes to go. So we're talking a standard length IMSA WeatherTech sports car race to go now, Jeremy, pretty yeah. much, yeah. all bar about a lap. Sebastian Bordier by eight seconds over Louis Delatraz. That's Cadillac number zero one, the gold-fronted car over the black and blue, number 10, Conic Imanolda Acura. Then it's Jack Aiken in the 31 Cadillac, the Will and Engineering Machine. With that pass for second place having just taken place. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. And Tom Blomqvist then a further half a second back. So three cars within a couple of seconds there for second, third, and fourth. Delatraz, Aiken, and Tom Blomqvist. Now, what does that do? What's the points differential between second and third? Ah, oh, well, this would put uh, the number 10 car back ahead yes. of number 31. Yes, exactly right, because yeah. it was only 11 points as Absolutely. it stood the other way around. Yeah, so and second and third is a is a 20-point uh, a differential. And, and this is why we have to keep an eye on these positions and whether any car get between the championship contenders. So now it's... Taylor and Albuquerque who would take the championship by 29 points over Simpson Durrani with Bordier and Van der Zander in third position. Remember, these are the substantive drivers. Must have been a lap chart of, uh, of how the championship positions might change, have changed during this race would be rather interesting. <laughs> You'd need lots of colours and it would have lots of peaks and just as many troughs, yes. I suspect. In yeah. LMP2, Sebastian Bordier is absolutely oh, flying out there. In LMP2, it's a little more clear-cut at the moment with that problem and subsequent withdrawal for the number 11 of Mikkel Jensen and Stephen Thomas. So it's between Ben Keating and Paul Lubchatnan in the 52 car. They, at the moment, have a 57-point advantage over George Kurtz and Ben Hanley. Of course, the other thing that's important is the invitation to Le Mans and basically whichever one of the three non-pro drivers that we've mentioned there, Keating, Kurtz and Thomas, finishes first, finishes ahead, should I say, uh, they will take that championship. So at the moment, take that invitation, at the moment, that's George, George uh, Kurtz, uh, but that is a 1.7 second lead between the two core drivers. So the two core drivers there in the 0-4 and the 52, battling for the race victory at Petit Le Bon, at Matul Petit Le Bon, and to get their gentleman driver an automatic invitation to Le Mans 2024. So not much on the line there at all, Jeremy. No, not only a gentleman driver, most likely themselves as well. So exactly there's another, so. That's another incentive. Exactly <laughs> so. Well, I did the last stint for you there, George. Yeah. I'm sure you'd want to take me in France, wouldn't you? Ah, <laughs> yeah. This is brilliant. Ah, I love it. Uh, Nolan Segan, just uh, yeah. still a teenager. Really talented young man is Nolan Segal. He was he actually 
think he led the Indy Next Championship for a little while in mid in midsummer. Had a really really good uh, run of results. Then had some really bad luck. Couple of things, including at, at Detroit, he was leading the race on the last lap, and the gearbox broke. Uh, I mean, a real talent is Nolan. Uh, just a fine young man. He really is impressive. From Palo Alto in uh, California, and uh, he's got a big 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 future ahead of him in you know whatever. Type of racing he wants to, he chooses to do. Just eight, he's still just 18 years of age, he'll be 19 next month. Does he have the potential backing, Jeremy? To oh, take yeah, it? yes, does he does. I mean, the, the unfortunate truth is that talent will take you so far, but ultimately, you've got to have a bit of backing, yeah, uh, either at the beginning or at some stage of your career to, to get you. Up to the next stage. He does, and um, and he and he's you know there's other possibilities there for him as well. He, he knows a lot of people. You know, yeah, great great family. Look, look look at this battle here now going on for well second, third, fourth, and fifth place are almost tied together. There's a move being made by the Porsche or Maddie Campbell. Are they three? No. That's Matt Campbell going by Tom Blomqvist with another car in the middle. And that is the change made then yeah. for fourth place. Jack Aiken just a little bit further up the road as he's carving his way through traffic. They're going past the Iron Dames Lamborghini down through turn 12. Wave to us in the tower on the left-hand side. Now down to turn one. And that autographed front end of the... Mershank Racing with Kerb and Janian ARX06. Bearing a few scars of battle now. 301 laps now completed by the race leader, Sebastian Bourdais. And he is just, just decimating the field right now. I mean, look, the gap is now 13.6 seconds. 44, Magnus oh, Aston no. off. I was just about to say, so you can't blame me for this one. I was just about to say, we've actually now got over an hour of green flag racing. However, the 44 and Andy Lally at the wheel on the exit of turn 10b has has graveled it he's beached it and i don't think that's coming out of there a little bit of smoke coming out the back where i think he tried to spin up the rear wheels to get him out so two hours and 36 minutes to go and everybody diving for the pits before the full course yellow comes out in comes bourdain does delatraz get in to the pit lane or does he come through no he's in the pit lane he's made it still green at the moment Aitken is in Matt Campbell's gone through Matt Campbell's gone through he might miss the pits here because race control will give everybody I think here at the front of the field one opportunity to get in and Porsche Penske Motorsport have sent Matt Campbell around Meantime, the rest of the, the field have come in, and whilst the car is on this speed limit, Nick Damon, the number 10, which is getting a driver change, the Cunningham and older Acura, doesn't have any headlights. No, every, everyone else had headlights, including the other uh, Acura, the 60. But the number 10 is steadfastly not on. Now, whether it's a case he's flipped a switch or knocked something in his hand, but of course the lights are supposed to be on the whole time. But it's apparently it only means on the speed limit, isn't it weird? Um, because it's, well, it's obviously a unique feature, let's say, of the number 10 Acura, because the number 60 doesn't do it. We've had a few of the uh, P3 guys in as well, as, as I watch now, the rest of the uh, GTPs running past as well. Oh, that's a bit of a rev at the far end. Full course, yellow, and Matt Campbell has missed the opportunity, and off goes the number 10 car for Acura on the outlap, and has lost at least one position. And as the yellow is out, he's saved. It was Tom Blomqvist who went through on Philippe Albuquerque. And that means that Matt Campbell has stayed out. Tim Sidrix on the box there. In Tim We Trust, Pence, Porsche Penske Motorsport, they're only 18 laps into a stint, so that's halfway through the stint or thereabouts maybe a tad more than that no, less than that uh, less than that sorry so stretches this stint maybe closer to just doing two more pit stops 
Yeah, what happened with Andy Lally? Unusual for him to make a mistake. He was right by the Risi Competizione Ferrari. Did he get a tap on the left rear? Can't tell you. Certainly don't have the evidence on that basis. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I do, because there's damage to the front of the... Sorry, it's the EF Corsa Ferrari, not the Risi car. They were running fifth and sixth in GT Pro. Miguel Molina has some damage to the right front. And that is being looked at by race control after they've had just over an hour off from having to make decisions. Still a good crowd on the bank sides and in the amphitheatre, the National Natural Amphitheatre at turns 10A and 10B. Great place. That was absolutely chock a block. I don't think there was a space there uh, at the start of the race. It's been a cracking event here. Track surfaces out there already to try and retrieve Andy Lally. There wasn't an RV space to be had uh, coming into this race. And we added some new RV parking on driver's left down the back stretch a couple of years ago. They were all full again this year. All through the turn six and seven area on the skid pan, the skid circle up there, all taken up as well as the BMW XM. Ah, oh, we're back to our original car now as the pass around begins. This for cars that are trapped between the safety car and their leader. Get this one wrong at your peril, by the way, because there are punitive penalties to be applied. Right, under full course yellow, all of the GTPs except Matt Campbell have pitted just before that. So Matt Campbell's not going to come in. He's going to stay out. And he's going to go another 25 minutes. He's going to go to somewhere near two hours to go and try and make it on two stops, I reckon, if we stay green. Tim Sindrick maybe has worked that out. But with a bit of yellow, which you're going to get now, that'll push them into two more stop strategy, which the other cars will have to do as well. They just won't beat necessarily at the same time if we stay green. If we don't stay green, things balance each up, up again. And come in with everybody else. And I think uh, with that uh, number seven car staying out, I think that was going to trap the number five, 24 and 59 that came in right before the caution came out. Uh, going to trap them a lap down. That was a mistake by those three teams to come in right then. Sorry, which, which three teams? Uh, number five, 24 and 59. They, uh, they followed the other guys. Yes. But they were a long way behind. They were half a minute behind the rest of the pack. In, uh, in GTP, so... Yes, they should have stayed out and got the lap back. Yes, well, they didn't, they hadn't, they, by coming in, they lost ah. the lap, it wasn't, they should have ah. stayed out to, to stay on the lead lap. Yes, that's that's, the, that's uh, exactly right, John. I, I wonder if they expected everybody to come in and Matt Campbell not coming in actually messed well, with them a little bit. Ex well, except for the fact that they'd already seen, or should have seen, number seven car not well, coming in, Correct. so... Uh, it's a, it's a snap decision. I mean, the, the logical thing is to come into the pits, uh, but um, it's a snap decision the team's got to make there. There's those three cars that were a uh, half minute behind. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the, uh, with the benefit of hindsight, the best thing to do would have been to stay out. Yes. And they but would still, have, plenty of time to go. They would have leapfrogged up behind Matt Campbell, obviously not they, having they, made they, the pit stops that the, the other cars have made. But again, you've got... Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure. That's, that's a tough Correct. one, though. It's a tough call. The pits are open for the GTPs this time around. Yeah. Uh, only Matt Campbell hasn't pitted, and he does come in. Now, actually, I'm quite surprised by that, if I'm honest. I thought that we were going to leave him out. So maybe that was a, a missed communication. Might be worth having a chat, Joe Bradley to Tim Sintrick up on the wall um, and see if that was just a miscommunication or whether they were discussing strategy. Well, the car's come in and he's going to take on tyres and fuel. Just see how much fuel he takes on. Usually the pit stops are limited by the amount of fuel that goes into the car. And the tyres are usually well, well done 
and off the jacks. And as the car came off the jacks, the fuel filler came off. So it was it was as the tyre guys were finished. That's the limit of the that was the limit of the pit stop. He now gets stopped at the end of the uh, at the pit exit on the red light. Heads up. And with it, to be honest, with it getting dark, you cannot miss that red light now. It lights up the world in red. Well, for a long time, the only other prototype apart from the number seven Porsche actually was the 74 uh, Riley Motorsports uh, P3 car, the car that actually is leading in P3. He was later joined by the 13 and three of the P2s, the 18 car and I think the high-class racing car and the other car is quite dark, can't see which one it is. Uh, might be the AF Corsa machine. But, yeah, not, not a lot of takers really at the moment. Not, not a lot of takers in the pits for some reason. Yeah, well, all of the GTP cars other than Matt Campbell were in before the full course yellow. With Matt Campbell coming in, should allow the number five JDC Miller Motorsports machine, the BMW number 24, brought on 59. Uh, all to get back on the end of the lead lap. Joe Bradley has tracked down his good friend Wayne Taylor. And, why, this championship's going back and forth at the moment, uh, Joe. I hope they've got some kind of calculator up there to work out what's going on. Well, um, uh, you know, Wayne's just rubbing his brow here. I'm sure they're working out all sorts of things. Was, uh, was it always like this, win? I don't remember it being this competitive. <laughs> I said, you know, it's, it's really unbelievable if you think there's only two and a half hours to go and literally there's still six cars seven can win this race track position is so important here these cars seem to really have an issue when they get within um, two car lengths of another car i think the air gets disturbed so much you, you see very little passing between the gdp cars and um so track position is, is critical, so the pit stops are critical, the execution is critical on drive. And, uh, you know, we won the last one, this one we just lost it. And we're really racing the 31, but the 60 is also in front of us. But we still got two hours 26 to go. Yeah, and anything can happen. I mean, it's been such a dramatic race. Again, do you remember it being this dramatic? No, I don't remember a race like this before. I mean. It's a shame that the six car got taken out the way they did, uh, because they, were, they would have been in the title fight as well. Um, things are cooling down, cars are getting faster now, tire pressures, everything track. And, you know, when so much is on the line, everybody's just pushing that much harder. It's, it's been a great season, 2023. The, you know, the first season of the GTP era, um, I think everyone, you know, behind the decision to go to this formula must pat themselves on the back. We're back at Daytona for the, for the Rolex, we're back at the Raw. I think, uh, I think we didn't really envisage it being so fantastic. No, I don't, I don't think anybody, I think everybody thought when we went into Daytona that all the GDP cars would be in the pit lane, but they weren't. Um, and really we've had very little mechanical issues throughout the year. I mean, our car, you know, with the HPD engine and stuff, we've not had a problem throughout the season. Um, but, you know, this is the first season um, that we haven't won a race yet. Yeah, I know, but you could win the championship. That's, a, that's another thing. Um, all right, thinking about... And so the championship is the most important thing right now. Yeah, absolutely. But th it's all right, let's park that for a second and think about 2024, as we do at the, at the last race of the season. Here you are, you've got one car, and you're rubbing your forehead. <laughs> you've got your head in your hands. Next season, the plan is two. <laughs> you need two heads to put in your hands? Well, I'll have four hands <laughs> over, over my, my head, you know. Um, It'll be exciting though. No, it's going to be really exciting. It's, I think having two cars just gives you that little advantage. Um, just to understand the car, understand the drivers, understand the strategy. You can go off strategy with one car. So there's a lot of positives with where we're going with us next year. So I'm very excited, but I need to win this championship. Um, let's 
Now that I've got you, for the fans that weren't listening the other night through, during night practice, you were the inaugural winner of this event back in 1998 uh, as a driver, um, you know, in the Ferrari 333 SP. As I was saying to you the other night, I remember the Ferrari coming down the hill, the fireworks going off. Were you at the wheel of the car at the end, Wayne? Um, was it Eric? No, no, I think it was Eric. I think I started. Um, yes, it was Eric. It was Eric. Yeah. Tell us about tell us about that that day and the the, the event itself and, and and where it's got to. Well, you know, it was Don Panos's um, idea, you know, to start this Petit Le Mans and build it for the fans, and you know, just look at look at the competition now, some what 22 years later. Um, it was nice uh, winning the inaugural one, and I think I might have told you that. In practice, the first day, Don Panos came walking past my car and he looked at the Ferrari, the Ferrari and he said to me, your car's got the engine in the wrong side. I said, well, where should it have been? He said, up front. And, uh, you know, that happened that weekend. So it was, um, it was a great race. Um, and, you know, I'm just thankful that I was able to get that first, that first win here and, and in a Ferrari. And you know what? The following year, he went and won it with the car with an engine in the front. I mean, he had such a vision. I know Don Panos was a special guy. He had a lot of weird ideas and stuff, but um, some of them came off. Some, some of them didn't, but some of them did. Yeah, we're still doing it, Wynn. We're still doing it. Part of work, mate. Thank you for talking to us, Wynn, as ever. Pleasure. Any time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Wayne Taylor and Joe Bradley. I feel a series of programmes coming on, to be honest. Wayne, very generous with his time, right in the middle of this battle for the championship, which continues to be so tight. Two twenty-two to go, 2022 to go. On a beautiful evening, not a cloud in the sky now. It's past sunset by about 15 minutes. And uh, let's see if we can grab a quick word with Catherine Legg before we go back green in the Gradient NSX. <laughs> Catherine, um, some of the race so far for the 66. Um, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't know, it's been eventful, honestly. Um, I think uh, we, we had a difficult car through the, the heat of the day, and now we're hoping that that's going to come to us and that uh, this is the time where we can go and uh, show them what we're made of and fight some people. Are you, you seem a little bit kind of, um, what's the word for it, irritated by the situation. Why is that? <laughs> I, am. I don't hide it very well. I'd be rubbish at poker, wouldn't I? Um, no, it's just uh, silly little things and, and other people, and people who are laps down hitting other people, and it's just, you know, some of the driving standards are questionable, honestly, but uh, it is what it is, and maybe I'll drive better angry anyway. Go for it. Thanks, Kat. Thanks. Catherine Legg and Nick Damon. Lights are out on the XM BMW safety car, which uses its hybrid and V8 power to the best effect to pull away from the field, bit of braking and accelerating going on from Sebastian Bourdais and from Jack Aiken at the head of the field. Two Cadillacs. No team orders, remember they come from different pit boxes, different teams. Shank racing in third with the number 60, Tom Blanc is behind the wheel, then Philippe Albuquerque for the number 10, Connick and Minolta Acura needs to get ahead of those cars to win the championship. It's a great restart from Philippe Albuquerque. I think he was already alongside the other Acura even before they got under the Fox factory bridge. Did he go through? Not quite, as they go down towards turn one. Then a bit of a gap there, almost like a split restart. I'm not sure it was meant to be like that. Darkness falling now. It's seven minutes away from official darkness and that means anyone who didn't get their night qualification done on Thursday or wasn't pre-qualified cannot be in the car so you'll have seen some changes going on at the last pit stops there in some of the GTD cars um, the Chetelar car I think only had one driver qualified didn't it but that car's had its problems anyway 
So, two hours and 19 minutes to go. And now the shape of the car headlights is going to have to help us out. We've got a penalty for the cause of the last incident, and it's the Ferrari, the AF Corsa number 61, clearly making contact and spinning Andy Lally. And so that AF Corsa of Simon Mann, Miguel Molina, and James Collado will have to come back through the pit lane, drive through. Top prototypes at, heading towards the far end of the circuit. The 0 1, Sebastian Borde. What a day he's had. We'll be discussing in the next couple of hours our nominations between the team members for the BDO Nose Strategy Award, our final one of the season. Could be any of the classes, any of the cars. It's going to be a tough one to call that because there's been all kinds of the uh, all kinds of strategies being played out as it stands. It's the wheel and Cadillac that would take the championship by 11 points from the number 10 Acura with the BMW 96 points back from the lead. That will change several times between now and the chequered flag. Well, it's changed in the last lap, not positions, but uh, the two Acuras have just exchanged places. After the restart, Philip Albuquerque has got past Tom Blomquist, so he's going to set sail now and try and catch those Cadillacs. Because right now, for the manufacturer championships, it's going Cadillac's way. And for the drivers' championship as well. But places mean points, and points could mean the championship for both manufacturer and teams. It is that close. One place either way could make a difference between the 0-1 and the 1-0. It is a binary affair at the front of the field in terms of the championship battle there. Nice to hear Wayne Taylor, not surprising, but nice to hear him say it, that he's disappointed that the number six Porsche Penske Motorsport 963 isn't in it. He, you know, I know he wants to win the championship, Jeremy, but that is the voice of a, a wily old competitor, and he, he wanted to beat Roger Penske, I suspect, in a straight fight. Yeah, he, uh, yeah absolutely, that's exactly what he was thinking there. Uh, but it is pretty classy, isn't it? He, he, yeah, he just likes to beat the best. Tell you what, Sebastian Bordeaux's on a, on a great lap here, yeah. In fact, it's the new fastest lap of the race by our race leader, Sebastian Bordeaux. One minute, 10.917, the first sub-111 lap in this race. And that, of course, is a race lap record because this is the first car, the first time these cars and this formula have raced here. That is... The race lap record for DPI was set in 2019 here at Petit by Felipe Nazar in the Cadillac. That was a 108.8. And the outright sports car lap record here is a 107 flat in the hugely powerful, hugely tired and downforced Peugeot 908 HDI FAP of Christian Clear. It's a 107 zero. I don't think we'll get down to that this year. I'll tell you what. I'm mightily impressed. Yeah, 96, 9, 96, 0.664 was the fastest lap last year. It was by Cadillac, Little Bamba. Extraordinary, these cars. And I, I'm, I am excited by what potential is yet to be unlocked by these GTPs and what additional competition might bring. Um, we have the likes of Lamborghini and Alpine. If you look further down the road, Aston Martin. Very important for Hart and Racing that that Aston Martin Valkyrie comes here. And they have made it very clear to us, and Nick Damon did the interview with Ian James last week, that the ability for them to race in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship was absolutely part of the discussion when they were asking if they could develop the Valkyrie into a hypercar entrant. Four day then, 
three seconds to the good Philippe Albuquerque in second. Uh, Jack Eck in the second, sorry. Philippe Albuquerque in third. Philippe Eng. The BMW a little bit further back. Sheldon von der Linde looking at the back of the Mayshank. Tom Blanc was driven Acura. That's the battle for fourth and fifth as they go down the front straight and down towards turn one. Lap times around about the mid, low to mid 12s for some of the competitors. 11 5 2 5 for Sebastian Bordet. He is trying to create a gap here. He is creating a gap, 3.8 seconds. It's gone at the last few laps. It went from 1.4 to 2.6 to 3.0 to 3.8. And uh, Tom Blunkist uh, falling, slipping back in the fourth position behind that second place battle between number 31 and the number 10. As you say, Sheldon van der Linde is knocking on his door, as is uh, Maddie Campbell in that Porsche 963. If they can get the track position, they're going to be looking pretty stout, I think, in this race as well. Uh, and right behind uh, Maddie Campbell is uh, Timon van der Helm in car number five as well, along with Philippe Eng and Harry Tinknell. We've seen very good pace from Harry Tinknell earlier in this race. How much of a tail gunner will the 60 Acura play for the 10 for the rest of the race after the let it pass on the last restart? That's damn fly. I'm not sure they let it pass. And those two are very much competitors, albeit MSR aren't back with Acura for next year. They weren't selected by Honda performance developments here in the US to, to run the car. So I'm not sure that that is the case at all there. No, it's easy to be sceptical there, certainly, because, uh, I mean, it, it, seems, it just seems a very old decision that uh, Aki wouldn't want to... I, I, I get that uh, Wayne Taylor want, and Andretti want to run two cars, but I, I would have... I, I, one would have thought that getting an extra car after a full year of uh, GTP wouldn't have been that much of a problem, and, and Maya Shank desperately wanted to run it, so uh, there's all sorts of weird, weird politics. Politics in racing? No, surely not. How, how much, I mean, it's a difficult question to answer because we don't know, but how much might the uh, disqualification at Daytona have played into that decision? <laughs> Because yeah. that that's that that yeah, is, is that, corporate. That's at the corporate level, in, isn't it? Indeed. That, that those decisions it, are made. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah. Japanese co politics again. Let's put it that way. Let's Jap leave it at that. Japanese company, the company I, honor, all know, that sort of stuff. Okay, if if I'm being honest here, I just cannot believe that that somebody at HBD Acura didn't know what was going on. I'm sorry, but that's. I know they say that's not the case, but I have a really hard time believing it because there's so much information that is now available, not only to the team, but the manufacturer and IMSA as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was HPT that came forward with the information, wasn't it? Indeed. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not saying that to support or, or question yeah. uh, what Jeremy's saying. Uh, let's go down to Nick Damon before we get the next piece of action and uh, speak to the Geordie giant that is Matt Bell. Uh, the recently relieved Matt Bell, who's, uh, who's run back from a, uh, a bathroom break to talk to us. Uh, so, currently third in the class. Um, is it just on rotation or do you have the pace to actually get to the front? Um, I think pretty much everyone is on more or less the same strategy plan now, so yeah, it's going to be the pace that wins it. Uh, we definitely want to try and take it to the to the Riley guys and the JR3 guys, so uh, yeah, let's see what this race brings. We hear from the GTP cars that they can't overtake each other. I take that's not actually an issue with the, uh, the, the P3s. You can't get past each other on the track. Uh, it's actually it is one of the trickiest circuits to overtake around here. So, but we have a little bit of uh, differences in the Ligiers and Decanes. Our strengths are in different areas of the track. So, uh, I certainly hope I can overtake some people. So, so you'll be in for the end then. You've got the, the glory night run. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, I hope I had enough carrots today. 
and do you have nice fresh tyres as well? I uh, will do, yeah. So we've got some good tyres at the end. Thanks, Zach. Cheers, Zach. Has a Reese car served as penalty, number 62 car? What was that? Uh, there was a 61 car, actually. Oh, 61 was, was it? I beg your pardon. Corsa car. Yeah, I called it as the 62 oh, when it happened yeah, and then yeah, had to put it at that right. Yeah, Unfortunately, sorry. race control actually saw the right car and didn't listen to me. Why would they? <laughs> in fairness. Um, so that 62 Reese car in fourth position. Down the GTDs, we haven't spoken about them for a little while. VP Racing uh, in competition update. Garrett Grist in LMP3 leads from Philippe Praga and the AWA car. So that's 30, 74, and 73. And the Iron Dames have gone off at turn one. So I tried to get that in before uh, anything happens. A VP update uh, has rejoined. Looks to be pretty straight in that car at the moment. Who is driving? It is the 83 car. Yes, it is in the darkness. Yeah, Dorian Pan. It is Dorian who... It's a rare mistake by the French driver. Uh, GTD Pro led by John Prepper and Iron Lynx, the team car. Yeah, just uh, overcooked turn one. Nice four-wheel drift onto the grass. List lifted off, let the car come back to her. Actually, that's a pretty stiff bit of driving. Yeah, again, Jeremy Singh, you make a mistake, don't come down. It didn't jump on the brakes, didn't do too much steering, didn't let the car settle itself down. Very nicely done, Dorian. John Pepper leading uh, is the best of the GTs and therefore leads GTD Pro. 19th position for the number 63 Iron Lynx Lamborghini. By about six seconds from Team Court off in second, but that is the leader of GTD. Dan Alex Ribeiras is the next GTD Pro for Harter Racing, the 23. Thomas Merrill, the Turner Motorsport, number 97 car, second in GTD next up. Then two GTD Pros, that's Patrick Pelier of Faf Motorsport having a bas battle with Daniel Serra for Risi Competizione. That is 9 and 62. And in the top, finishing off the top four in GTD, Gunnar Jeanette for April Racing, who is half a second ahead of Marco Sorensen, the heart of racing. Number 27, Nick Tim. With, the, uh, with Mikael Greiner out the 32, currently leading uh, with your Mercedes. I could ask you how it's going. It's pretty obvious it's going very well. Yeah, we've had a good race so far. Um, there was a safety car um, now, and we didn't box because we want to score points in five minutes for the Endurance Championship. So we will cycle back, but uh, yeah, most important is that we try to win the championship tonight. Will those points be enough, or will you still need a good finish in the overall race? I'm not sure where we will cycle back with all the strategies going on, but uh, I think if we score points now in around five minutes, then we are in good shape to win the Endurance Cup. So, so you, in a way, you're sacrificing the overall race for the Endurance Cup. Yeah, it's a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit annoying, but we have to do it because there's a point every four hours, so four, and then uh, now in around five minutes, so we want to score points there. Looking to those final two hours, obviously you're going to have a lot of traffic to get past and move forward. Is it easy to get past with these cars? I mean, hearing actually is quite tricky with, with a number of machines to pass. Yeah, yeah we're, I mean, with the MG, we, it's a really good car, but we're missing straight line speed a little bit, uh, so it's difficult to overtake. It's really only turn one here and uh, turn 10. Uh, we also have to manage the GTP coming really quickly at night. It's not easy. We don't see much uh, in the mirrors, but it's the same for everyone. Thank you, Jan. And GTD Pro being led by the 63 Lamborghini, uh, Jordan Pepper at the wheel. Mirko Bortolotti is sitting watching. Mirko, you guys are leading, but only six seconds. It's cracking for us. What's it like for you? Yeah, it's been a great race so far for us. It's uh, still a bit more than two hours to go, so I'm getting ready to jump back in. And uh, yeah, it's been a tremendous uh, recovery uh, from basically last position on the grid after what happened yesterday. But uh, so far, so good. I mean, we are really happy with how the race is going at the moment, but we all know that can change really quickly in IMSA, so we will need, we will need to be uh, up for it in the last, last two hours to make the right calls, and uh, yeah, we are ready to fight. Mirko, we know about the limited tyre sets and the limited tyre allocation, and we've seen teams putting on scrubbed rubber. Um, do you, have, as a driver, are you told by the team where you are with regards to tyre wear and what tyres they're giving you? 
I didn't get the last part of your question. Is the, does the engineer tell you what condition the tyres are in when he gives you them? Um, yeah, well, we planned it in a way that uh, obviously uh, we tried to have the, the, the best tyre in the best, in, you know, in a crucial part of the race. And um, obviously we prepared the weekend in a way that, uh, you know, especially when you get into colder temperatures, we, ha we have a, a scrapped set of tyres. So it's actually making life easier for the drivers on the outlap. Um, from that on, looking looking forward to the last uh, two stints now. Great stuff, thanks. Another position gained. That's two in the last couple or three laps for Matt Campbell in the Porsche Penske Motorsport 963. The number seven, having dealt with Sheldon von der Linde in the BMW, has now dealt with Tom Blomqvist as well. Up to fourth position, outside chance of the championship, but really relying on other people to have some uh, ill fortune. Yeah, right now, Johnny, I mean, he's behind the, the, the two main protagonists that he's fighting against, number 31 and number 10, uh, uh, and they're in the order now, 31, 10 and 7, so uh, he wouldn't gain any ground on those two, uh, and he's behind them currently in the points table, but not by very much, as you suggest. Wow, there's all sorts of things have happened already uh, in this race to suggest that everything will go <laughs> cleanly all the way to the end. I think it would be a fool's errand. Tom Blomqvist, Sheldon van der Linde, Timon van der Helm and Philip Eng come down in a lighted train. Tom Blomqvist is really struggling again. Yeah. yeah. What's going on with that? Did they put a scrub set on that car? Or was it an older set? Not sure. Jumping the restart for Ferrari, the 023. That's the uh, the car. I want. I always want to call that the Tifosi uh, Ferrari Triazi. It is obvious reasons, and that will be another drive-through for that car. Seb Prio has been installed in a or Porsche. Got a Jeanette getting out. Of that car, yeah, Porte, a, sorry, Jeremy. No, they've had a really good run. Yeah, uh, best of the uh, Porsches in GTD, at least. Uh, the FAF car is ahead of them, but uh, otherwise, they've been running really, really strongly. Side by side again, down to turn ten. That great overtaking maneuver, and it's Tom Blanc was defending from Sheldon von der Linde in the BMW. Von der Linde tries to get up the inside, so he could take the racing line at the final corner has to drop back just a tiny bit down towards turn one that's quite a bit of coasting going into turn one for the BMW they're still racing but they're doing 12s and 13s over the curb for Blomqvist just got out of shape in the Myshank Acura yeah he's, he's pushing hard is Tom Blomqvist he's he's doing his best but I'm not sure the car is, uh, is playing ball with him. I completely agree, John. Yeah, he's really struggling out there, and uh, yeah, the, the BMW behind, behind him just unable to find a way past him. He's, he's, no doubt he's faster, uh, as he is right behind Sheldon van der Linde, Timon van der Holm, Philip Eng, and Harry Ticknell. There's a big long train there of uh, one, two, three, four, five cars, um, or four of them lined up behind Tom Blomqvist, and uh, you know, he's doing the best he can, Blomqvist, but uh, as is van der Linde, but he's not getting quite close enough to be able to make a move. Is he going to dive to the inside here at turn 10? That's a, his opportunity, gets down the inside, and that's where the pass was made by Matt Campbell three or four laps ago, and it is repeated by the BMW driver. Very impressive indeed from Matt Campbell, by the way. He's set off in hot pursuit of Philippe Albuquerque, who is right up the tailpipes now of Jack Aiken, just three quarters of a second there between those two. We're into the last 120 minutes on RS2, part of the Radio Show Limited network of channels, bringing the audio live and free around the world. No interruptions on the World TV feed. That's via IMSA.TV. In the US, if you're not listening online, you can be on XM207 and round the circuit here at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. It's 98.1, our FM frequency. So, a nice, clean pass 
to take that position for Sheldon van der Linde, and he will now try and peg back Matt Campbell. He's already, Matt Campbell in those three or four laps has taken seven seconds out of the guys behind him. Uh, let's find out what's going on in some of the other cars down the field. Andy Lally was spun out of the race in the number 44 car earlier on. It caused a, a full course yellow when the Magnus Racing car got beats to turn 10B. Nick Damon's with him now. And the obvious question, um, how upset are you with the person who punted you off? Uh, about is, we, we've taken our level of driving this weekend, and we've just made it, um, we've lowered the bar. But, you know, it's funny actually, because we, we, we thought we were going to go yellow a couple hours ago, and we made a call to pit, and we stayed on old tires, and we just took a splash, so I was junk and uh, I got to give at least one shout out to the 32 I think it was Ken in the car because I was blocking the hell out of him trying to stay on the lead lap and uh, he, he did it he raced me as clean as he could I probably would have punted me but um, the shit for brains that punted me in 10a some of these guys just don't know how to run too wide you know um, it is what it is it's kind of been our year uh, tough one I it looks like we're rolling back now. We had some overheating problems. I think we might have stuck a stone through the radiator when we got stuck in the gravel trap there. But um, big thanks to this crew. They've been hustling. Big happy birthday next week to my girlfriend, Lori, and Spence's wife, Lindsay, today. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. And apologies for language there as well. No, uh, no let up at the front of the field as Philippe Albuquerque had said he got close to Jack Aiken. He's now got by him, Jeremy. Yeah. And that's the number 10 car yeah, yeah. back and that, ahead. And that takes them back, I think, to the top of the championship standings, doesn't it? Yes. yes by it 29 does. points. Yeah. This is extraordinary. Fantastic stuff. This is extraordinary. Boards A, not really in the championship hunt. So, he is heading towards a race victory at the moment, but still plenty of miles to do. We've completed 328 laps. Albuquerque was on an absolute tear. And managed to track down Jack Aiken in the wheel of Cadillac. Yeah, who's be, who has been doing a super job uh, today. He's just not got the same pace that he had uh, a little bit earlier on relative to the competition. It was down at turn 10A again, Jeremy. Dodge out from the behind the Jack Aiken cart. There was huh. traffic there. It was a lovely manoeuvre. Very late down the inside. Yeah. Let off the brakes. That's pretty good. And fair driving again by Jack Aiken. Um, he could have turned in there, but that would have been probably disastrous for the pair of them. And they are fighting for the championship. So that is the championship battle. Just heading down the back straight now, under the Motul Bridge and now to the top of the brow with uh, a little bit of a gap ahead of them now. It's just the leader ahead of them as they go down into the braking area in that lit area of the circuit. And Tom Blomqvist has fallen all the way to the back of that train of cars. He was leading it not so long ago. Uh, he was in the fourth position. He's now ninth in car number 60, really struggling. On that last lap, he was overtaken by the number five car of Tommy van der Helm, by Philip Eng in the BMW, and by Terry Tinknell in number 59 Proton Porsche. Wow. Meanwhile, some stunning laps again from Sebastian Bordet. What a one minute 12.0 last time around for him. Best lap of a 10, 917. Not a Porsche, but the Cadillac tie there. Looks like there might be a pit stop in the offing for that number 60 car yeah. that has dropped back. You can't afford to lose. To, I mean, even if they've got more in the tank, they've uh, done, yeah. what have they done, 27 laps in yeah. that car. Yeah, but the, the thing is that we're looking towards the end of the race. We've right. got to just under two hours to go, Correct. and it can make a pit stop now and probably just about get it to the end. It'll be a bit of a stretch if it goes green all the way, but I think they can probably just about manage it. 
I agree. They, they'd like to do another lap or two, I would think, but he's struggling so badly that I think they're just hemorrhaging time. Problem now is the 35 seconds off the leader. They're in danger of losing the lead lap if they came in and a, and a yellow came out. So they've got to be a bit careful here. What, if, what, if, what lap stints have we seen, Jeremy? Well into the 30s, haven't we? Yeah, 40, 40s. Yeah. So this is this would be early. This would be a good 10 laps or so early. But as Jeremy oh, yeah. says, back timing from the end of the race. And it's just losing too much time at the moment. 14-3 uh, in traffic last time around. For Harry Tinkle ahead of 17-3 for... Tom Blomqvist, hemorrhaging time there, and that isn't just the traffic that's playing its part. Remember, he was heading that queue in fourth position not so very long ago. It's the 26th running of Matul Patilamon here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. We're in full dark now. Official darkness started 10 minutes ago. So everyone out there now is qualified to drive in the dark. One, two, three across the track, coming down into the three more overtaking spot at the bottom of the hill. Second place, P2 car, the number 18 of Christian Rasmussen. It's going through the corners at the end of the lap there. Nine seconds now for Bordeaux. Alex Quinn in LMP2 for the 52 PR1 Matheson Motorsport team leads. That means at the moment, Ben Keating has the invitation to Le Mans 2024. Christian Rasmussen for Aero Motorsport in second. What a race they've had, by the way. I'm yeah, seriously considering them yeah. for the BDO No Strategy Award because they were two laps down earlier on and they'd been hit by everybody. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, those strategic decisions were fairly easy, but Rasmussen is driving a brilliant stint right now. He's overtaken the two cars uh, that are behind him, now number 04 and number 35, and he's all over the, the back end now of Alex Quinn in, an, in that PR1 Matheson car number 52. It's been a tremendous drive by him. Yeah, he's closing that car down. Now within a second, Alex Quinn thinking, I'm sure, about the award of the invitation and the championship. Meantime, in GTD, the pro arm still mixed up. Two TGT pros at the front of the field. Uh, I take that back, team court offers at the front of the field. In the 32 AMG, as into the pits goes Loris Brunelli. In the fourth place GTD car, Forte Racing. Now, they should be able to get to the end from here with one more stop, Jeremy. The GTD cars can surely yep. do 55 minutes. Yep. And Tom Blomqvist has also come into the pit lane. Looks like Tom Blomqvist is getting out. Which one of you guys are down there? Joe Bradley? check that out for you can't quite see with the binoculars can't see around the TV booth <laughs> down there so I'll get that in a moment I think that was the sensible thing to do Colin Brown got into the car it was a four tyre stop so new Michelins for Colin Brown full tank of VP racing fuel and Colin Brown probably to the end now that Jeremy. And just hearing that Tom Blomqvist has had a warning for blocking in oh. that stint. Now yeah. that goes to the car, not to the driver. So Colin Brown needs to be aware of that. But he now is one pit stop away from the end of the race. Let's go to Jeremy for the penultimate set of uh, M uh, Michelin Endurance Championship points for the season. 
Yeah, and in the GTP, I think uh, we can pretty much crown Wheel and Engineering Racing Cadillac, the car number 31, as the champions in the uh, MEC for the team's championship, and that would be Pippa Durrani, Alexander Sims, and Jack Aitken. They were third across the line at the eight-hour mark, but uh, they uh, now can't be beaten. Uh, Cadillac right. Racing uh, got the maximum points there, but they've got, they'll, they'll now have 34 points to the 38 of uh, the number 31 team and there are five points available for the winner at each at each juncture in a race but there's two points for fourth position so uh, that's good job done there for the number 31 team congratulations to them in uh, lmp2 that's still up for grabs uh, with the uh, maximum points there number 52 team pr1 matheson motorsports uh, ben Keating, Paul Luchata and Alex Quinn. They now have 36 points to the 37 of CrowdStrike Racing by APR. That's George Kurtz and Ben Hanley. So that's uh, very much up for grabs in LMP2. LMP3, hats off to Riley Motorsports. Uh, do, job done there in number 74 team. In GTD Pro, again, very, very close. None of the top three point scorers uh, uh, actually were among the top three at that eight hour mark. Uh, so now, WeatherTech Racing car number 79 will have a one-point edge over Corvette, which is out of the race, uh, and, uh, n and number 35 car, uh, excuse me, number 14 car of Vassar Sullivan, which is also out of the race. So uh, I think we can pretty much crown number 79, 79 team as the champions. Uh, even if they uh, fail to finish at, uh, at the end of the race, they should be good to go. In GTD, um, having scored second, having been placed second at the four-hour mark, Team Courthoff Motorsports were leading at the eight-hour mark. That will give them maximum points. They now have 37 points to the 34 of uh, Heart of Racing Team, car number 27, the Aston Martin. So if the uh, Team Courthoff car can finish ahead or within a position of the Harder Racing Aston Martin, then the Team Court of Motorsports will win the Michelin Endurance Cup in GTD. So, an hour and three quarters to go. And still, even with those championships that Jeremy has just described having been decided, still plenty to go at the front of the face, at the front of the face, front of the race. Thank you for all of your tweets and messages that have been coming in this week and particularly today. Really appreciate the collective support and wisdom that we've been getting here on IMSA Radio. Been another great race, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Still one major endurance event for us in RSL to cover this year. That will be the 12 hours of Kuwait. Check RadioLamont.com for all the details. 12 hours in the desert in the evening time for the 24H series. Partners with IMSA, of course, a few years ago down at Seabury. Rather hope that we could get another one of their races back. Did a race, 24 hour race at Kota as well. So, Jack Aiken has just gone back by Philippe Albuquerque. Some of the championship points have changed around again. And Will and Engineering. And, wow. And Cadillac go. Jeremy, this is what we've got to think of at the end of the race. Yeah. This is extraordinary. Yet another championship lead change. I think we've had as many championship lead changes yeah. as we've had lead changes in the front we, of the yeah. field. We might have actually. points. The difference between Alex Sims and Pete Durrani, Philippe Albuquerque and Ricky Taylor. One of these teams will be desperate to get cars in between themselves and their other championship contender. Because at that point, you've got a little bit of a buffer, but at the moment, they're second and third in the race. And as I said before, the two Cadillac teams, one is Chip Ganassi run, one is Action Express run. So 
It's not as if they're running out of the same shop, so they're not going to drop Sebastian Baudet back to put some points gap in between them. They're racing for the win. All three of them are racing for the win. Adding Matt Campbell, who's only 20 seconds away from the lead. Yeah, and what's interesting about that, John, is that uh, we thought he, he was absolutely charging he there, was. and he got the gap down from 14 seconds to uh, almost bit under less than eight, and it's now got, gone out again to over 12 over the last four or five laps. Oh, it was a mistake, a rare mistake ah. by Philippe Albuquerque coming out at 10. B, he was alongside the TDS racing car, and the TDS racing car didn't give him very much room, to be honest, on the outside, coming out of the right-hander before the Fox factory bridge. And it was a fairly uncontested pass then for Jack Aiken as he slipped through whilst Philippe Albuquerque was getting back on the racing surface. Here we go again. I think there was a little touch on the back of the championship leading number 52 wins LMP2 car, which immediately comes into the pits. That's Alex Quinn. And that means he drops down the order here. Era Racing, Christian Rasmussen to the lead. TDS in second. It's a, I think it's a flat tyre, is it? There was certainly some damage on the right rear. The, uh, the light is hanging down there, Jeremy. It was a light touch, but a touch nevertheless. This should be there. Penultimate stop. Um, Actually, the might no, be the goal. Yeah, no, they only two stops here, yeah, the two from LMP2 there. cars. Yeah, they only run uh, 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes. 40, don't they? Yeah, 40, 40 minutes or so, yeah, yes. Sorry, yeah. So we've got 102 minutes remaining. They're yeah, replacing the light cluster at the back there. Hello to Adam Green. Thank you for staying with us all the way through today. At IMSA Radio. Number zero four car also in the pit lane there, the uh, crowd strike by APR, making the pits up along with the number 52. And even with those two in the pits, as uh, Christian Rasmussen's only four seconds ahead of Josh Pearson in that uh, TDS car number 35. Pearson's done a nice job again. Yes, again, for a young man. But a lot of experience now, yeah. Josh Pearson, hasn't he? True that, and Bourdais has extended his lead now to uh, 10 seconds over Jack Aitken who's uh, having made that pass on Philip Albuquerque is now back in the uh, preferred seat in terms of the championship chase. But you can bet your bottom dollar for Philip Albuquerque is going to try his darndest to get that position back again. Andy Campbell now 15 seconds back in the fourth position. Oh, it's interesting how he's just uh, lost a fair bit of ground lately and he's coming under pressure again now. Well, will be shortly by number 25, because there's a spin. I think it's the 50, is it the 52 on the way out? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's, it is the 52 is. car. Me. So uh, on the, this is again on an outlap down at turn 10B. And this is the invitation to Le Mans. This is the championship possibly going out the window. Alex Quinn desperately trying to rally cross his way out of the beach. I don't think he's going to do it. Straighten the wheels up, Alex. Straighten the wheels up. You might just get out. He has just got onto the grass. My goodness me, that is so close to disaster. So as they run, it was the 52 car leading as he comes down there. Oh, he was side by side with another car and then he couldn't get restarted, I believe, and that's when he ran into the to the gravel, but that was definitely side-by-side -side action. And Alex trying to keep the car running. Possibly the 18. Was that the car? That was a TDS car. 
Uh, or the 18. I think it was the 18. She's got better eyes than me. So it, the Aero car is in the pit lane. So yeah, I think it was. So that was the leader in the class. So that was the battle at the front of the field and at the top of the championship standings as well. And they've had to come in. Now, how will race control see that one out in the darkness? And a couple of people seeing, by the way, the lighting looks better this year. Have they improved it? I think the cameras are better because it's still very, very dark. And off has gone the number 59. And that has spun around the WeatherTech Porsche. Just coming out of the pits. That's coming out of the pits as well. And down through the S's. Oh, Harry Tinknell, how unusual is that? I don't think he's got any damage, but he's struggling for grip on those cold Michelin tyres. And going through on the outside, a P2 car. Looked like the 88 AF Corset to me that was going by. Oh, my. Oh, my. Bordé, blissfully unaware. 11 what's, seconds. What's happened to Matty Campbell? I mean, he's losing yeah, a second or more a lap Has now all of a sudden. Has he burned the tyres off? Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. I tell you what, there was contact there on the wall yeah. with Tinknell when he went straight on over the top again at three. It wasn't heavy contact, but I think he'll have to bring that car in, Jeremy. Yeah. He's shaking the nose a little bit. I wonder if Campbell did burn the tyres. Did they get their pressures wrong at the start? Was it, a, was it not a new set of tyres last time around? At this stage in the race, surely it yeah. was. goodness how uh, just hearing by the way the Magnus car 44 Aston Martin officially retired I think we'd realized that but official so get the sharpie of doom out pass yeah. for the lead a couple of laps ago when Albuquerque went wide I think that was the TDS car that he was racing against uh, trying to get around the outside uh, and then moments ago there was a little touch. Ah, it was the number 10 car that brushed the back. Now, Philippe Albuquerque brushing the back of the 52. So that'll be getting looked at as well. <laughs> Boy, they haven't had a, a dull moment in race control. That is absolutely for certain. Well, keep an eye and see if race control are going to review that. Bordello continuing to extend his lead is now 12 seconds over the other Cadillac with uh, Philip Albuquerque stuck behind him. And then Manny Campbell, another 18 seconds back in the fourth position in that Porsche car number seven that was flying not so long ago. Schultz van der Linde tracking him, about three or four seconds behind him. He's pretty much maintaining that gap. Actually closing in a little bit, actually, as uh, Maddie Campbell has slipped back from that battle for between second and third. Time van der Helm, fair bit, fair way back, further back, 15 seconds or more back in the sixth position and holding off Philip Eng in the second of the BMWs. Those are the only cars on the lead lap at the moment. Number 60 car is a lap down, and number 59 car. Uh, he's, he's kept going again, so he's still just one lap down. He hasn't come back into the pits either, mm. Harry Ticknell, so he's kept kept on going. Is he two laps down, or is he is he just on the tail end of that lap? Uh, Tinkers, are we talking about yeah. here? Uh, Tinkers in the 59. Where is he in relation oh. to uh, zero one? Zero one's just coming through turn five at the moment. Yeah. And Tinknell's around there somewhere, I think. 
he's behind the zero one. Is he? Okay, fine. Yeah. So he is two laps down now. Yeah, correct. Nick Damon down in the pit lane. The uh, number 10, uh, Akira, the, uh, has just snuck in the Wayne Taylor racing car, just uh, sneaked in without anyone knowing. This looks like a full service of tyres, but no driver change. Uh, the tyres look simply shiny, which is probably good news, because that means they're new. But they will have to uh, take heed of what they've seen from Harry Tignall, take it easy the first few corners. This should be their penultimate pit stop, one more after this. Expect you to see the 25 BMW any minute now. With uh, makers, you can do about 45 minutes on a tank, and therefore we are within an hour and a half, just about. Ooh, it's now in 30. Uh, second minute now. The GTP cars. Yeah, the GTP cars. But they, they? They, they cut, yeah, yeah. But they, they're cutting it down to 2:45 minutes. Dudes. Sensible. We're, we're about to get a big. Uh, we're about to get a load. Here comes our leader, uh, Sebastian Bourdais, is going to come to the feet of the Cadillac squad any second. Now, Ringo van Azenda, as was exclusively revealed about five hours ago, is going to take that car to the end. <laughs> Uh, so they got the uh, Van Zander, Bordet, who I think in both of his stints must have been in the lead just about the entire time. Jack Aitken comes in to 31, right to the end of the pit lane, of course, as they were the team leading the championship when they got here uh, a few days ago. That's a full service driver change. Uh, 31 getting into that car is going to be uh, people with Durrani to take it to the end. Waiting for the... Still waiting for the, the, uh, the BMW. The man with the BMW 25 sort of number on the, on the, on the waggly sort of uh, lollipop. He'd be waving that for half an hour before the car turned up. Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, and this is a full service as well. So whoever's in the 25 has got out. And somebody else is getting in. Uh, who's in the 25 at the moment, boys? Sorry, Nick. So I might not if I'm going to speak. So uh, it was Sheldon van der Linde who was in that car. OK, well, Sheldon's got out. Uh, and to my left, the JDM Miller Motorsport comes to a stop. And it's going to be, uh, well, it's not Jensen getting in. So I think it's, it might Rockefeller getting in. I would think so, yeah. Rocky yeah, so to the Rockies, end, sounds right. So Rockies to the end on that car. And they are all now just trotting through quite happily. Very, very long fuel fill on the uh, on the, the BMW. I mean, it just, it, it could be an illusion, just so I, I look around, but it seems to be there for a long time. Door shut on the, 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 the M car. No, didn't see car. No, door not shut actually. The door was almost shut on that car and they unshut itself again, so they're having a door shutting issue. Oh yeah, give it an excellent amount of wrist there by the mechanic. And the number five car, the GTC car is away. And that's our little flurry of excitement of uh, GTP cars having their penultimate stops. Coming down to 90 minutes as Nick was saying. It's been a race in some ways of attrition, but attritional in the most part yeah. down to contact. Although there's been a couple of uh, transmission issues, we've had a couple of suspension issues, notably. Although that was uh, on the Iron Dames, that was caused by contact as well. It was uh, a transmission issue, I think, on the originally on the number 12 Lexus. Early on in the piece, Nick Tandy taken out in an accident caused by Dennis Anderson in the high-class racing number 20, which involved that car and four others, or three others, excuse me, took the Inception McLaren out early on, big damage to that, and the 23 Triazi Ferrari involved. So that took the number six Porsche Penske Motorsport car out of the race effectively, although they did come back in, uh, out but another accident uh, for Lawrence Vanto uh, sidelined that car for the rest of the race, and that was one of the championship contenders out early. Philip Eng now into the pit lane in the BMW M Hybrid V8. Uh, this will be his penultimate stop, and Nick Damon is watching that car trundle down the pit lane. Comes to a halt. And going to work and that's going to be a driver change with new Michelin tyres going on there all four being changed at this point no sense in doing anything else Philip Eng out and Farfus getting in yeah yeah so Nick Dimon? here we now 
Yeah. Uh, I think I, don't, I, I, don't know, I thought I was talking over you there, which is a nightmare. Uh, just <laughs> saying it's a full service on the, on the BMW, and also we've got the Acura, the. Uh, uh, the 93s, and now we've got Matt Campbell of the Porsche. Don't forget this car could manage to get itself out of sync by not coming in immediately in the last set of uh, pit stops, then coming in a lap later, so giving up all the trap position. As Jeremy's pointed out, it's been losing time recently. Here he comes Need to, to find out from that stop. whether they, when they eventually did come into the pits, I can't remember whether they took tyres or not. Um, the tyres going on are not shiny, but then they, obviously they've all got a couple of sets that, they've only just, that they have just run in deliberately, so... He doesn't know oh, the front's new, definitely. So they're definitely new at the front and almost new at the rear, probably a lap or so at most in the back. Tear off, uh, having a little bit of a shift at the front of the car, actually. It looks like they've got a. And it's, oh, it's smoking like heck from the, uh, the front left. That is causing a problem. That's why they're having a look. They've got some time while the fuel goes in, but they're having a real look at the air intakes and the air ducts on that front left. I mean, the smoke of a disc in itself isn't a major issue, isn't a major problem, but. Um, it's, uh, it comes in. Shall I do a quick interview as well? Yes, please. Uh, with uh, Jack Aitken out of the 31. Uh, Jack, congrats, well, you, you brought the car in where you needed to be. Great battle. And you brought the car effectively in with a chance of winning. Yep. Um, it was really, really tough. <laughs> I mean, uh, the 10's really quick tonight. And uh, getting through the traffic clean is, is super, super difficult. We're getting to that point in the race where we're happy to take a little bit more risk. But... Yeah, I mean, uh, he had a few moments, I had a few moments, and it was just, you know, trying to keep the nose clean. Is this the toughest race for traffic you've ever driven in? Uh, it's up there, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just so busy, right? And um, we've got a lot of arms that don't get a lot of seat time. So the speed difference, even within the slower cars, is pretty huge. So trying to gauge where the braking point's going to be is a bit of a lottery, but uh, it's good fun. End of the season, chance to ask you about next year. Obviously, you've been the endurance man for the, uh, the Whedon team. Is that continue next year, or are you going to get a full-time drive with somebody else? So, I uh, know I've signed up to continue with these guys on the full season. Um, Alexander's moving on to pastures with Corvette, so I opened up a slot. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited. There's a few tracks on the calendar that I can't wait to, to try, like uh, Long Beach and Laguna. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to that. So, another, another European driver is going to make their career in America? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I've got my toes still in Europe uh, with some GT stuff. I might continue that next year. We'll see. But um, I love it here. Thank you, Jack. And I hear we've got some problems in the back straight, John. Uh, we have. It is Catherine Legg in the number 66. Gradient Acura has pulled off to the side of the road. Now, there's not much room there on the run down that back stretch to the top of the hill before you drop down to 10A. Driver's left, she's still got power there. I can see lights on, she's cycling through the power cycling the car, should I say, a handful. Of course, yellow has come out. All bets are off, ladies and gentlemen. Zero for Ben Hanley beat it in. Alex Quinn beat it in as well for PR1 Matheson Motorsport. Alex in that number 52 car. This should be a quick recovery at the very least. So, new nose going on to the number six Porsche for Matt Campbell. So, that's what, excuse me, for the number seven, uh, Matt Campbell, when that car comes in. Now, Nick had said that they'd had a look at that. So, maybe out of our sight, there was some kind of contact for Matt Campbell in the poor seat. That would explain why he was off pace. The left front tyre looked much worse than the tyres that came off the back. Now, it does get a lot of hard work here, that left front tyre, but maybe he's lost a bit of front downforce and they're changing the nose for a slightly different specification to give him a little bit more bite. A a total speculation at this point. Nick Damon, I'm sure, will dip down to... Porsche Penske Motorsport and ask. Well, Jeremy, 85 minutes to go, so we'll be down to something around about 75 minutes by the time we go back to green flag racing. Yep. And so they'll still need one more stop. I don't see anybody coming no. into the pits right now. Other, uh, that, uh, other than that number seven car to change its nose. And at least they have it there, so that is an option. Yeah, it's going to cost them valuable track position, isn't it? 
And uh, the good news for Harry Tinknell is he was just about able to stay ahead see, of Ringo yeah. van der Zander. So he's still on the lead lap. So we still have the, uh, the, uh, the nine remaining cars in GTP still on the lead lap, which is pretty amazing, actually. With, well, I suppose there's been a lot of caution periods, but still. 52 has been given the initial pass around. That's the wins LMP2. Paul Loop yes. Shatter now behind the wheel. Still going to be a lap behind, I think. He, that'll get one of his laps back. I think he'd lost two. That was Alex Quinn, wasn't it, who was uh, in the car. They've, they've uh, swapped him out for Paul Loop Shatter. Ben Hanley had. Uh, um, hang on a second, Jeremy. Paul Loop Shatner goes across the line now. He's only one lap back, isn't he? Or has he just yeah. won, has he just had the wave by? Or uh, has he not had the wave by? No, he must have had the wave by. He's in front of the safety car. Sorry, I, it's uh, I, I'm yeah. I'm going mad. It's no, you're not. Hours of broad, uh, uh, broad no, I think he's I think he's a lap uh, a lap behind. I think correct. I think. He's, he came out of the pits and I think got the wave by straight away. He's just completed his out lap. He's down at turn five now on his uh, second lap out of the pits. Uh, Paul Lubchatt got in that car. I think they got in just before the full course yellow. Yes, they did. Um, and that's why he got the initial pass around straight away. Catherine Legg not very happy and somewhat frustrated when we were talking to her in the pit lane earlier on with the JG went with gradient NSX uh, coming back to the pits on the end of a tour up that is that is the car that won this race last year for gradient and uh, coming back in that form the pit lane he's not going to help cat's mood at all I wouldn't have thought So the pass around for the rest of the field is starting now as well. So don't worry if you're seeing cars going past the safety car out on the circuit. 82 minutes still to go. Waiting to see if the pits are going to open. We have had the longest green flag stint was the one before the previous caution, that was an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, this one was 53 minutes. We're now into our 60th, 6-0 laps of yellow. 10 stints of yellow, 10 full course yellows. Yeah, that's, that's not, uh, not the record. You said that with some resignation, Jeremy, as if yes. you think we might not be finished yet. It'd be nice to think yeah, we could I think the record, the record's the 13, I think. Yeah. For how many laps? 60... No, in fact, I think this might be the record number of laps, though. Was it not 59, the record number of, lap, of green flag laps? Prototype pits are just opening. So, 78. We've had, uh, the, the, the most number of cautions we've had uh, was actually 14. That was back in 2017. Uh, last year we had nine for a total of 65 laps. Total number of laps uh, record, wrong word, uh, is 78. That was two years ago. How many have we had now, did you say? Uh, 60. 60, okay. Last year was 65 with nine caution periods. We've had 10 cautions now. And the average is just under 60, well, just 50, under 55, 54.7. Yeah, 52.2 is the oh, okay. average number of... Uh, So safety car with the field behind it and the pits have just opened for the GTPs. Nick Damon, I think, uh, GT, I'm sorry, prototypes. Nick Damon, you have uh, a caller and that is the Acura of Colin Brown and Mike Rockefeller in the JDC Miller Motorsports Porsche and Harry Tinknell in the Porsche. Those were the three cars at the back of the GTP field. Yeah, and they're arriving as, as you speak. Now, the JDC Miller Motorsport car did stop with everyone else a while ago, so they're just taking advantage of a, of a nice slurp of fuel. Uh, it's new tyre on the... Yep, four new boots for the 
uh, Acura, the uh, number 60, and a good old shifty at the nose, of course, of that Tignall 59 Porsche, the uh, Proton car, because he smacked that against the barriers, didn't he? But they're, they're tough old things, these Porsches. It just... It, it looks completely undamaged. It's got, yeah, it's got some tyre scuff, but that's not from another car, it's from a tyre barrier. And he leaves just a few, uh, well, about two seconds at most behind um, the uh, the Acura, the 60 car. Uh, also going past me was the uh, Riley 74 P3 that's leading uh, in uh, LMP3. So what's going on there, if you haven't worked that out, is they're just pushing their fuel window a bit further into the race there, Jeremy, aren't they? Yeah, and, and therefore needing less fuel on their final stop, yeah. so it'll be a, a quicker final stop. Yeah, it won't save them a stop because we're still too far out. But as you say, Jeremy, yeah. the, the, uh, another lengthy is, caution period, however. Yeah, and uh, they, well. they, it's 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 it's. it's this is going to be a stretch, but hey, they're they're struggling, so it's worth a gamble. Right. And if you're at the back of the line, we've heard everybody talking about. Uh, heard everybody talking about the track position being king. But if you're at the back of the line, then you might as well do something a little bit different. Yeah. And that's what they are doing. Yep, so it's, um, you know, once again, the Cadillacs are looking very, very strong here. They didn't need this caution period, that's for sure. And um, it's a Cadillac 1-2 then at the moment. Renga van der Zander leading in car number 01 from number 31, Pipo Durrani. Pit stop here for the GTD Pro, uh, well, all of the GTD contenders. Uh, they came into the order, into the pits in the order number 9, 63 and 79 for GTD Pro. Full service there for the FAF Motorsports Porsche. And they're having a real race with the 78 uh, Lamborghini as well, so you get off the pit lane first. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about that FAF car is it when it, oh, that was a very, very close with the 77 Volt machine in the 96 Turner, Turner BMW. The, the Porsche, the Volt car, was, was meandering it, and he was in trying to get almost level with the uh, BMW, very nearly clunked the outside wall, which I was only standing about two feet behind, hence the reason why, oh! <laughs> I saw a Porsche angling towards me. The FAF Porsche is interesting because it, it comes in um, the pits and they, when it switches on the kind of the pit limiter, the headlights go out and they're replaced by kind of four deep blue lights. It was quite menacing actually coming down. You can't miss it, though you can be very frightened of it. Nick, did the uh, number seven Porsche come? Sorry, I was slightly distracted by doing something else at the time. Did no. the number seven Porsche no. come in for the new nose? No, that nose is sitting there and right. they obviously decided against it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to give up the track position, I yeah, think. You're right, Jeremy. Uh, but for those three cars, well, three of the four cars in the back, number 60 car was ahead of number 24, so gave up that uh, track position. But um, again, the uh, the fact they're going to need a little bit less fuel slash energy at the final stop, uh, making a sh slightly shorter s st stop when they come into pits for the final time, got to be good news for number 60 car. But uh, they've been really been struggling of late. Half past two in the morning in Central Europe. If you're staying up with us, thank you very much indeed. We've got just over an hour and 15 minutes still to go. In the Sunday morning in the UK as well. Hello to our UK audience. What a season. I keep saying it, what a season. And still plenty of action to come as we move in to the final strategic opportunities. In again, Nick Damon, uh, Harry Tignall and the Proton Porsche. Yep, he's getting a new set of boots this time, and obviously like half a second of fuel as well, but they are putting new tyres on. Uh, Interesting, really. I'm not, I assume they think, well, we're, we're, we're at the back and we'll still be at the back, so let's do something else and still be at the back by the time we've gone past everyone else. Correct. But, um, yeah, they, 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 they haven't they've done a new nose or anything. That nose is still looking scuffed, but still OK. Four tyres on, and away they go. To These cars, when they get cold tyres, just put the power down. They just spin for half an hour. It doesn't produce any smoke or anything. They just sit there because they're not gripping to anything. But he's gone away again now, and uh, that... Is an interesting stop. In fact, the, the Porsche expected to stop twice, which the second didn't, and the way we weren't expected to stop twice, which the nine did. Uh.
hello to Nick Calhoun, who's trackside. His radio's died, but he's standing next to one of Dave Miller's superb speakers, so he's probably listening to us. Either that or he's burning a little bit of... Uh, uh, burning a little bit of data, or he's in his car listening on 98.1 or an XM207. As it stands, he's asked for the GTP points. As it stands, uh, 28.03 for Alex Sims, Alexander Sims, and Pete Durrani is 11 points ahead of the number 10, Philippe Albuquerque and Ricky Taylor. They are in second and third, and to all intents and purposes. It is whichever one of those two finishes first will win the, t the, t the Drivers' Championship. At the moment, Cadillac Racing have the edge on the Manufacturers' Championship in this first year of GTP, courtesy of uh, Renga van der Zander leading the motor race. If we... Anybody who thinks that's going to stay exactly the same as that all the way at the end, anyone? Step forward, anyone? Bueller? No, no. No one thinks that's going to stay like that all the way through till the end. I have no doubt it will change. Uh, let's start. Uh, let's start your thoughts, please, for Michelin Post Race Tech. Hashtag Michelin PRT to at IMSA Radios. We've got a couple of GT cars coming through for a top up. Look like two. Is it a Ferrari and an NSX, or is it two Ferraris? Nick Damon might be able to tell me. I think one of them. I think one of them's a Lamborghini. Oh really? Yes. Tell you how dark it is even on pit lane. I'll tell you what. The, the pink Lamborghini in the dark just becomes a dark Lamborghini, which is called the Iron Dames '83 car. The number twelve, the, re, the reborn uh, Lexus, comes in for a. Uh, Look, mate, it's a few, and behind him, you're absolutely right. It was, it was a Ferrari. I assume it's a recent competition Ferrari in '61. It's coming back at the uh, AF Corsa Ferrari. The AF Corsa Ferrari uh, has come in, uh, and they are just doing full service. I think obviously the, the, the Iron Dames car got out of sync a long time ago, and it's now just uh, really trying to see what it can get back up to. It's not going to challenge the lead, and away it goes the 61. After 35 seconds stage, I think that's what that indication the side tells you. That's the AF Corsa. Here's the AF Corsa. I, I got those two relevant ones. AF Corsa car. AF Corsa it is. A lot of shuffling around in, in the GTD and GTD Pro because number nine car came in to the lead, into the pits in the lead, ahead of number 63 and number 79. They, they leave in order 79 and 9, and the 63 car is back behind... The, uh, the the top three GTD cars, and all of a sudden, Loris Spinelli has vaulted to the lead in the GTD, d despite those two penalties he had, well, only an hour or so ago. So the Forte Racing Power by US Electronics Lam Lamborghini is back into the lead of GTD uh, non-pro, just ahead of the two Porsches. Number 16 car, the right motorsports car, Jan Halen, the winner of that one. Uh, and uh, Seb Prio is right behind him as well. And then it's Mirko Bertolotti in the GTD Pro Lamborghini. So he works his way forward again. BMW XM has powered away with the V8 engine and the hybrid. And we go back to green with an hour and 11 minutes to go. Van der Zander gets the start. All of the starts, Bob, right at the very beginning. The person at the front of the field has been able to get some advantage and take turn one on the optimum line. Matt Campbell in fourth position, looking ahead to Felipe Albuquerque. Albuquerque looking ahead to people Durrani. Durrani with his left-hand indicator going at turn five. I don't think he's going to turn left at turn six, though, so he must have knocked that. Now, could be a bit off-putting. Albuquerque will ignore that. Brake lights on for turn seven. Turn in, take the curb. Getting the tyres back under temperature and pressure. Now on to the curving back straight. First through the little left kink at turn eight. Over the top of the first brow. Now to turn nine. Now, just hearing that after that wave by and everything else, the wins, number 52, got one lap back, but not on the lead lap of LMP2, as Jeremy surmised. So Paul Lubchatan is still one lap away from the top three in LMP2. Yeah, who are nose to tail. Absolutely unbelievable. 
in LMP2. We'll check the point standings for that in just a moment or two, but it's all still happening at the front of the field where Renger van der Zander has pulled out. If, well, it's, it's not much of a cushion, maybe just a small lumbar support, actually. As you get in the back of the X um, BMW, rather, ni rather nice to have that in the back seat. 31, Pete Mutterani, Philip Albuquerque, right on his tailpipes. Half a second further back, Matt Campbell, top four within two seconds. And a second of that is the gap between first and second. Yeah. Down the back straight then, down towards turn number 10. There's a bit of a, a gap between before they get to the back of the field. And the first car that they will come upon is a singleton car at the moment. It is the Dorian Pan driven Iron Dames Lamborghini Huracan. And she's just coming to turn five now as the leaders go uphill, turning right to turn one. Wow, this is a good restart by Renger van der Zander. Yeah. He's had his Weetabix. Other breakfast cereal are available. Is available. There's a good, great battle going on also in LP3, by the way. Those uh, three leaders covered by a couple of seconds. Number 74 car has got himself into the lead. Now he was leading before that yellow as well. Just had number 30 and the number 13 car. It's Felipe Fraga in wheel number 74. Garrett Grist right behind him. And then Matt Bell right behind him in the AWA Duquesne, number 13. Hello to Chris Lemon, who's tuned in. He said, why the yellow flag length? Trying to watch with new people. Well, it's down to the fact that we've got five classes out there, Chris. And if you don't do the wave buys and the pass around, you disadvantage the, the cars that aren't in the lead lap and you ruin their race. It's happened at Le Mans before. Le Mans have adopted the same pr principles now as we have here in IMSA. Otherwise, the race is over before it starts if somebody gets caught out between the safety car and their leader, they lose the lap immediately. It is a function of trying to mitigate the intervention of the safety car. And unfortunately, none of the, well, all of the safety cars have been absolutely required today. Race Control have done their best to stay green, but uh, I don't think there's been anything that's even been marginal, to be honest through the final corner for the number 79, Daniel Hukadea. WeatherTech Racing Mercedes scraping the left front edge of the splitter on the ground with the Porsche in behind, Faf Motorsport, Kevin Estra with the glow from the transverse mounted mufflers underneath yeah. the rear of that car. More sparks from the WeatherTech car. Danny Ungadea over the top of the curbs at turn five. What a run this is for Faf Motorsports. Their last run as a Porsche team going to McLaren next year. Loris Spinelli and Jan Heerlen are having a bit of a scrap too in the Lamborghini and the Porsche for GTD on us. And that LMP2 battle. Christian Rasmussen and Ben Hanley yeah. have now pulled away from Josh Pearson. Yeah, Ben Hanley got past Josh Pearson uh, uh, after the restart, is now chasing uh, Christian Rasmussen. So uh, those two are having a super battle for the, the lead in LP2. And uh, Philippe Fraga in LP3 got about a second over Garrett Grist at the moment. And a whole bunch of people just said in their best laps of the race, including uh, Matt Bell in the third place LMP3 car number 13. Danny Yukadela just said his best lap, but uh, Kevin Estra right behind him, he kind of a nine, said his best lap. Uh, Seb Prio, who's running right behind Jan Halen, he just said his best lap in this race, as did Trent Hinman and Robbie Foley, just a couple of positions further back in GTD. So uh, the uh, the wick has very much been turned up now into GTD battle. Right. And, and, and Mirko Bortolotti, by the way, John, having been so fast earlier on, uh, having lost, lost some ground during that round of pit stops, hasn't managed to get past either of those two Porsches uh -huh. ahead of him, either Seb Prio, who's directly in front of him, or Jan Halen, directly in front of him. Hello to our international audience in Europe, in Portugal, where it is just after half past one in the morning. 
and Joao Borges supporting Philippe Albuquerque with some friends there still awake. Last hour is going to be difficult for the nerves, but let's go. He says at the moment it is Wheel and Engineering, the Action Express run car of people to Rani that has the upper hand in that battle between the two championship protagonists. And hearing from Gradient, thank you, Declan, for all your help this year as well. The 66 Catherine leg issue was a gearbox. They are out. It will not be coming back. A somewhat ignominious end then to a promising programme, it has to be said. When the car has been at the right track, it has been quick. And Catherine Legg has worked her usual magic. Sheena Monk coming on leaps and bounds this first season in GT3. Here comes Albert Kirk in behind the leader, goes left, goes right, uh, in behind the 31, rather, and Pete Durrani through the first corner. Now up the hill. My goodness, that was very close indeed. And the top four are still only separated by three and a half seconds with Matt Campbell holding only a three-tenths of a second gap between Connor De Filippi. The two BMWs coming back to life now, Jeremy, in fifth and sixth place for Filippi, De Filippi and Augusto Farfus. That's exactly right. And, uh, and Colin Brown right with them as well. A big, long train there. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and uh, seventh positions. Nothing to choose between any of them last time around. And Albuquerque, yeah, he was only a less than two tenths of a second as they crossed the line behind Durrani. That's the battle, of course, for the championship. Almost ran into the back of people as they went into turn one. People picked the right hand side, stuck to it. Albuquerque weaving one way, then the other. The windward car at the moment just slowing down the Acura as it went under the Fox factory bridge. Down through 12th, oh, great run here. Looks like Durrani's been held up a little bit. He's in the draft. Which way will he go this time? He goes to the outside, the left-hand side. They're side by side. This is the battle for the championship. And they're on the grass. And, and off goes off. the number 10. And that's it. The championship is over at this point. The number 10 is off. And Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Global will not capture the championship. We've seen this in turn one before. And Philippe Albuquerque in the... Blue glow of the interior lighting. We've gone to full course yellow. Went for the outside manoeuvre. He tried at the lap before and couldn't get alongside. He did get somewhere alongside. Wasn't enough. That'll be down to race control. Wayne Taylor, eyes closed. Knows that the championship has disappeared at this point with just on an hour and two minutes to go. Fourth year in a row for Wayne Taylor racing with Andretti Global. And, well, even if there is a penalty for the 31 car, it's not going to put the number 10 back on the track. And Conor De Filippi and Nick Yellowly move up into second place as it stands right now. A slightly smoking number 10 car with the heat from the front brakes. And a somewhat anticlimactic end to the championship race. Yeah, no love lost between those two teams, is there, of course. And number 10 car, yeah, I mean, it's in a vulnerable position on the outside of turn one there. And uh, Pipo Durrani was having absolutely none of that. The good news is that Philippe Albuquerque is out of the car. He's just being seen to by the AMR safety crew, best in the business. Thank you, ladies and gents. Been very busy today, rather too busy. And well, both cars were held up at the end of the lap, but there was an opportunity to come round the outside. Pushed him straight off the racetrack. You've got to leave a guy room on the outside. I mean, they're absolutely alongside going into that corner. You have to leave him. Uh, a car's width, and he didn't. Look, bam, straight off the road. 
the racing line takes you out there. Of course it does, but you've got a, a guy alongside you on the outside and the, the, you're supposed to leave a car's width, aren't you, when there's a guy on the outside of you? Well, he's ahead. The, the, number this, 10 car is slightly ahead. Well, he's ahead there's a he contact bang. Down. There's the contact. Is, I, I think there's three quarters of a car's width there before the... I, I would like to call it. I would not like to call it. No? No. I mean, I, you know, as you say, a penalty is, is, doesn't a, make any it's difference. It's irrelevant. Um, he had his nose in his head. Uh, Pipa Drani knew exactly where they were. Uh, mm. he, he knew exactly that... Uh, he, he's not going to say he didn't see him. Um, and he just uh, drove him out towards but the where, uh, Where's the Durrani meant to go at that point? Tighten his line? Yeah. Oh, well, but you can't because he's on the ragged edge, Jeremy. Yeah, of course Physics he is. won't allow you to. No, of course you won't. No, that's exactly so, right. So, uh, you know... But when the guys are at, uh, alongside you and actually with a, with a nose ahead... Uh, you're supposed to be able to go through there yeah. side by side. That's the uh, that's a heavy, heavy impact there, of course, for Durrani, for uh, Albuquerque. Helped away for Philippe Albuquerque. Never like to see that. No. The incident is being uh, investigated. Uh, it happens um, all the time, doesn't it, with these guys at the front? And, you know, uh, the problem is, I... yeah, the, the, they're allowed a lot of latitude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's, uh, I just think it's. Yeah. The championship's on the line in an hour's yeah. time. Yeah. I'm well, not sure you put yourself at risk around the outside yeah, at no. that point. Yeah, but how many chances are you going to get? That's the thing. And you, you have to respect the guy you're racing with and assume he's going to give you um, some racing room. Which he, if, which if, he that was, if that was the last lap, I, I wouldn't argue with you. Yeah. But you've got, a, you got another pit stop and yeah. an hour yeah. to go. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. Um, I could see it being a no call. I could see it being yeah, called absolutely. against the, the 31. I, I, I don't think that there's any way that you can blame Albuquerque for that. He was going very quickly. The question will be, do you think he would have made turn one yes. anyway? Yes. And, and that that's the only thing. And race control will will be looking at much more than we have. Yes. And, and we're going through the process of, of thought process. We've got an accomplished race racers up in race control as well as people who know the regulations exactly. It's complete desolation on the pit wall at Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Global. And you know it's a year's work, isn't it? It's a, it's more than that. Yeah. It's more than that because the preparation would have started this time last year for this season. And this is this is not a call that is is as obvious as it might look. And sometimes, you know, it's like in soccer. Sometimes two pe two players come together, one falls over. It's not always a foul. It isn't always a foul, and that's the case. Heavy penalty earlier on for. The Dennis Anderson car, a minute and 20 seconds, uh, sorry, two minutes, um, 120 seconds. Instant uh, under review, of still course. Still under review, yeah. Now, what the other thing we're doing now, Jeremy, is that when the pits open, we are inside the window for the GTP cars to get to the end of the race. Yes, so they so will all be in. They will all come in. Um, how far back in the championship is Matt Campbell? Um, because one of the two cars he's got to get by the, in the championship is in the wall. The other one could well be facing a penalty. I'm not saying will or won't, but it's being looked at. So that's the 31 car at the moment camped out at the top of the championship standings. What about the number well, seven Porsche? Well, and, and the number 25 And the BMW, 25 BMW, that's BMW that's that, absolutely. That, this, this brings that car right back in the picture because uh, Di Filippi uh, came into this weekend with a 35-point uh, edge over the number seven uh, Porsche is now just one position behind him, which is just a 20-point uh, a 20 point, 20 point gap. So as it stands now, Alexander Sims and people Durrani have a 76-point lead over Conor de Filippi and Nick Yellowly. Next up is the, uh, I was going to say parked, but actually hanging in the air, being recovered, number 10. Our thoughts with Philippe Albuquerque, let's hope he's OK uh, they are 91 points back. And then I think after that, it will be that number seven, Felipe Nasser and Matt Campbell car. Well, we said stranger things have happened. 
and strange things have happened. Bit of uh, work to be done to repair the tyre barrier at that crucial part of the circuit as well. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch. Hashtag Michelin PRT for our post-race tech. That'll be on RS2 IMSA Radio for the final time this year. And your thoughts on that incident. Both cars held up and then Albuquerque round the outside. Where was the initial touch? Uh, was it in the middle of the road? It might have been, you know. No, just drove uh, off the road. I'm not saying... He, uh, uh, definite contact. Albuquerque very wide and very fast. Wayne Taylor deflated. And for an incredible fourth time. The championship seems to have been snatched away in the last knockings of the season. Yeah, so uh, points as they stand right now, I reckon. Uh, uh, 28.03 for number 31 Correct. car. 27.27 uh, for the BMW. 27.12 for the number 10 car, which is where it will finish. And 27.11 for the uh, number seven car. So number seven car, just one point behind the number 10 as they are right now. But uh, with a, uh, a, a, you know, a clear edge now, of course, for number 31 car. So this is a big call from race control uh, that has to make. The race control looking at all of the angles they'll be looking at the onboard footage they'll be looking at some of the sensors that they have in terms of they'll be able to see if either of them were going faster at that point or slower at that point than they had in previous laps steering angle etc this is what I call the, the modern way of driving Rather than I'm old, I'm old school. Hey, I put my hand up. Absolutely, you know, it's, I'm not the one who's paying multi millions of dollars to uh, to put cars on a racetrack. So uh, you know, my um, sentiments go back you know, on the old days, and um, I like to see clean side by side racing without one driver pushing another one off the road. Tom Backler at IMSA Radio has said, uh, all year long this move has been shown as acceptable in IMSA. Yeah, uh, this exactly. is the result. This That's is the same exactly as the move for the LMP3 win at CTMP. There was no further action. Yeah, we've had, we had it here a couple of years ago, we didn't did. we? With, um, wasn't it the same, was it the same two cars? Or same two drivers? No, it was Ricky Taylor and, was that Ricky Taylor and Pippa Durano? Uh, yes. Yeah. There will be a large reordering. Uh, Earl Bamba was involved, wasn't he? A couple of, uh, that, uh, that one as well, or was that another one? Well, we exactly we've yeah. had a whole bunch of close finishes in this championship, that's for sure. Some reordering to be done further down the field uh, in terms of the GTD field. Uh, from the number 27, Roman De Angelis. So that is happening. Under review, uh, it, we may not get a... may not get word of any penalty or not until after the restart. In fact, I'd be surprised if we do. Good point. So don't think that race control are slacking there. They may have already got a decision, but they can take this time. This is good. In some respect. Meanwhile, in, in LMP2 land, that battle was still continuing. Christian Rasmussen was hanging on to that lead ahead of Ben Hanley. 
Still does so. Number 18 car ahead of the number 04. And number 35 car of Josh Pearson. Josh Pearson. Oh, well, they got the LMP2 cars, of course. They've got to make one more pit stop before the end of this race. Ricky Taylor and Philippe Mendoza. As well. Thanks, David Riley. Same corner, championship, uh, same teams, of course. The last lap lunge. Uh, it was Ricky Taylor that went down the inside of uh, Philippe Nasser. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Pedantic squirrel uh, said, I hate this modern way of driving too, just like Jeremy. Just shoving people off the, off the track. Uh, on the other side of it, the unskillable K-West says, well, you talk about old school racing. When you go back, there was a lot of people pushing each other the, off the track conveniently. And these type of incidents have become normalised, says Liam Talks Motorsport. Any other form of motorsport, that would be a penalty. Uh, Michael Gurley said, surely, either way, when you're going like that into a corner, the driver on the inside has to have the right of way, so it's people's call. It is. Absolutely people's call. Completely agree. Dave Reid, tough one to call. Ten was overlapping a bit. Could make it a penalty. 31 should have been well aware he was there. Ryan says a good time to mention the 120 stop and go again. Yeah, we have. Uh, also, Anthony Florio. Hello, Anthony. Uh, Alex says Albuquerque on the outside. Took way too much speed on the dirty part of the track. So that was a big enough incident yeah. there to actually not just move, but knock over the concrete K rail there. Hearing from track services, it could be another 10 minutes uh, behind the safety car to get that put right. You can't leave that like that, clearly. Yeah. One car's already gone off, and it is a high-speed part of the circuit. Yeah. There's no room to extend there either because there's a, a drop off at the back of that. And if I remember, there's a little there's a little creek uh, stream there, and creek. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Joe Bradley's rejoined us at pit in, and we'll go through to the end of the race. Post race tech's going to be uh, a little bit uh, <laughs> lively. Our Michelin post race tech show live on IMSA Radio RS2. Uh, we'll sum up the weekend, the season, and anything you want to talk about. The original. Uh, audience based radio show and it's live you've got a question to point to rising or indeed just want to vent quite happily have that as well Ivan Chambers I think sums it up pretty good thank you Ivan for this no one wants to see a championship decided like that doesn't really matter who's at fault at this point Philippe A OK being OK is the most important yeah. thing. Two very good points there, Ivan. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Colby Payne going for the move by Albuquerque there. Very aggressive with an hour to go. Driving standards, says Brian Dawkins, should be addressed. Haven't we seen this too many times in IMSA? Yeah, and you know, there's been a fair, fair bit of talk around the paddock also in the, in the Michelin Pilot Challenge, to be fair, but uh, some of the drivers feeling that too many drivers are getting too many getting away with too many liberties, and um, some of them would like to would like to race control to stamp down a bit harder. But then, you know, race control, I think, has has, a, has made a fantastic point. You know, that race like you want to be raced is a, is the way that Bo Barfield always used to say, and you know, it's up to you guys to respect each other. Um, Bo Barfield. Eh racer himself absolutely and to a, a pretty high standard yeah, as an, well an excellent ra race director no 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 question in my mind at all um and um yeah he he will he will he basically he only wants to step in when there's something really egregious uh, and i respect that um and i know there's you know, there's a few drivers who who have felt aggrieved uh and 
they don't get the the justice they feel they feel is deserved. But um, then again, you know, the, it, it, lightning strikes. Things things happen both ways. It takes two to tango. It takes two to crash, often, and sometimes it uh, just gets a bit out of out of hand. Well, Hayes, we've had both sides. Hayes won in the middle. Uh, in my opinion, a racing incident, says Ben, at Ford Sunfire. Both going for a move that probably wasn't going to work. It was definitely going to work. Uh, uh, well, he, he was definitely going to make the corner. Let's go to Joe Bradley uh, down in the pit lane, who reminds us that our driver uh, standards... Uh, uh, direct effectively is Elliot Forbes Robinson, the inaugural uh, ALMS champion in 1999. Joe? Can you remember a Rolex a few years ago where I think it was going into the very last lap of the race and it was Philippe Albuquerque involved as well and Ricky Taylor went down the inside into turn one yeah. and there was a coming together and we all thought, oh, and, and I think Taylor contacted Albuquerque and Albuquerque uh, half spun, or, or I can't really remember exactly what, but Ricky Taylor went through and won the race. So um, we were all speculating what was going to happen, have we got a penalty for contact, and he came round, he took the flag and he took the win, did uh, Ricky Taylor. Um, and then after the race, we were all at Marion's for a, a coffee, and I, there was Elliot Forbes Robinson, so I, I went and sat with him and I said to him, what, what was the rationale um, behind no penalty? It was 2017, I'm being reminded. Um, and he said, and this is what he said, this was, this was Elliot Forbes Robinson, remember, the inaugural American Le Mans Series champion back in 99. And he said, it's the final lap, going into the final lap of the Rolex 24. And if you leave the door open and you don't expect someone to come through it, then it's down to you. And he put that down as a complete, he put that into the context of what it was for. And it, it's a kind of similar one, you could say. Yeah, no, all right, not exactly going into the final lap, but going into the final hour. It's very, it's very similar in so many ways. But um, you know what? You'll, you'll ask, you, you'll get a 50-50 split of opinion if you were to put it to a poll as to who was at fault there. Uh, if you asked, uh, if you asked uh, three drivers, uh, yeah. you'd probably get four three. opinions. Yes, you would. Yeah, um, absolutely. From from that. Um, I'm pleased I don't have to make the call. We watched it as it was happening. There was definitely some contact, uh, but the rest of it, I can't uh, tell you because we don't know. And we will uh, let you know. Uh, in the meantime, by the way, uh, um, can I just check, by the way, uh, with our pit lane guys, as the GTP pits have just opened and we'll get a flurry, we'll get all the cars in. Uh, is Matt Campbell still in the number seven uh, Porsche Penske Motorsport? Uh, because I'm, uh, he's been in there for quite a while, if he has. He's still showing that on my timing screen. Uh, I'm going to check another timing screen in a moment. Yes, he's show, showing on both. Dick Damon, I think you watched that stuff. Yeah, you? I haven't seen him get out. OK, um, thank but, you. Uh, yeah, but uh, he must be... What's, what's the maximum drive time? Is, is there one? Four uh, hours and four, six. Four hours and any six. Uh, OK, right. Yeah. It's not a That's the one that normally right. catches people out. Yeah, he, he got into the car uh, at uh, seven hours into the race. Where are we now into the race? Where's the... Uh, so two hours and 17 minutes, I reckon, he's been at the wheel of that car. Well, that's uh, invigorated the social media, by the way. Uh, this is a standard yellow now, so the pits have opened for any prototypes. Uh, still waiting for word of the decision. I'm not saying the decision has to be made there. That is a major distinction. I think we might wait until we go back to green for that to be announced uh, but Renger van der Zander will have the first opportunity to come into the pit lane and he does hang on who stayed out ah that's the zero one staying out Va van der Zander has stayed out what is that surely he doesn't think he can go to the end from here and even if he can he'll be on all tyres so Durrani 
Campbell, Conor de Filippi, Augusto Farfus, all in the pit lane. Also staying out, Maya Shank Racing's Acura, Harry Tinknell's brought on Porsche, and JDC with Mike Rockefeller. Let's go down to the pit lane, Nick Damon. So we got both the, oh, well, yeah, the, um, the, the seven car has already been in and gone. That has the 24 and the 25. So they've taken short fills for the 24, 25, and the seven. A longer fill for the 31, which would have joined at the end, but they've been caught by a, but they've been caught by a red light at the end. So they're all waiting now on a red light. At the pit, pit exit, but those four, those three car, four cars that came in, and they roll out now with the Whelan car actually in third of that, that of that list, the Porsche leading. No tyres for the for the two BMWs and the Porsche, and I only saw two tyres being wheeled away from the 31 pit stop. Right. Well, let's see if we can find out what happened there because that's very interesting indeed. That was just the a time stop to be absolutely certain on the fuel, and they bunk tyres on whilst that was happening, probably a pair, um, and made sure they got pick, uh, position coming out of the pit lane. So people to Rani uh, is going to come out fifth when we reorder the field. Meantime, Joe Bradley was watching the LMP2 stops. Yeah, both the uh, first and second place is what I could see. So the all four, the crowd strike car, Ben Hanley came in, took on fuel and tyres. Meanwhile, just behind them, the number 18, the era car, Christian Rasmussen, the current uh, Indy Next champion, has took that car now and will uh, take it to the flag. So both very, very orderly, very disciplined and, and very on it. And it's going to be a cracking battle in LMP2 all the way to the flag. Thank you, Joe. And Nick, uh, well, so that Cadillac that is leading has had, I reckon, three, six, nine, ten laps of green flag is all that the Cadillac that is leading has had. The rest of its stint, Jeremy, has been under yellow. So that's going to be uh, pretty much the same for Colin Brown, for Harry Tinknell and for Mike Rockenfeller. And they might have... They might be happy to gamble with the fact that... Well, the number 60, 59 and 5, they came in... Right at the end of the last yellow. Not that they came in when the pits were opened in the last yeah, yellow. Yes. But the other guys didn't, as you say. They, they, they were in uh, several laps uh, uh, prior to that. Into the pit lane for the Winwood number 57, Mercedes AMG from GTD. And that. Joe Bradley. Yeah, looks like fuel and right rear tyre only on this Mercedes. Ah, now they've, now they've gone to the left. There's, um, yeah, uh, sorry, it's uh, it's both rear tyres. So first they did the right, then they did the left. They've got plenty of time under this yellow, by the way. It's not as dynamic as you would normally think, and that's kind of struck me as a little bit, uh, a little bit off. They've got a little bit of frontal damage that they are taking time to repair. Whilst they're taking, whilst the, and that's the reason, isn't it? Because they haven't got as many crew members. Because two crew members are fixing the front. The uh, the tank tape comes out, the gaffer tape, big sheet of it across the top to keep the bonnet down. And it's all four tyres on the 57 car. The 57 Mercedes now just coming to the end of its pit stop. And plenty of time because it'll get, uh, come out of the pits and remove that uh, tank tape they've pulled off the car. They don't want that to be run over. Yep, it's kicked to the side by the mechanic. Comes off the jacks and it'll uh, stand by for the sound bite. Spinning Mercedes the AMG GT. It was spinning the wheels. Going to get a penalty. And some of the tape has fallen off. That was, that was the old stuff, John. Oh, okay. No worries. Uh, LMP2 wins 52, Keating and Paul Luke Shatner, 1975. Uh, George Kurtz and Ben Hanley, 17 points behind in second place as it stands right now. Did the, did the Porsche out of its pit box hit the outside wall when it braked for the red light at the end of pit lane, Nick Damon? The number seven car see it do that but uh, they were all a bit again crumpled up um, uh, together with each other for no discernible reason they seem to be very surprised by the red light we're not quite sure why uh, and also the wheeling car luckily this time wasn't the first car out so I actually saw other cars stopping first so it didn't just blow straight through yeah. uh, actually they were reordering uh, the cars I think the kind of Philippe BMW has been placed ahead of uh, people 
to Rani. So the order yeah. coming to the restart, and this is crucial. And this will yeah. affect the points as it stands. Renga van der Zander did stop and therefore leads for the 0-1 Cadillac. In second, Colin Brown, Myershank Racing, Acura 06, didn't stop, second place. Harry Tinknell, brought on competition Porsche number 59, the white weather tech car, didn't stop, third place. Fourth place, Mike Rockefeller, didn't stop. JDC Miller Motorsports, Porsche 963, uh, the number five bright yellow car. Then of the stoppers, Matt Campbell for Porsche Penske Motorsport. We think he took two tires. It was very, very quick indeed. If he did, then it's the 24 BMW Team RLL M Hybrid V8, and then it's Conor De Filippi in the similar car. 24 from 25. People Durrani down in eighth position, the last of the running cars in the GTP category. Got the 52 back into the pit lane here for Paul Loop Shannon, Joe Bradley. So in, in, in typical style, John. I've, uh, I'm at completely the other end of the pit lane. Uh, but he I did see him go by, and now they've pulled out off the apron, so they're back it. So it looks like a very, very quick one. Maybe a top off a of fuel. That's exactly what it was. And yeah, of course, the 88 came in as well. Uh, they're off the lead. Uh, no, they are not. The 52. Ah, that's why. Sorry. The 52. Ha, that's why the 52 didn't come in. They're back on the lead lap. That's why they've just come in now. Correct. Uh, and uh, that is why it was the crowd strike car we were talking about before. So back on the lead lap and fueled to the end for Paul Loop Chatan in LMP2. Yeah. So that battle is still on for not only. Uh, the championship, but also the invitation to Le Mans for the best of the non-pro drivers. We're going to go green, I reckon, next time by, uh, and we'll have about 30 minutes to go. And as the points stand right now, unofficially, it'll be 27.13 points for number 31 car, 27.12 for number 10 car, which causes out of the race. Yeah. Um, 20... 687 for number 25 BMW, 2681 for number 60 car, 2671 for number 7 Porsche. <laughs> so if the BMW was somehow to win, it could still win the championship. If the uh, yeah. If if the if, if the, the BMW can pick up if Durrani picks, if Durrani pick picks up, three, up a big penalty here, he needs to pick up 30 points, so he needs to move up three places. One, two, yeah, basically, yeah. If Durrani picks up, I mean, a his big teammate will let him go. That's not a, that's not an issue. Right, uh, and then he needs to pass one or other of the other cars uh, and still keep the number 31 car back there. If Durrani gets a big penalty and loses the lead lap, then the door is open for the BMW. Yes. Or of course. What you might get is, as we had in the Mission Pilot Challenge yesterday... Wait a minute, so for scratch, I, I, forgot 20, I forgot the number zero one card, didn't I? Oh, yeah, Excuse yeah, of me. You did. Who's That's on 27.03. Right. So uh, he's now uh, 10 points behind number 31 card. Here's another replay. Right. And then it's, I just have to push him off the road. Let's go to Joe Bradley. So we've been, uh, we've been doing some inquiries, and if I could have permission to uh, consult my pocket notebook... Um, the were the notes made contemporaneously, uh, Yes, they were, Your Honour. Do, um, do, do put it in front of the court. All right. Um, the 16 and the 70 had a good to the end. The 80, a bit of a question mark. They may need another yellow. Um, I said, well, this is, a, this is a good yellow, but as you said, John, we're about to go green, so maybe they need, maybe they need another one, or maybe they don't. Um, so it's very, very tight. But 16, 78, they're OK. They're going to go at the end. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Joe Brady. That's the GTD situation. Jan Hillen and Seb Prio going to the end. From race control, as we're about to go back green, the incident between people to Rani and Philippe Albuquerque has been reviewed. No action taken. No action taken. So the race continues with people to Rani in eighth position and. And then this is going to be all about where the BMWs finish at the moment. They are, I think, the only cars that can overhaul them, but they'd have to stay back there. We go green, and immediately the race is back on. 30 minutes to go. Renga van der Zander 
heads off into the night and he's been overtaken I think by the number 60 of Colin Brown yes he has Colin Brown got through straight off the start uh, in the Acura ARX 06 that was a great restart by Colin the BMW is trying to fight their way through at the moment up to turn number six and Colin Brown for by Shank Racing got the drop got the whole shot at the beginning of the race and Renger van der Zander remember neither of those cars stopped they stayed out on the circuit and 60 is now two points away from the championship lead but of course there can't be any bigger gap because Durrani can't fall down any further so they will come up short by two points if it was to end now great restart for Colin Brown jinked to the inside left his braking super late and somehow did get into the apex of turn one almost tripped over the back of the 0-1 Cadillac Colin Brown you absolute superstar so Durrani leads by a single point over the Albuquerque and Taylor number uh, 10 car. No, he's just actually made up uh, one position, so he's right, just got so that past Augusto change. Farfus, yeah. Uh, number, the, uh, the BMW has exchanged positions, 25 moved ahead of 24, but also the 20, 31 car critically moved ahead of the 24 car. So I, I, I don't think because of the cars that are left running, Jeremy, I, I actually don't unless unless Pete or Durrani loses a position and finishes eighth they would lose some points there that's the only way that they can't win the championship those 35 points in, for pole position yesterday could be absolutely crucial however if there is another incident or if Augusto Farfus can get back in front of the wheel and engineering Cadillac in the next 28 minutes Yeah, I mean, if when uh, briefly there, when Colin Brown got past Renger van der Zander, that would have put that brings him on to 27 11 points to the 27 12 of number 10 car, 27 13 Correct. of the 31. But number 31 car has just yeah. moved up, gained a position, uh -huh. so has gained 10 more points. <laughs> How ridiculous would that have been? One point between first and second, one point between second and third. It's so not going to end that way. Pepo Durrani needs to finish eighth. Um, and, well, actually, it's more about where Conor De Filippi finishes, isn't yes. it? Yes. Conor De Filippi needs to make up a couple of positions here. Uh, I was going to say, of course, um, the Mission and Pilot Challenge yesterday was decided by a team not in the championship fight deciding to pull over and give a pr their preferred team the championship victory so i don't see that happening here because there's three porsches ahead of the bmw and i can't see that happening if there were bmws that might be something different but if uh, conor de Filippi did get ahead of those three foot Porsches and people to Rani didn't, then BMW could still nick the championship. This is bonkers. This is absolutely bonkers. We're into the last 26 minutes of the championship season for 2023. And we still are no clearer. It's pretty much sorted unless something extraordinary happens. Yeah, the, the manufacturer championship, however, uh, at the moment, still, even with uh, if uh, if they stay as they are right now, uh, Cadillac would still be on top uh, on uh, 3096 to 3080 of Porsche and 3076 of Acura. So the Action Express wheel and engineering car in seventh position at the moment is in championship winning position provisionally it's still post race technical i'm not prepared to call anything this weekend the way things have gone 
And he'd been caught out a couple of times by that already. Now that said, not even a post-race penalty here, I think could chase change unless they were put to the back of the scoring line and therefore behind the two cars that are out of the race in terms of GTP. That, I think, is the only thing now. Yeah, that so that'd, be, that'd be a technical infraction. Yeah, then, technical infraction like or a drive time, which, you know, that would put them to the back of their group as well. Yeah. Uh, that, to me now, is the only thing that can deny Action Express Wheel and Engineering. The yep. championship. Yep. In meanwhile, at LP2, Ben Hanley got out of the pits ahead of Christian Rasmussen's number 04 crowd strike by APR. The car of Ben Hanley now leads the era most foot car of Christian Rasmussen. Uh, and those two are separated by about a second. The 35 car in third position and Paul Lupchata back on the lead lap, but a little ways back here for PR1 Matheson in fourth. GTT draw. the championship to the zero 04 car, wouldn't it? Yeah. And in LP3, Philippe Fraga, number 74 car, leads by less than a second over Garrett Grist, four tenths of a second as they flash across the line this, now. Yes. Uh, in the uh, 74 ahead of the number 30, and Matt Bell is about four seconds behind it in third position, number 13. Daniel Hunkadella leads GTD Pro by half a second from Kevin Estra. That battle hasn't been resolved yet for the winner of this race. And it's Loris Spinelli uh, versus Jan Heerland by about the same half a second distance for GTD itself. Third place cars in GTD Pro. That's Merkel Bortolotti for Iron Lynx from the back of the grid, remember. And Seb Prio for EL Racing for GTD is just about a second ahead of Wright Motorsports' Trent Hinman in the 77 Volt Porsches last race for a wee while at least as Alan Brynjolfsson is stepping away from his motor racing for a little while. By the way, officially the number 12 has retired. Uh, that was a wee while ago now, but with everything else that was going on, um, I forgot to tell you about the Vassar Sullivan uh, GTD car. Um, I did see it. I could see it being called yep. or not called. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's probably consistent with race control. And look, uh, I'm not going to argue with, with Bo Barfield. I, I, I really like the way he, he calls the races. But uh, to me... Uh, is that the race the way I would want to be raced? No. I think um, is it consistent with what we've seen yes. at this race in particular before? Exactly, and that's the important thing. Race control has to be consistent with its cause, and I, I think that's a, an excellent point. Mika Bandazander hasn't given up, has he? He's oh, back no. within uh, two tenths of a second or three tenths of a second across the line to co complete that 384. Hey, here's, here's something from left field. I think a Porsche's going to win tonight at the front of the field. <laughs> Could well do, yeah. Well, the stranger things have happened. It's a bit of side-by-side -side action with the number 31 of people to Rani now having passed Connor Di Filippi and up to sixth position. So he's put the two BMWs behind him. They are, they were theoretically championship contenders but not really anymore who's this coming into the pit lane with damage at the back i think there's a puncture on the 74 leader. riley car oh my goodness there's still more this is the LMP3 was there contact leader. between these two i think well there's a lot of already going in and then there was contact between first and second in lmp through two three excuse me and continued contact is through when garrett grist there and that's a puncture at the back of the Riley car. That was the battle for the LMP3 lead. And again, side-by-side -side contact that has taken out the left rear tyre on the championship leader. Now, in fairness, there was a mistake by Felipe Fraga. He locked up going into 10 here and went wise. How will that be seen? Yeah, but Garrett Gris came from fairway behind, didn't he? Coming down into the braking area, it looked like. It's going to be interesting. Well, look, you know, that's... And again, this just goes to prove how difficult it is to make these 
clutch and borderline decisions. Harry Tinknell is in third position here in that number 59 car, and uh, last time around he was quicker than the, than the uh, second place car, and he's, he's maintaining his position now ahead of Matty Campbell in the factory car. Yeah, and Paul Loop Shatan, 12 seconds behind a podium position at the moment, but Matthew Vaxvier, yeah, oh, he's another lap for, further back, sorry. He's just put his fastest lap, his car's fastest lap, the racing. And he's another lap further back in the LMP2 battle, which rages on. Ben Hanley now half a second ahead of Christian Rasmussen with the TDS racing Guido van der Garde, number 35. It's the sort of rhubarb and custard car, the red and yellow, eight and a half seconds further back. 19 minutes to go. Hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio for the last post-race tech, Michelin post-race tech of the season. We've got a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. Driving standards, I'm sure, is going to be there. Let's think about the season. And to my broadcast colleagues, let's remember the BDO Nose Strategy Award for this race. We've had 10 hours where I think the best strategy was just don't hit anybody and don't get hit. But has anybody actually managed to do that? Our Porsche keys to the race. Be there in darkness. Look after the tyres and have some at the end. If you're in it, make sure you get the endurance cup points. Well, that has been sorted. Manage the traffic, sort of, but no penalties. That was one of the Porsche keys to the race. We've had a record number of penalties. Yeah, we might not get, quite get to the record number of cautions, hopefully, uh, but we're certainly going to get a record number of penalties. Leader by nine-tenths of a second, Colin Brown. Christian Rasmussen just drops away from his class leader by... No, he's still there, half a second. Or four in the 18. Yeah, what a battle that is. And actually, Young the third... as well, and Estra are only half a second apart now as well for GTD Pro. Yeah, well, that, that's been the, the case for quite a while now. Those two have been uh, nose to tail with the Mercedes ahead of the Porsche. And a bit of a gap back, and that gap is growing back to Loris Spinelli, but Spinelli still leads in GTD in that Forte racing powered by US Racetronics Lamborghini number 78. Uh, Jan Halen actually pulled out a second all of a sudden over Jan Halen. That's the biggest gap he's had for a while. Just being that battle at the front of the GTD profile, just being passed by a slew of prototypes battling for the lead the BMW number 30 uh, 25 has just gone by Danny Junkadea Junkadea under the Fox factory bridge and dropping down the hill with the Faf Porsche right in the wheel tracks there coming underneath us and down towards the first corner 17 minutes to go Estra can steer there but he's not really in all the time he's been there, he's not really been able to challenge. No. But what's he got left in his tyres versus the car ahead? Is this Porsche time or AMG time? What a way it would be to finish for Faf. Start, all the Porsche runners started on the back foot at the Rolex 24 at Daytona with a, a, a loud, loud complaints about the VOPs, which have... It was a brand new car, of course, at the start of the season. And I think it was the, was it the Faf car that came through to fifth position in the end by just staying out of trouble at Daytona? Um, I think it was. What a way to bookend the season. Best Porsche at Daytona, if I'm remembering correctly, and I am doing that from memory. Jeremy's got the... Results that I can see. Yeah, fifth position, yeah. Yeah. And they they drove immaculately. There wasn't a, a mark on the car. In fact, they got the BDO No Strategy Award for that because they were two seconds a lap slower than the rest of the field. Leaving Porsche and becoming a McLaren team for next year. Be nice for them to go out with a win for the GT3R992. 
front of the field. Van der Zander within half a second of Colin Brown, Harry Tinknell now five seconds behind. And a new fastest lap for the car for Porsche Penske Motorsport. Matt Campbell's found some speed, a 1.11.8. Yeah, but even then, he, he only pulled up a, a couple of tenths of yeah. a second over Harry Tickner, who's just done a fantastic job in that Proton number 59 Porsche. Porsche's running in third, fourth, and fifth. The factory car sandwiched by the two privateers. Brilliant. Yeah, That's and the cars, the cars at the front of the field, Brown and... Renga Fantasan, they're doing 11, mid 11s, 11 6 and 11 5, 11 9 from Matt Campbell this time around. Yeah. So that is half a second that he's taken out of Harry Tinknell. This is not over yet. Augusto Farfus puts that car's fastest lap of the race in, but the BMWs have not come off the final restart. We presume it's the final restart, have not come off uh -oh. as quickly and a spin for oh, the number 18 Aero car, second in LMP2 for Christian Rasmussen. Guido van der Gaard has just gone through. There's damage to the rear of that car. It's at the top of turn two. They can't leave that there in the dark. The lights have fired up. Can he get it moving? Are we going to have a five-minute dash? Yellow lights have come on, and it's a full-course yellow. And for the 2023 season, we are finishing with 13 full course yellows. I think 12. Oh, is this the 12th? I think so. Right. And yeah. that should be a fairly quick recovery. The pits won't open. We're, in, we're within 15 minutes of the end of the race, Jeremy. So this will effectively be a short yellow. So there'll be... No pits opening. As soon as that car is moved, we'll be back to green. I reckon we're going to have seven or eight minutes of a run to the flag. This is by no means over. With more mayhem. Well, it, let's get out the black bin liners to collect up the shards of carbon fibre. Yes, you might be able to build a full Super GTP. Hunters, you can have a field day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. <laughs> Let's head down to the pit lane. I want to have a quick word with our team. I know Shea's down there as well, but can only write things at the moment. Uh, Nick Damon and Joe Bradley, our BDO Nose Strategy Award. Uh, we have to award that, and you know how this works. You were with us at, at Daytona. Uh, for the team that uh, has uh, done the best job in terms of teamwork or strategy, Nick Damon, could be any... One, well, one, one, uh, one nomination for all the classes. <laughs> I was going to give it to the 18. Were you? <laughs> yeah, I thought that's well, his you comeback. Still can. Well, it's kind of a bit. Yeah. Well, I suppose that wasn't a strategic mistake, was it? That was just going off. So it was I'm, a fundamental one, yeah, but it wasn't strategic. I, exactly. So I'm going to go strategically for getting themselves in the position to throw it all away with 15 minutes to go for the number 18. Joe Bradley. Well, he's just, he's stolen mine. That was obvious to be two laps down and then be in contention for the win. Can I give it to the um, to the IMSA team as a as a you know an organization? No. 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 For the season that we've had. No. 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 Um, okay then. I'm so gonna, the AT. So the AT. Yeah. I've she's just, standing beside you. Yeah, what she's, is she written well down? she's gonna communicate with the medium of mime. Okay. Um, she's um, um, the right I've got two cars in the top four what does that say? She? G good. Oh, GTD, sorry. Good six, good six good. TD. GTD. Yeah. So the right, right, right have two cars in the top four in GTD. So she's giving it to, to right Motorsport. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Shaw, strategic award. 78 for car. 78. 78. I mean, they had two penalties. Loris not, Spinelli. Not, not that long ago. Started didn't at they? the back as well, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but no. No, that was the other car. Yeah, it was the yeah, other car. Sorry. But uh, it's been a tremendous comeback, and if they could finally get their first win, uh, that would be a real feather in their cap. And that uh, Shane Sender around this team, they've uh, brought on Michael Harvey, of course, massively experienced in all sorts of different teams. We've been with Ganassi fairly recently, and uh, he's adding some structure to that team. They were struggling with the car. In, uh, in practice and, and to a lesser degree in qualifying, but the car has been fast all the way all the way through. They've had at least those two penalties. There might have been even another one earlier on, and they've come back from it all. Uh, David Raleigh has said, I've only just realised how harmful the 
loss of points at Daytona for the MSR number 60 had been. Yeah, absolutely. They, they were championship contenders. No well, one has were... scored more points Correct. than them since Daytona, Jeremy. Correct. That's exactly right. So, they, whilst they I know that... Coming that... into this weekend, uh, they had scored uh, 2,320 2, points, which was uh, uh, 50 more than the, the next best team. And the, which was actually the, the Porsche car, yeah. the, the number six car, that was, was in third position, funnily enough. There was a lot of talk at the time, and I understand about this, uh, about why they were allowed to keep the win, the trophy, and the watches when they broke the rules. And what kind of penalty was that really? Well, David Riley's just answered that. They, they were a championship contending car, and without the points being taken away, they would have been winning the championship in 15 minutes' time or yeah, 10 minutes' time. Quite comfortably. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and so uh, and that, that's, that's the extent of what that that, that points deduction yeah, made. So it, it, it was a good, it was a fair comment, uh, I think. Um, well, well you know, whether, you know, whether the penalty should, should have been more than that, who knows? But but the point is, uh, what a what a great beginning and particularly end to the season. And if they can stay in front for this uh, eight and a half minutes remaining, which we're going to have probably... You're going to bet against Renger van der Zander, though? Um, Harry yeah. Tinknell, nice. Matt Campbell, Mike Rockenfeller. Matt Campbell, I think we put two tyres on that car. And the Porsche has been very good at the start of a stint as well. Yeah, but... Uh, but uh, yeah, and he was doing some good laps there. He, he lost a bit of ground after that previous restart, but much of that was, was in getting past the number five car but then he wasn't really able to reduce the deficits at number 59, even though he set that car's fastest laps of the race. Because the, the best lap for the number 59 car is actually a little bit quicker than the factory car. This is a quality tweet. Hello to Daniel. He says... Uh, sorry, no, it's to... Maybe too quickly. To Blaskols says, I reckon according to your keys to the race, the safety car is actually the only thing that can win now because it's the only one that is actually abided by the keys to the race. Probably led most laps. Well, it's uh, well, what has it? What has it led? It has led 78 laps, which ties yeah, the longest. So it'll be 79 when we come round this time, won't yeah, it? Yeah, that'll be the most. Coming to green this time around with seven minutes to go. That wasn't a bad guess either, was it? Class split has happened. And as they come to the line, it'll be Colin Brown for the number 60 Acura's final race and the MSR's final IMSA race for a wee while. Well, at least a season. I know that uh, they've been talking to other manufacturers for a programme over here. Renge van der Zander for the pride of Cadillac. Harry Tinknell for the pride of Christian Reed, brought on and Porsche. For Matt Cadillac, Campbell. for Cadillac though, the second place will be will be good as long Enough as they can stay the ahead of the Porsche. Yeah. yeah. If well, the question is, surely it'll only be the uh, it's only the Porsche Penske uh, motorsport car they've got to stay ahead of because I don't think Proton or JDC are registered for. Oh yeah, yeah, no man manufacturer in, in this, unlike the World Endurance Championship. Right. Well, so it hasn't actually happened yet, but um, no, I think it's just the manufacturer. Even Never. though there weren't full season entries? A very good question. Coming to green, Jeremy will sort that out. Let's hope, lovely as it is, the hybrid and twin turbo V8 XM is not seen again. Going to be a little under the seven minutes that I predicted. It's going to be about five and a half, maybe as the leader is weaving left and right, coming down towards the left-hander at turn 10A. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure there isn't a distinction between factory and non-factory for manufacturer points, so here we go. On the power early, but not early enough. Renger van der Zand has got the run. There's going to be a dive down at turn one. Oh, the Acura V6 has kicked in and gets a great run off the final corner. 
Van der Zander had a really good punch out of turn 10 B, and I thought surely he was going to be alongside the leader on the restart. There'll be three laps, possibly four, at the end of this one. It will depend when they come around. MSR with the Acura. Will they sign off the this chapter of their IMSA competi competitive history with a victory? Renga van der Zander for Cadillac and for Chip Ganassi. Then the three Porsches. Now, fire for the right Porsche in the back of that car. Second That's it. Place. It's over. It's over. The cars are blazed. We'll finish under yellow unless he can get off the track. No, yellow. the yellow's come out. The yellow's come out. That car is ablaze. He's been into the wall or he's been hit. And it's fractured something in the back of the car. And that will mean it is over. This is the 16 right car, and Jan Halen, who was second, he's out of the car. He's pulling the fire extinguisher. He'll have done the inside one, he's done the outside one. He wants some fire extinguishing on the back of that car. That is a. There's been contact there, Jeremy. And a huge conf conflagration on the back. Excellent work by Halen himself to keep that from spreading to wow. any other part of the car and the that's the 63 car which that is off as well which was the leader in the class no 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 which was directly behind, behind. the Porsche Loris Spinelli no Spinelli no, no, oh, no, no sorry sorry yes sorry 78 car was leading yeah. so that is is this perhaps the cause of that incident this is the Iron Lynx car so there was a side-by-side. -side. The Eel Porsche went off, coming out of turn 10B. There was side-by-side -side between the two Porsches, the Lamborghini, and at least one other car. There's a puncture on the Lamborghini then for the Forte racing car. That's for the Iron Lynx car. That's where that started. Was there another touch on the Porsche, or is, was it just that side-by-side? Side? Ah, it looks like it is the right-hand side that has gone on that car, and then it burst into flames, the right Porsche, and Jan Halen. It's got to be My a fuel rail, hasn't it? Uh, something on the right rear. I think, I think he's got a puncture in the right rear, and that's damaged something under the bodywork. So Halen is in the middle of the scrap, and gets sideswipe on the right-hand side by the Iron Lynx car that then hits the uh, then hits the AO racing car, puts that off the track. Good gracious. Still not really seeing how that all started, but there was a bump up the back. I think the AO racing car must have hit the back of the other Porsche. Yeah. It will be white flag. We've, we've seen that problem here before at Road Atlanta. The, when the green flag comes out, the, 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 G, the, the cars at the back of the, of the pack of cars, i.e. the GTD leaders, uh, they're not yet into the chicane, so they are racing effectively as soon as the green flag comes out. That's one of the things I don't like about uh, this, the, the way things are run here, because if you're not allowed to race until you get back to the start-finish line, that would eliminate that sort of, I think, what happened uh, over there. We've seen that a lot. Happens here, it happens at uh, several other tracks as well. Well, we'll get the white flag this time around, and there'll be two and a half miles more of this race. So the freeze happening? is, the freeze is, is fielded. No, the field is frozen. Uh, and Colin Brown then, and Maya Shank Racing will take the victory they know it elio castro nevis uh, is uh, is congratulating the team he wants to come back to the rolex at the very least and have another go at another watch so elio so much enthusiasm two and a half miles to go renga van der zander's second place will be enough for cadillac to clinch the manufacturers championship in the first year of gtp in LMP2, Ben Hanley for CrowdStrike, which means I think that 
And there's the 52 car, third position. That's going to be tight in LMP2. However, it does mean that George Kurtz will get the invitation to Le Mans because they were all tied up for that particular championship. Uh, 31 Wheel and Engineer and Action Express are the champions provisionally after yep. Prost Race Tech, of course. And the Winston Endurance Cup as well. And the Endurance Cup as well. In LMP2, it is Ben Keating and Paul Loop Shatan who win the championship. But in second place, I think the finish above, and you'll have to tell me about the invitation to Le Mans, Jeremy. I think George Kurtz, by winning the race, because weren't they all identical as they came in for that, I think George Kurtz, from winning the race, will get the, the automatic invitation to Le Mans next year. Jeremy's adding that up at the moment. Yeah, no, I re yeah uh, the number 52 car... Wins the championship. Yeah, 1995 yeah. to 1958 yeah. of the uh, 04 car. German Aiken. Yeah, I think that's going to be... They were all tied up, so... Yeah, they were all tied up, so whoever finishes ahead. Which so is yeah. George, George yeah. Kurtz. Wow. Uh, in LMP3, it'll be Garrett Grist for Junior 3 Racing. Matt Bell didn't get the chance to challenge at the end there for AWA and Philippe Mefraga for Riley. Well, what a 26th running of the mortal 24 hours of Le Mans. Untidy, controversial, incident-packed. Racing was good when we had racing. The longest run we had was just over an hour. But taking the chequered flag for the final time in 2023 and the first GTP winner at the 20... 23, Le Mans, excuse me, Petit Le Mans, will be MSR. Joe Bradley is with us celebrating Elio Castro Neves and Mike Shank. We are right on the wall, John. Everybody standing on the wall. Mike Shank, can't believe it. Mike, what a way to, to end this chapter of Mike Shank racing in sports cars. You've, you've, I mean, you're all right. We'll let you go wherever you're going to have to come back. Fabulous. I, I, I don't, I don't even know what to say right now. The, the crap this team's been through this year. Got to thank Acura and all the, the crew and drivers. And uh, it, it's, it's too much. It's just too much. Congratulations, Mike. What a, what a fabulous. He got really emotional there, guys. Um, and now Helio. Where's Helio? I'm just looking for a Zebedee-like character bouncing around. Here's Tom. Let's grab Tom. Let's get in here. Tom, congratulations, mate. You guys have done it. What a great way to end for the team. Oh, man, it's fantastic. I mean, what a topsy-turvy, right? That race was full of everything. I mean, yeah, my last thing, I thought we were done there, you know, and, man, the guys just... This team is incredible, incredible. I mean, you know, I think after losing those 200 points, I think we're only, like, 10 or 12 or whatever it was off the lip weed. So, you know, this team is the best best in the business at the moment and uh yeah i mean you know my every single one of these guys deserve it and good things happen to good guys so uh yeah there's a reason we get these results we wish you all the very best in indycar but i know you're going to come back for the big ones congratulations tom thank you i appreciate it just down the uh, pit lane with the overall champions and the endurance champions <laughs> alexander uh, fantastic and, and what a way to sign off with uh, this team yeah it's been an incredible year um yeah, it's, it's pretty mad to think that uh, we've wrapped it up. Crazy race, as you expected, as we expected coming into this, but um, it's such a roller coaster. But uh, yeah, just so proud of the, the, the job that everyone's done. Pipo and Jack have done an insane job all year long. Um, really felt like I've been the third wheel of it, just to do my solid job each time and, and bring the car in and, and let them get in the car and do the job. But uh, team's been flawless, so many good pit stops. Um, yeah, so, so proud of everyone. Jack, he's no third wheel, is he? Absolutely not. Uh, he really underplays himself, as always. I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure working with everybody. And, um, yeah, it, it, this is the championship that everyone deserves. How nervous was that final hour, especially because it was a chance that people might have got a penalty for the incident with Felipe? Yeah, I think we were extremely nervous, not only for that, but for the way the final pit stop played out. 
Uh, Pivo really had to win that one on track, you know, the way the BMWs were working together. So he did an amazing job and uh, pulled it out when he needed to. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you, guys. Congratulations now. GD Pro with Joseph. Shield going on, Maro Engel. Uh, GD Pro winners of Petit Le Mans 2023. Fabulous. Shield, start with you. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Thanks to AMG, to WeatherTech, to Proton, to my two teammates, Danny and Maro. It was fuck. I don't want to curse because in the hotel yesterday they told me to not curse, but it's fucking amazing. <laughs> I'm very sorry for the language, Maro. Maro, um, it's a topsy-turvy race. When did you even start believing you could win this? Oh man, I mean, it was up and down. You know, we were in the lead and then drive through back all the way to the back. But like Jules said, uh, big thanks to, to Mercedes AMG, to WeatherTech who made this program possible. What an endurance season it's been for, for these guys also winning the endurance championship. Um, unfortunately, I had to miss around. So uh, yeah, but it's been it's been amazing. Um, big big thanks to everyone. Well done, guys. WeatherTech Mercedes GD Pro winners of Petit Le Mans. Uh, apologies for the unacceptable language there from Totally Shul. unacceptable. That's uh, not very professional there, I'm He's afraid. He's a factory driver. Uh, uh, Joe he knows Bradley, it's wrong. Joe Bradley down there and Nick Damon with Sebastian Porte. Sebastian, second place and a, a good finish this season? Uh, yeah, I guess at the image of the season, disappointing. Uh, just one bad restart and uh, all goes away. But, you know, it's the name of the game, so... But you have to be pleased with the way the car goes, and especially pleased with your two stints, where you seem to be permanently in the lead when you were in the car. Yeah, but you know, you, you go for broke in those situations. There was no championship on the line. There was nothing else than winning the race. So coming up short like that hurts, but uh, it's part of it. Colin did a great job at the restart there when it mattered, and uh, he got us. But you have won the Manufacturer's Championship for Cadillac. Yeah, no, I mean, a, a really good day for Cadillac. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, Manufacturer's and, uh, and the 31 wins the championship, so. Um, yeah, for Cadillac, very happy. Great stuff, see you in the trainer. Thank you. Uh, Joe Bradley and Nick Damon down on the pit lane. Post race tech, mission of post race tech coming up next. Hashtag PRT. We'll give the guys a chance to grab uh, anyone else. Uh, Jeremy, just a, a quick run through then. We've given the first, second, and third in, I think, all of the classes. It was WeatherTech from Faf from Risi on the podium in GTD Pro. Forte Racing fought their way through to the lead from Turner Motorsport and Wright Motorsports at the end there. The 77, uh, Trent Hinman and Anna Brynjolfsson getting the uh, the last step on the podium there in Alan Brynjolfsson's uh, last last race for a way while. Yeah, very well earned by that team. Uh, it's a tremendous result there for Trent Hinman and for Alan Brynjolfsson and uh, the, uh, the third driver this weekend in that number... Uh, 77 car, which is, I <laughs> can't even remember who it is now. Uh, Max Root, Maxwell Root, big yeah. pardon, Max. Uh, they, they've done an excellent job today. I mean, yeah, they weren't particularly quick through the practice sessions, but uh, they, they've emerged here as, a, as the highest place Porsche. Yeah, it was a dramatic uh, final few stages in that in that race, which you don't really like to see. There's some really really messy driving going on, but uh, they were right there or thereabouts all the way through the uh, second half of the race. Indeed, so the 26th running of Motul Petit Le Mans, uh, and we'll quickly grab third place uh, finisher, Harry Tignall with Nick. Harry, very quickly, uh, well, podium, how about that? Oh my God, man, that was just, uh, yeah, incredible. Uh, I'm so happy for the team. I can't tell you how many uh, all-nighters these guys have done, not just in the workshop, but at the track as well. Um, what a race, I mean, to get in the car at the back uh, early on, bring it forward to, to third, and then from the back again, end up in the wall, <laughs> and then come back through. Oh, I thought it was all over for a second there, but uh, look, I mean, like I say, this year's a building year for next year. Next year, we want to uh, we want to come and fight for championships, and I think we can do that uh, in WEC, and obviously uh, Proton are going to be in IMSA as well. And uh, yeah, I just absolutely love being back in the top class. Obviously, got a new challenge coming up with Ford, which I'm super excited about as well. But hopefully, we can make something work because uh, overall, Le Mans is. Uh, there's a place in a, two my two. trophy cabinet that I would quite like to... Great stuff. Thank you indeed, Harry Ticknell. Third place, but now a winner at the LMP2 winner. LMP2 winner is the 04 CrowdStrike car. Let's start with Jungers first. Young Nolan Siegel. I saw this kid race a couple of years ago, and he's... You are just a superstar, my man. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel 
great. You know, it's two in a row now, two weekends in a row for George and I in the CrowdStrike car. So, um, yeah, it's incredible. This is my first Petit Le Mans win, second Petit, and yeah, it's amazing. So, couldn't be happier. You really find your feet in sports cars. We know what he's like, and we know how quick he is in a single seater. Ben Hanley, a man from the same part of the world as me. Ben, congratulations, it's been a great race. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, the whole CrowdStrike APR team did a fantastic job giving us the car capable to, you know, through traffic, it was, it was just went where I wanted it to go. So, made life a lot easier. You know, we we were good on the restarts. Um, yeah, we we came back from being on the wrong side of yellows a couple of times. So, yeah, awesome awesome result for the whole team and like well driven to my co-drivers George and Nolan. Brilliant team effort, George. Can you believe this journey that you guys at CrowdStrike are on? I mean, it's just phenomenal. It's, it's unbelievable, and you know, credit to the team and my co-drivers. I mean, everybody just did a fantastic job and really flawless execution, and to be able to, uh, to come out on top in Petit Le Mans is a big win for us. Uh, some big implications, obviously, and uh, we're really excited. Parlez-vous Francais? Absolutely. Uh, we're looking. We're looking forward to going back to Le Mans. That was that was our goal here. That's the coveted prize is the Le Mans entry, and we got the Endurance Championship as well. So, not bad for our first year. Fabulous. Let's head to LMP3. Uh, it's actually GTD, but hey ho. <laughs> the 78 Arrow team, Patrick Liddy. Uh, congratulations, mates. That's uh, a great result for the Lambo. Unbelievable. You know, just to be here and watching Loris those last couple hours was just gut wrenching. Uh, but. We drove a clean race, other than our three drive-throughs, but every time we came back, fought back, we never gave up, and just the strategy calls from the team were absolutely incredible. So Crazy race of traffic, though. The craziest. I, I wouldn't shut up on the radio about it. <laughs> Did you see that move into turn one? But, man, unbelievable experience, and just so happy to be here. Just probably the coolest race I've ever been in. Fantastic. Great way to talk. Well done. So that is almost it for our international TV broadcast. We'll continue with Michelin Post Race Tech, hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio. What a season, the first for GTP. We've come full circle from 1998 when Dr. Don Pinos had a really crazy idea to try and get American sports car and GT racing back on its feet again. He was hoping that he could harness the power of the world's greatest sports car race, Le Mans, when he started Petit Le Mans here at Road Atlanta back in 1998. That became the American Le Mans series with the American Le Mans series radio web. And we've been here for everyone, bar one, since then. The changes that came with the unification in 2014 sent the world spinning again, but the Tudor United Sports Car Championship, as it was, morphed into the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and Convergence and Radio Show Limited and IMSA Radio have been with it for the last nine years. The whole of the sports car world has been brought together by these new championship regulations. A new era is beginning. It's been a pleasure to have been a part of this. Thank you to everybody who's been involved right from the start, from the crazy bunch of Brits that came over with an idea that we could get this onto the internet and make it work, to the global broadcast that it is now. We couldn't have done it without the help of very many people, some sadly not with us anymore. We couldn't have done it without the help of those of you who have contributed, helped with all of the uh, all of the technicals as well. So whether it's been NASCAR Productions recently or our own uh, our own technical team back in London are here at the track, it's been a wild ride that we've thoroughly thoroughly involved. And the one thing that's never changed, right from the very beginning, is it's been about a particular group of people. The democracy of radio, the broadcasting that's been free and without interruption, and of course, Dr. Don Singh for the fans. From Road Atlanta, Michelin Road Atlanta, at the 26th running of Motul Petit Le Mans. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you. For this slightly untidy race, we'll unpack it all at Michelin Rose Post Race Tech for sure. For Joe, uh, for Jeremy, for Nick, I'm John Hindorf. And for every single person who's picked up a mic or a piece of cable or helped with us down through the years, thank you very much indeed. Michelin Post Race Tech is next from, from Michelin Raceway. Good night. <laughs>